everybody, and welcome to D4, where I, Devin. And I, Dustin, Cody, am a fifth edition game of Dungeons and Dragons. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Today, uh, we actually have a fun announcement. Um, if the BFGs can find their way out of a beer, we will be joined by the wonderful Ray Berry as the lovable and clumsy <gasps> oh. next week, August 2nd. I'm motivated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can get out. They of can beer. get out of a beer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's hear from our sponsors. You feeling that wind blowing through your soul? The icy touch of winter turns your heart to cold. That silent air hangs with corpses of the dead. Know what fear looks in your hearts and what makes it grow. What's that? A crack, iceberg collapse, a shattered attack of ice and snow. A shadow grows as screams blow through a blue glow from the black unknown. What's that? It's monstrous, preposterous, inhuman scream. It's on top of us. Dead owl's eyes grow. Men cry. Silence dies as streaks of blood flies. Men are dead, decapitated. Rain of red eviscerated a demon's hunger never sated what's that the crunch of bones and gnashing teeth a song of death stuck on repeat the price is paid for secrets wrought with a pound of flesh it can't be bought but they come again in hardened droves of what now literally these dark monsters hold what's that a tale of cold frigid and old glory for the bold soul through dnd beyond but you get that code with hashtag beyond you will be hearing that song that frigid siren will sing on september 5th they bring icewind dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Wow, that was fantastic. That's it. That's D4. I mean, that's all we're good night. Well, good night, everybody. By the way, uh, for those of you who would like to know, a rhyme spelled with R-I-M-E is a white incrustation of ice formed when supercooled water droplets freeze almost instantaneously on contact with the solid surface. It is not sick beats. But, you know, I see what I did there. <laughs> I feel bad for I'm glad you that. see it. Yeah. So, here's the thing. Beetle and Grimm had a lot of success a while back when they did this thing called Drunken Mailbag. Basically, the founders of Beetle and Grimm's all get together, get completely smashed on a stream, and answer your questions. And it's a lot of fun. They get loopy. It's great. Anyways, I'm willing to bet that if you send in a request to unwise.pr.goblin at beetleandgrims.com and request that Mr. Matthew Lillard perform a beat poem, he will do it. If we get enough of us and we send this in, I'm willing to bet he'll do it. So that's unwise.pr.goblin at beetleandgrims.com. Send in your questions and your request for a beat poem from Matthew Lillard. Huzzah! Uh, hey guys, I, I know what you're thinking at home. You love D&D and you love doing this, but you might have a character that you want to put on your table as, as a little figurine that maybe doesn't fit into the old fantasy setting. Well, guess what? They're just adding all sorts of cool new stuff at Eldritch Foundry so you can do that exact thing. Maybe you want to play as a particular butcher from this campaign who's very very cool and uh, i i think i maybe i will make a, fi a figure of him well they got cleavers maybe you're some kind of crazy person who runs around with a baseball bat they can make that too it's a possibility uh elders foundry makes every kind of miniature you can imagine they're fantastic they're awesome and they make just super super high quality minis and if you put in Hashtag Eldritch here into the chat. You too have a chance to win your own mini that you can make for yourself to put on your table. Lots of cool stuff. May I recommend the baseball bat? Eldritch Foundry. Check them out. Hey, what's up? You're here because you like Dungeons and Dragons, and that's pretty cool. I like Dungeons and Dragons too. You want to know who also likes Dungeons and Dragons? Rock Punch ATL, the literal people producing and helping us put this on. For you, the people who like Dungeons and Dragons. They have this other cool thing that's pretty funny that they've made called Dice Lords that you should check out. It's like if a bunch of jerks got superpowers because they tricked a celestial being into thinking their Dungeons and Dragons characters are actually them. That's literally the plot. Also, my cat's in it. Also, if you are more like, you know what? That's cool and all, but I'm also like into video games and stuff. Well, they also have this other series called Rivals. 
that they recently did some reruns of on stream. That's pretty chill if you want to check that out. Um, it's about rival people in video games. I'm also in that. A surprise. But that's not why I'm talking about it. I'm just saying that's just a thing. Um, also, if you want to check out, you know, they started up doing the Punch Bowl again, where they just talk about pop culture, video games, and all kinds of crazy stuff like Ukrainian standoffs and what Kanye did this time. Um, also about this ridiculous weird game that may or may not be coming out called Gamer Girl. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, choose your own horror adventure playing as a pretend moderator for a pretend streamer girl. Yep, I couldn't even make this up if I tried. So Rock Punch ATL, they got, they got a lot of, lot of stuff, lot of stuff. Just check it out. That's what we're here for. It's checking things out because we're still in a pandemic. Oh, uh, I, I forgot to mention something. The Drunken Mailbag is going to be on July 31st. Kind of important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And if you like everything we're doing and you feel like you want to support us, feel free to go to d4dnd.com where we have t-shirts, mugs, elegant wine glasses, everything your heart could desire. Trust me, I'm a demon. I know what you want. Go to it, d4dnd.com. Let us immerse ourselves into the chronicles of D4. We're back. Last time on dimensional dissension and dissimilating duplicity. After the, after the BFGs fell asleep in the spirits of Troll Skull, Harold had a dream of Averin with glowing red eyes, gaunt skin, and a swarm of ravens. And as the rest of the BFGs all awoke, they find them found themselves in a strange place that was oddly familiar. Soon they discovered they were in Troll Skull Manor but it was more of a twisted, mirrored version and not exactly the same. They also found they were not alone, as a halfling named Freely was with them, found cuddling a red-headed stuffed doll in Seisha's room. Freely informed them that he believes that they're on the world of Abir, a mirrored twin world of Torl, and he was recently here with Averin and another group of adventurers. And as they head out to try and figure out what to do and how to get home, they are greeted by a woman whose skin appears to be that of a nebula, but with a large gaping mouth at her abdomen. And her companion, a heavily cloaked and robed individual with many worms writhing and squirming from underneath a porcelain white mask. And they introduce themselves as nebula and depth. They wish the BFGs to join them and toss a dead body of Averin at their feet. Voss, buying them some time to think it over, led them to a way out. And the party began to run as they were chased by several other creatures that they come to learn as our star spawn, creatures of the far realm. After running to no avail, they stop and stand to fight where they literally fight for their lives. 
many of them barely surviving, as Vinley is enraptured by one of them and flies away towards the City of the Dead, dropping her mask as she flies away. Losing her, Seisha casts Locate Object on Vinley's bone wand, and they take off to save their friend, their sister. As they enter the City of the Dead, they realize it seems to have been taken over by the Feywild. And they begin to sneak forward uh, where Vinley is with Harold and Voss leading the charge and the others invisible and sneaking through the woods. As they approach, they spot several star spawn hiding and Nebula standing in the center. Vinley, nowhere to be found. Harold does what he does best and begins to double speak, trying to distract the aberration as Seisha, who is invisible thanks to Harold, creeps up to try and find Vinley, but fails as Vinley as V is heard by one of the creature and a fight breaks out. Voss, trying to think of a way to break through to Vinley, places a dagger against his throat and threatens to kill himself, which seems to do the trick as Vinley drops her greater invisibility, draws a pair of daggers and lunges at Nebula. The BFGs once again fight for their lives and slay the remaining star spawn, minus Nebula who vanishes leaving the BFGs and Freely alone in the City of the Dead. And that is where we begin tonight's story. The first thing Vinley does is she lets go of the hug that she had on Voss, and she puts the mask on and just looks up, and expectingly to um, Seisha and Voss. You okay? I I will be as soon as we get out of here. Okay. How do we do that? Um, I turn to Freely. So, as you all find yourself, it's still before noon. You find yourself standing in an overgrown forest with what should be the City of the Dead. You turn to Freely as the others look around for any more of the creatures from the Far Realm to appear as you gather back together. The remnants of the star spawn lay strewn across the ground, their aberrant forms leaking silvery, inky black ichor from their wounds that begin to bubble and boil into black tendrils of smoke. You watch as the skin of the slain creatures begin to burn away in a violent vitriol of boiling flesh as it too turns into smoke and dissipates through a ripple in reality. You realize in their wake, that unlike on your world of Toral, there was no ritual, no chaotic summoning of the void, no mutilation of the body, nothing in order to call these creatures into this world. It was just as if they were willed into existence. As the dread of that thought washes through your mind, you look around at the extravagant and vibrant foliage. Uh, foliage. Um, <clears throat> some of the flora even begins to flutter and bob through the air like a jellyfish as you walk by. Voss, as you ask this question to Freely, he looks at you and says he doesn't know. Um, and because that's the last thing he said before yep. you left. But um, but some of the more intricate flowers look to have faces created by the folds of the petals that watch you from afar and close up uh, into buds and they close up into buds as you get near. An ethereal glittery glow radiates all around you in a way that you didn't notice before as you see razor vines begin to slink in your direction. It's hard to tell if this area, obviously touched by the Feywild, is just curious of your presence or if it's hostile. The halfling man you know as freely speaks up. Looks to you, boss, as you ask him and he goes, well, I, I'd rather not uh, stick around here uh, to become plant food. Uh, let's, uh, let's head out. Um, yeah, that's a good plan. Looks at you. So, anybody know how to get home? Cause I have no idea. Well, we have two options that might pan out to something. We could either go to the Blackstaff Tower and hope that something is similar, or we can go to the Font of Knowledge and hope that there's a little bit of knowledge in there. Wait a minute, I had a thought. Um, first, really, thank you for saving me. I, I didn't well, get you know, a chance to say thanks. But I do. <laughs> yeah, you appreciate it. Um, but I had a thought just now. 
So a beer is like the sister planet, right? Mm -hmm. Benley, you said you saw people. I did. In the when we were running, there were people on the street. So, so what if there's some sort of connection between Waterdeep and this city and we just have to find a, a terror in whatever separates them? Could do you think that's a, a possibility? Could that be a thing? Perhaps we could find an anchor. Right. Something similar on a beer as in Toril. And the <gasps> I believe the only people who would know how to do that are the black staffs. The, the 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 place where you can't use magic. What about the place you can't use magic? Oh, what is it called? Hang on, I know this. Do I know what she's talking about? It's this the part of the city where where the stables are, where you can't use magic. Bulls oh, something or other. White, white bulls run. No no no. You can use magic there. They just tell well no. You're I know you can, but you're not supposed to. <laughs> like that, Seisha, that, be, that's Seisha, a rule Seisha, of, so you can't. <laughs> yeah, that's a law of the city. It's not yeah. a, a white force bulls run. Um. Magic works differently there, so maybe because of its connection to here. Is this whole place like opposite day, but like opposite worlds where like maybe rules are opposite? So like, it's not illegal it's, to use magic there? It's something to try and we need to start trying things. If Who's we're gonna going get out to of enforce here? it? I, I actually have an idea. I can obviously see the people and communicate with them. What if those were the people on the, on Toril? What if I can go to the Black That's... Vajra's office and talk to her and see how to come back? Oh, the next time you see people, you should ask where they're from. All right. Fair. Which is closer? <laughs> yes. To here? I had to... Which is closer, guys? I mean, yeah. they're like right across the street from each other. Oh, 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 a white bull run? Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry my, my brain went to the pot. They're, yeah. they're kind from of- From where we are. From where you are, they're kind of equi equidistant, just in different directions. Yeah. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay. All right, if you, I- If you guys want to go to White Bull Run, I can give Venley a ride to the tower. I don't think I, it's a good idea well, for us to split I mean, up. I don't know about you, but yeah. you uh, split in the pot. I mean, that's up to you yeah. people, but- uh, this is not the place. It, 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 we'll do that at home, not here. I sorry. Pull out, Last time you pull. split the party, one of you just kind of ran away and got got charmed and whatnot. So probably not the best thing. Finley's head slow turn in the mask down to the little person that just spoke. Why? Why don't we all just remember that we're all trying to get off this planet together, and we're going to do this as a team? <laughs> I pull out a coin. Heads, white bull run, tails, black staff tower. Are we in agreement? Wait, could use, I have this spell that I can, I can basically ask the powers that be whether or not a plan of action would be good, bad, or who knows. What is the powers that be? Um, well, in this case, Ogma. Does Ogma have a reach out here? I don't Perhaps. know, but we won't know till we try. I mean, I was able to cast things earlier, so Quite yeah. Try to judge. Go for it. Uh, let's. Does this take time? We may need to leave this part of the city quickly. Um. No, just a minute. Yeah, you can start to see those vines are creeping let's, slowly and slowly closer. Let's get out of this area then and find a place okay. where we can at least rest and feel like nature's not killing us. Hey. I always feel like that. Uh, Voss tucks that little bit of information in for a later day. Um, but I would like to look for a building that looks stable and not populated by monstrosities. Uh, you would have to leave the City of the Dead. There is no uh, buildings. There is only... No, no, no. I, I mean, out of the City of the Dead. Like, okay. just yeah. out of okay. that direction. So, as you start making your way out um, through the City of the Dead, it proves difficult, not only from it being overgrown, but arranged differently. Uh, there's very, very few mausoleums where there are multiple mausoleums in the one in Toril. Uh, there's very few fountains or statues. It's more like a depressing cemetery filled with just headstones. Again, familiar, but oddly different, like looking into a warped mirror. Wrapping around almost every gravestone, 
and the few statues is a creeping vine covered in a yellow orchid-like plant with purple modded spotting. You all notice that the ground around the graves looks disturbed and turned. Seisha and Vinley, you notice the bits of bones from corpus, uh, corpse entangled with the vines scattered everywhere. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I would uh, get too close to these plants. Uh, you know, they, they say uh, beautiful things are often deadly. Take me, for example. Hmm. <laughs> noise Harold's giving me. So let's keep walking. Okay. Um, <clears throat> With Voss's keen mind, you're able to retrace your steps, getting closer and closer to the exit of the Grand Cemetery. Freely moves cautiously at your flank, ready to come up unexpectedly upon any who may target you. Seisha, your eyes keep him in your peripheral for a while until you see him walk past a tree and disappear. Freely? She's gonna backtrack to that tree and peek around it. Okay, go ahead and make a investigation or perception check. Okie dokie. Let's see. It's gonna be, ooh, that sounds like great. Or perception, I'm gonna go with perception, 14. Okay. 14, okay. You go to investigate where Freely may have disappeared to. You come to a small grove filled with decayed corpses, but unlike before, this grove of bodies is barren of any hostile plant growth. As you look closer, it looks like the bodies, although spread fairly far apart, look to be arranged in a spiraling circle. As you get closer, a strange form begins to grow out of the corpse closest to you. It forms an enchanting yet haunting uh, figure birth from strips of decayed wood stretched across a beautiful female figure. In the emptiness, you see a swirling cyan weave of necromancy similar to Vinley's magic. It speaks to you in a soothing, echoing, but unnerving voice through a language you do not understand. Uh, were the rest of you close by? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Vinley, sure. you understand what is being said. Your presence is unfavorable here. You stand misplaced and invisible as the crossroads shall remain to you. One has already faded into the wilds. It will not be replicated. Abandon your course or face decay. Uh, that was a threat, everyone. I believe we should go. Really? Freely, he's finish. gone. He's gone. What do you mean he's gone? Freely he... told us earlier he disappears all the time. This may be that case. He's lost in the wilds. Well, he's probably fine. Seisha. And Sylvan, she'll look back to the creature. Do I know what this creature is? You could go ahead and make an arcana check. <laughs> kind of combining my two <laughs> knowledges. <laughs> <laughs> Is the creature saying like we shouldn't be on a beer or just like in this location of the city? Um, that's a total of a 26, which means that was a natural 20. Ooh. Oh. Okay, we're, all right. That's it. That's the that, last that's one. It. That's all you get. <laughs> <laughs> we are we're hard not having cut a repeat off of last the 20. Vinley, <laughs> um, I would say uh, to answer V's question, you get the insight that it is guarding something and it is this general area that it's yeah. telling you to leave. Yeah. yeah. So, and I'll um, relay that to V. Yeah, and what you know of this creature is it is a creature from the Feywild and in the category of nymphs. It is a divine servant that inhabit unspoiled corners of the world. Uh, nymphs protect places of natural power and infuse their surroundings with the magic of Nyx. Some are benevolent and aid those who live off the land while others uh, embody violent aspects of nature. This particular nymph is known as a lampad. Lampads are unseelie that guard the shadowed paths of the world, depths typically uh, trod by souls destined for the underworld. These rarely seen nymphs assist the Raven Queen in guiding the dead into the Shadowfell and reclaim wayward fey souls that try to slip back to the mortal, uh, mortal world. Lampads, uh, oh, there's more. 
Lampads began natural guardians, being. or sorry, being natural guardians are often chosen to guard Feywild crossroads near cemeteries, graveyards, and crumbling crypts, fields in the wake of great bloodshed and tunnels that bore deep into the earth. Okay. Uh, knowing that Vinley's going to say, in Sylvan, we're actually on our way out now. Thank you. We don't want to step on any of your flowers, your brethren, or anything like that. Um, we just want to leave. So if you could kindly show us the safest way for both of our people to get out, fair Lampad, I would happily oblige. Also, I respect everything you, you're doing. I like your entire look. <laughs> uh, and they just point in a direction. Um, that curves around uh, this area and it headed back the direction you were kind of going um, before you were distracted by freely disappearing. disappearing. And Vinley will do like a curtsy and say, your kindness is immeasurable and turn and start walking in that direction and tell everyone to go this way. And as you begin to fade away. What are you doing, Seisha? Seisha kind of pauses for a second and then slowly backs away and follows Venley. Okay. And okay. as you as you fade away, so does this creature as it uh, sifts back down into the corpse. But that really, was almost bad. Really would have helped us. Yeah, but you know, that's the job. So let's get the hell out of here. If it helps, he's probably not dead. Really? Did that we did the thing say he's not dead? Well, I don't know about that. But you know... Not in direct words. She's a fae. So oh. they're tricky. Oh, By I... saying lost in the wilds, she could have meant in the fae wild. That's what that sounds like to me. He, she said he was lost in the wilds? Yeah, but Avern will get him, I'm sure. Oh yeah, no, that's probably fair. We got it handled. It's fine. It'll just cost another arm or a leg. <laughs> <laughs> he survived this long. I'm sure he's fine. Freely's going to get a baby arm leg. <laughs> Hope not. No, no, that's that's from Calamari Kevin. That's not Avrin. <laughs> <laughs> I can't also, say that. <laughs> just... oh, I thought Avrin gave it to him. <laughs> it, gave him the, it gave him the baby arm leg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, though. yeah. Just as uh, moving forward, if we ever run across Faye in the future, never say thank you. It's considered rude. Find another way to say it. What do they? How do they feel about cool, cool, cool? Is that good? Can I do that? Like cool, cool, sure. cool. Okay, that's why I'm, I'm going with that. Why one. is it rude? Mm-hmm. It's. Comes across as lazy. Generic. <laughs> they seem uh, to be maybe, in a wordplay. Maybe because it implies that they did something for you. Right. Right. Probably that. I will wax full soft. Maybe quarters. say no problem. <laughs> Any no, other that's your welcome. That. Buenos noches. Um, um, default to your kindness is immeasurable. Um, Can we go. <laughs> they want to feel. I get it. You see the gate entrance of uh, the city of the dead as you begin to uh, make your way towards the city. Where are you going? Um, There's building that building. looks safe. Um, there are a couple of stretches of buildings as it mirrors kind of Toril, but in this world, the buildings look kind of all the same, a little bit yeah, more grimy. None of them look safe. Like they all look straight out of a horror movie. Can I hear anything living inside the ones nearest to us? Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. Mm hmm. Can I also make that perception check? Oh, please. Okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm later. really good at perceiving things. Can I make the perception check? I uh, already I rolled, said. unfortunately. I have advantage. <laughs> I know. I got you. 15. Uh, 21. Okay. Um, in this particular building, there does not seem to be anyone. The city itself seems kind of almost like a ghost town. Does Benley still see people? Yeah, do I still see? No, you do not. 
whatever whatever you saw was probably in that exact moment and you're not sure what it was yeah I hear okay. it. Damn. yeah i looked through something or something was affecting around you for that moment and it's I not because nebula was there bitch i unsheath my weapon and go to what i could only perceive as to be a door to this place and slowly open it okay um you walk into a run-down, very mundane-looking building. Seisha walks over to an area of the floor that's somewhat stable-looking, I guess, and sits down. And she proceeds to pull out... Um, let's see, do I have to have a... What do I need for this? She yeah. pulls out... Um, I've used this before, but I don't remember what bone I dice. had as my material component. I it was bone dice. It was, it was bone, bone dice. dice. Okay, that's right. She pulls out a set of bone dice and starts rolling it around in her hands and whispering softly, and her hands begin to glow. I keep an eye out while she's doing this for anything that may be following us or stalking us. Okay. And I am watch like watching Seisha do this from opposite of her with the mask still on, just intently watching her. Okay. All right. And uh, I believe the casting time is a minute on those, on that? Yep. Yes, one minute. After a minute, uh, you throw the dice and... What is the question what you're asking? What is the ask question you're asking? The question I am asking is... Uh, <laughs> will traveling to the Blackstaff Tower benefit us? And... As you roll the dice, you notice the weave from your magic, the script that rolls off with, that begins to tell the tale of the dice seems to flicker a little bit, but it rolls up two sixes for wheel. We need to go to the black staff. The black staff is a really good choice. Um, you're going to have to show me that spell sometime. Okay. Yeah, sometime later. Let's go. Yeah. It doesn't always work that great, but when it does. All right. Head in that direction. All right. You make your way out of the building and look to the west. And with no giant statues or massive buildings blocking your way, you see the Blackstaff Tower. It's strange because in place of the short, squat, onyx, black stone, two-story building, you see a massive wizard's tower built of black granite stone and wrought iron. The city is still nearly empty and feels like a ghost town. As you make your way across the city, keeping your eyes out, keenly looking for anyone that might be stalking you, any more star, star spawn, or specifically maybe Nebula uh, watching you, you actually do catch a few people and although they are few and far between, you notice that unlike Waterdeep, where most are human, this world is more dragonborn than any other. You also see a good amount of Genasi and dwarves as well, followed by maybe one or two halflings and one or two humans. Most of them seem hidden away, hiding from what horrors overrun a beer. But what you also notice is there seems to be no elves or even half-elves that wander this world. This is a nightmare. When you make it to the massive tower that stretches towards the sky, you see that the red clouds that covered the sky have dissipated. And what you see makes you think your mind is playing tricks on you. It's not ominous or foreboding like the red sky that tormented the multiverse, no. That was just the color of the clouds. Instead, the sky looks silver, like a steel-forged blade that shimmers across the horizon. Instead of the bright yellow sun you are used to uh, seeing adorn the sky, you look up to see a vibrantly bright blue orb in its place. To feel even more alienated in this strange world, Vinley, as you go to place your hand to cast into the tower, you see a black Wingate wooden door with 12 stars arranged in a circle etched into the wood and filled with silver. Is, 
Does for... that symbol seem familiar at all? Yeah. You make a history check. Also, while we were walking up, was there any vegetation anywhere? Okay. No. The, it, yeah. The the all of that wild vegetation seemed to be concentrated in the city of the dead. Uh, all right. What'd you get on your history checks? Go ahead, Finley. What'd you get? A dirty twenty. Twenty-one. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, how the turns have tabled. <laughs> uh, you both recognize this symbol. Uh, you know, Finley from your studies and Seisha from your studies of, of just history. But this is the symbol of the moon stars, also known uh, as the silver stars or 12 stars formed by Kelvin Aronson, the original Blackstaff in 1370 DR with his wife, Laurel Silverhand. The moon stars sought to preserve life and knowledge. They had a similar outlook to the Harpers but dedicated themselves to Mistra, Agma, and Sehani Moonbow. Uh, you also remember uh, Renair telling you that he, the group that he formed with his friends after rescuing Vajra, he named after the Moonstars. So she's gonna turn to Venli. <gasps> Moonstars! This. Moonstars! Uh, How do we, do we knock? I don't Wait, explain know. to me what a moon star is. Um, layman's terms, moon stars was a very um, famous organization of do-gooders and really powerful mages mm. and really powerful adventurers and really important people. The and, first black staff and his wife, Laurel Silverhand. You might recognize that name, Harold and V. Yeah. But Oh, okay. The Just be on your guard in case the opposite of that is what's waiting in there. I believe this is a sign that they've been here and they've laid claim on this tower. No, it makes sense because this would have been probably, this would have been, I don't know if it's true, you might know. Would this have been their tower before the Sundering? Did it exist before the Sundering? Do I know that? Make a history check. Oh. That's an 18. You're not quite sure. You remember okay. reading a bit about it, but it just, it's right on the tip of your memory, but you yeah. can't quite, um, can't quite remember it. There, it definitely, the Sundering, like you know that for a fact, like the Sundering, like this has to do with something with the Sundering, yeah. but you don't know for sure if this, this exact tower overlaid the other one or anything like that. Yeah. Gotcha. Aisha pulls out a book and dives into it. If I were to perhaps meditate this on this for probably a week, I'd probably find the answer. But if this was controlled by the, the moon stars, it should be the same way to get in, right? I don't know, try it. I would like to check for traps on this door in the mundane variety. Okay. okay, go ahead and give us a perception check. Or investigation, your choice. Yeah. Can I That's assist the same him? Either way. Sure, absolutely. You can roll with advantage. As, yeah, uh, I'll assist him by looking for magical traps on this door. Okay. Um, so sorry, guys. It's another natural 20. <laughs> you know what? We are no longer playing a beer. You're automatically back. Good. Yep. Congratulations. Good job. No. <laughs> um, so, uh, you we'll see you next week, Ray. <laughs> Uh, we you don't find any traps, but you do find a mundane, regular old lock. Is it locked? It is locked. I would like to try and pick it. Go ahead. Oh boy. Can I assist somehow? I don't think I was really away from you. How are you? I would probably just I would probably just be making it worse, honestly. Like <laughs> yeah. you gotta turn it more to the Go ahead and roll with disadvantage? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no twenty one. Uh easily you're able to bring your you lock gotta picks. turn it more to the left oh, okay you were right the right all right i'm sorry you were right <laughs> <laughs> uh I and just... it clicks and uh it is unlocked i i pull back i do not go in first this is magic business and i defer uh, i will go in first why don't no. we send venley in and then me <laughs> Everyone just take 10 feet back. Let's just take a couple steps back and she will use Mage Hand to open the door. Okay. okay. You open the door and what you see is a nearly pitch black room. 
The light from outside cuts across the ground, illuminating a 40-foot radial floor with a spiraling staircase that stretches up the entirety of the tower from what you can see. In the center Seisha of the cast, floor... Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, Seisha cast light on her shield. Okay. okay. Um, in the center of the floor is an ornate circular rug with the same circle of 12 stars woven into the into a circle around the edges. Don't step on the rug. Why? Because I always step on the pretty thing and it ends up being a trap. All right, I'll skirt Fair around enough. the rug and I'm going to slip around the rug. It's it's easy. Like, it's a circular rug in the uh, center of the room and there's a spiral staircase. Yeah. I mean, it's a 40-foot yeah, room. It's a yeah. big, it's big room. <laughs> yeah, I'll go around the rug and I will and just, Harold, like, Harold, look back. What? Harold, wait! What? Don't... What? You're squishy. Don't go in front. I didn't touch the rug. I know, but if there was something in there that was going to jump out and attack, you're squishy. It would you made it sound you. like it was going to be the rug. I, I, was, I do not trust the rug. Everything else in here seems fine. That's a I, good way to look at things. I pull out the Moonblade Rapier and begin searching the room, just for anything in particular that may A, may assist us in this, or may help us whatsoever. I just, will assist. This you, don't even have to roll anything. The only thing of note in here is the rug, and then a staircase that go, a spiral staircase that goes up, wrapping, wrapping around the wall. Yeah. Going to walk over to the staircase. Okay. okay. I motion for Seisha to go first because I mean, like, she's right. I am squishy. <laughs> while we they're, ready? while yeah. they're walking up the stairs and doing that, can I just touch the rug and see what happens? Sure. <laughs> I love the way you ask that. Do you touch it with your foot or do you lean down and touch it? Yeah, I'll like nudge it with my foot just in case. All right, you go down and you, your little your toe just gently brushes against it. Nothing happens. Look, you guys are going to mock me about the rug, but someday I'm going to be right. Can I roll up the rug and put it in my bag of holding, please? Uh, or is it too uh, big? You, it, it is, it's pretty big. I mean, it's about 20 feet in diameter. Um, yeah. And you go to roll it, and it doesn't move. Like, you can't pick up the edge. Yeah. What are you doing? Don't touch the rug. We were just talking about not touching the rug. I figured I could give it to the open lord and... I have a favor. Oh, it looks like the magic is, is that it's stuck to the floor. Or it's just... Been you, here. You, like, you can bend the edges up, but you can't, like, forcibly pull it. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. So you can't roll it. I, why are we thinking about rugs when we are stuck on another place? Look, Let's just go up the maybe I'm going she's upstairs. just trying to make the best of a bad situation. That is a pretty rug. It's a nice rug. It's also the open Lord of Waterdeep's rug true and they won't miss it in this world you don't know that maybe they're like a well we'll be in the other worshiping. world and it won't matter will it Harold? so as you continue this argument up the stairs <laughs> thank you <laughs> lighting the way with Sasha uh with Sasha's lit shield and leading the way and voss watching your back with his moonlit rapier and v in the middle lighting the rest with her ghostly lantern tied to her hip you come across a few doors along the way, but they all seem to be abandoned workshops. Some for tinkering, some for arcane practices of every school of magic, and some for alchemy. But even that is hard to discern from the mostly empty shelves and tables left behind. There is nothing of note or value in any of them. Yeah, just so enough- we don't have time for you to raid the rooms. <laughs> and, like yeah, Anything that you find is just enough to note, be like, okay, I identify what could have, this, this room could have been used for. Yep. So there's no like, no, like a dash of a reagent. Nope. <laughs> nope. There's a sousson of something. <laughs> <laughs> um, it takes a good 10 to 15 minutes to reach the top of the staircase. And everyone with a con uh, less than 15 are all winded. So everyone but me. <laughs> uh, you are not exhausted. <laughs> but you definitely feel the burn in your lungs and your legs from walking up the massive flight of stairs. Okay, I just want to throw out there that V's offering people rides all the time, and I haven't heard of anybody carrying me around. Where's that, Voss? <coughs> I didn't realize you guys would need assistance getting upstairs. I, it's a lot of stairs. 
I just I, didn't think about it. Oh, my thighs are burning. Do you need me to carry one of you? <laughs> That's like, good. Get rid of power like another, through. Yeah, and as you as you look up like three more steps, <laughs> you see <laughs> before you is the last door, identical to all the rest, except Sasha. You notice the metal of the iron ring handle to this door looks to be a little bit more polished than the rest, but only in the middle. This door's been opened. Someone's been opening this door. Look at the metal. There's no patina on it. Well, I imagine someone lives around here. Or else you this wouldn't inside. be here, right? I'm gonna knock on the door. <laughs> okay. You knock and you expect to feel a sense of being watched or some sign that someone is here in this seemingly abandoned tower. Instead, you get nothing but silence. And in a moment of desperation, as hope begins to fade, you hear someone speak from the other side of the door. You don't hear the voice of Vajra, but instead a gruff voice of a cautious older man. Who's there? Um, I am Lord Seeker Seisha Valispard. I can't help you. Go away. Please, you're the only person we've found who might have an idea of what's going on. We're not I... from here. Hold on. My name is Vinley Galen Odell. I am a gray hand from the Force Gray under Vajra Safar, who works directly with L'Oreal Silverhand. We're just trying to find our way to them. To as, Will. as Vinley says this, there is a long pause of silence before you hear the sound of a key being inserted to unlock the old door. Standing on the other side is a tall, older man, seemingly in his 50s or 60s, with pallid skin standing around six feet tall. His thick black hair is coarse and unkempt and falls down to the color of his old black intricate arcane robes that have seen better years. Two streaks of gray cut across his temples and behind his ears that echo the streaks of white that divide his wiry beard. His eyes look to tell a thousand stories of ageless wisdom as he looks at you with almost sneering caution until he sees you, Vinley. As he notices you, it is not the symbol of Mistra or even the emblem of the gray hands that catches his attention as his eyes fall upon your ears and then the same to you, Harold. You're not from here. I am Kelvin Aronson. Please come inside. Did I roll somebody to know who that is? You yes. are hundred percent can roll history. Everybody. Oh, I wanna roll, I wanna roll. Yeah, we will not Everyone? this yeah. will not be a, two, a rule of two. Everybody can roll history. Uh, oh man. Daddy twenty! Daddy Natural 20. 20. <laughs> All three of us? Like, no fucking way. I swear on my life, if I'm lying, <laughs> I'm dying. Oh, it? it doesn't, it, you know what? It's a beer, and like I said, we're getting you the fuck off this planet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> God. Oh, my, oh God. my God. All right. That is insane. Yeah, Good. I'm taking my snipping tool. I'm All snipping. right, here we go. I got a 15. Thanks, does that mean anything? <laughs> it does. Got a 17. <laughs> hey, it does. All right. So, so. Everybody will know up to a certain point, and then we'll let you know what the three who natural 20. Yeah. <laughs> Kelvin Aronson was the first Blackstaff. <laughs> He's known to be intimidating and a humorless man, dedicated to his work. He was an archmage that lived for eons and married Laurel Silverhand, who created the Moonstars around 1370. He had numerous apprentices over the years and liked to encourage young people who displayed the, an aptitude for magic. Wielding the art could be a gravely dangerous business, however, and Kelvin tried to instill appreciation of the fact that his pupils, by keeping up his stern taskmaster facade, where he, he was actually rumored to be warm and loving and private, with a boisterous laugh that unnerved those that did not know him so intimately because it made them fear what he, what he found humorous. Many equated his intellect to a spider in the center of a massive web of information, schemes, plans, and counterplans. He was very secretive and cunning in the information he hoarded, often using his knowledge to manipulate others, but always for the greater good. And that is all you know, uh, Voss. It, oh, okay. Yep. <clears throat> 
He is presumed dead after he aided a large group of arcane casters in a mythal cleansing the high moor to the southeast of Waterdeep, aiding in the creation of uh, Rymathen, the hidden city of hope in 1374, in which the magic consumed his mortal form. His soul is bound to the Blackstaff, as are all Blackstaffs, and he has been rumored to be seen wandering the halls of the tower of the Blackstaff Tower in Toril as a ethereal echo, like a ghost. And that is all you know, V. v. Okay. Harold, Seisha, and Binley. He was later revealed to be a masked lord, as well as a chosen of Mistra. It is said when he died, he was over 960 years old, making him over 1,200 at this point. His age can be attributed to that of the Silver Flame, a gift from Mistra that heals all wounds, greatly reduces his aging process, and protects him from all forms of electricity. Although with the absence of the weave and connection to Mistra, you can see that although he is still young for his age, he looks a lot older than history depicts him for over 900 years old. No, for, for the past oh, 900 years. Sorry, for the past 900 years. Yeah. And he opens the door to you all. Oh. V says, holy shit, you look really good for a presumed dead guy. Yes. Come inside. Yep. Gonna do that. And Lee just silently walks into the office very slowly, like... <laughs> so, yeah. so I take it you're, like, not like a ghost? I assure you, I am not a ghost. I mean, you don't look like one, so I just, you know, guessed. But... As you look back, Seisha is still standing in the doorway with her mouth. Harold's going to grab her by the arm and tug her inside. Uh -huh. and... Are you guys okay? So as you enter, as you enter this room, you see it riddled with a sociogram. Paper is strewn everywhere across every table, wall, even some stretching across the ceiling. Each one looks to be the unintelligible scrawlings of a madman to those untrained in the knowledge of arcana arts. However, even to those that can decipher the arcane script, it is hard to follow as it looks like he has spent ages trying to uncover the answer to something unknowable or unsolvable. But you can decipher it looks like it is something about unbinding a soul to a celestial body. So, were you relocated recently? or when the worlds were ripped apart in the second sundering? Um, we were relocated within the last, for us, day. We've only been here for a few hours that we know of. Do I know of a second sundering? Yes. Hey, everybody, yeah, yeah. this was four years ago? No, 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 uh, nine, or 1484 to 87 is when the- So, yeah, so roughly six to four years ago. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, and it was a, a very big deal as it was yeah. a cataclysmic event. Right, uh, okay, so yeah, all right, cool. All right, just yeah. making sure we knew. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Not nothing you have to roll history on because you lived through it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and as you uh, tell him this, he goes, ah, then welcome to Stone Shallow, the water deep of Sheer, Abir's Faerun. Stone Shallow seemed appropriate for the nameless mockery of what was once my home on Teril. Now, a heartless, cold prison absence of anything of depth. I'm assuming you still have the weave within you, as it has just been a day. Yes, I do. I don't like the way that you said just been a day. That implies that the longer we're here... Yes, use it sparingly. There is no weave here on a beer. And he looks to you, Seisha, as he sees the, uh, the emblems you hold. No connections to the gods. And you will soon feel it fade from you. You see him pull all his necklaces and put them behind his shirt. Well, as he puts them <laughs> back away. Um, how... Seisha kind of glances at the papers and just gets real quiet. Hey. I'm not... Um, so, oh wait, actually, let me. Can I ask a question? Of course. Sorry. Um, the way you phrase that is a little vague. Um, um, are you, when you say 
unhinging a soul from the celestial body that you're not that's not a celestial as in Asimar, right no no that is like a planet. like a planet yeah. no 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 Wait. like yes yes that is correct yes yeah, okay okay how okay. how There's... does that affect you if you're direct if you're, if you're, you're um oh, Asimar. um uh, he he sure. continues and cuts you off and gives you a stern look to shut up and look when he's talking. Like he that that it, it's not long more of that like that commanding presence of gives you that look of when he's speaking you stop talking. Well, I thought I didn't realize he was speaking. No, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Okay, um, but I, I'm aware. And so as you, you go to as you go to speak and ask that question, he just he yeah. looks at you and continues talking. Yeah, um, he hears you and gives you like a knowing look. I have not felt the weave course through my fingers in over a hundred years. I see you have some enchant, enchanted equipment, so at least you have a better means of survival, as their weave will not fade. But no such treasures can be forged here. Um, and as to answer your question, as he looks towards the pages, Magic comes with a price. I made a deal with Mistra in my servitude to her in exchange for the life of others I cared about. Little did I know that my temporary residence would become permanent when the spell plague burned through the realm space when she was assassinated by Siric and Shar. I was even denied the luxury of the convergence of Abir Toril after the time of troubles when the Alpha and Omega, the overgod Ao, destroyed the Tablets of Fate. And for a few years now, the Tablets have been reforged in the Second Sundering. Those tethered to Abir found themselves ripped from their loved ones and their lives untoward. I have spent the past century trying to find a way back, but those of us bound to this world, either through a deal with a deity like me, or through the will of Ao, we cannot survive for more than a day within the realm of Tor. But that does not dismiss hope for you. I may not know how or why you have been sent here to this wretched plane of existence but I know someone who can possibly find you a passage back. Who's that? <laughs> You'll be traveling through a wormhole, remnants of portals created by the godfather, uh, godfather of dragons, Asgaroth, also known as Io. The great celestial dragon that gave the realm space Bahamut and Tiamat. But this was eons ago, around negative 31,000 DR, when Io brought dragons to, to Toro through an event known as Tearfall that left tears between the two worlds. The one that can show you the way is an old water genasi friend of mine. You should find him by dropping a message in a bottle off the lighthouse docks in the North Bay. I'll prepare the letter for you. The tide always seems to wash them into his hands. Wait in the lighthouse and he will find you. The whole portal traveling stuff, um, will that hurt? <laughs> it will open a gateway. Okay. Thank you. So how long until our magic stops working? What you have left, what resides within you, is the weave that courses through your veins. If you call upon the weave, it will leave you. Will it also mm -hmm. sever ties with my ancestors? I do not know of this magic, but if you are tied to your ancestors, it's probably through the ethereal plane and not the weave. Okay. Uh, I would like to use my rod of the pact keeper 
and try to give myself one of my warlock spells back. A hundred percent works. Absolutely. Thank you. You see him pick up Ooh. this gold, like this kind of purple stat. Like it's it's like a cane he's been walking with, and he, when he grips it tight, you hear like an audience's laughter and and the masks like run down either side kind of like illusionary all the way down it and you see all those masks like form into something and pour into his arm he's like, <sighs> okay all right let's do it Seisha creeps over to Voss while he's doing his letter writing Voss Voss and very softly so she's yeah, hoping it's... she's not overheard hey Voss um do me a favor and just kind of look at the letters that are in here. And later on, maybe write that stuff down for me. All right. We Knowing might... what she's getting at, I'll make a perusal of what I'm seeing here. Having no concept of understanding it, I imagine. I just but... want, just memorize what the symbols look like so I will... we can do the best I can, but keep in mind I'm going to be translating this as that's a curly Q and that's a square with a circle inside of it. That's all I need. If we give this to Vajra, she might be able to help him. All right. I look with intent and stare around the area, attempting to collect as much of this information as I can, comprehending none of it. Uh, go ahead and make a perception or investigation check. Sweet. Curly Q, curly Q, shoebox, smiling man, <laughs> angry man. It's like asking me to translate something in Japanese. 19. Okay, 19. Okay, All right, uh, noted. Make a note of that. That'll determine what you can see and store in your mind's eye, as it is a lot. Yeah. And she's going to yeah, move. Like, to put it in perspective, it's like that Charlie Day scene where there's pages everywhere. And, <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> this is a pepe. <laughs> but, but times 10. Yeah. So, so it's just that gonna... times 10. Yeah. And so there's she... pages overlapped on top of each other and things like that. So it's hard to, you can't get full, uh, the full viewage of certain pages and stuff like that, but you have a good overview and memorize as much as you can. Seisha will move to Venley. Something, something he said triggered a memory. The cultists, the, the chant, the ritual they do, the last line. Behold the fates rewritten and you will know me as the one true being, the Alpha and Omega. Do you think someone might be trying to unseat Eo? That could be their end game. The Harbinger. Harbingers usually foretell someone else coming. Yeah. Probably someone strong enough to dethrone. That's horrifying to think about. Yeah. Just a thought. And Vinley has not looked at anyone directly the entire time. Like, even when she's talking to y'all, she's looking at something. In this particular case, she's looking at um... God, I can't remember his name. I just oh. had it. The Black Staff? Yeah, the Black it's Staff. Fine if, it's <laughs> fine if you just want to say the Black Staff. Yeah. So she's just looking directly at the Black Staff with her mask still on. And she just nods her head to you. So what about you? There's nothing we can do to help you? Um, as he's finishing up the letter, rolls it up um, and, and puts the small note inside of a glass bottle and corks it. And yeah, he, uh, what he does is you actually watch him as he searches through yeah. the disheveled room and he reaches and finds a mostly empty bottle as he just unceremoniously dumps whatever was in it onto the ground and stuffs the note inside, corking it. As he hands it to you, um, he uh, looks to you, Vinley, with the eyes of a defeated man seemingly run out of hope but then turns to you, Harold, when you ask this. And um, I've gone over every scenario. It is my understanding there is a new Mistra, but I am bound to the weave of the old. 
and he looks across the room and I have tried everything. And then he turns back to you, Vinley, and pulls out a personal letter. It's a, a sealed letter with his symbol on it. I'll reach out and take it and put it into my bag and say, I assume you want this to go to L'Oreal. She is a beautiful and strong woman, a chosen of Mistra. Give it to her for me. It will let her know I have not forgotten her and I never will. It is sealed with the last of my magic. She doesn't know I'm alive. So to make her believe, tell her, whether near or far, and she will know the rest. Of course. Rayhand Vinley Galanodo, you have my blessing and my gratitude. Thank you. I will do my best with that. And for the record, I believe L'Oreal, when she knows you're not dead, will move multiple planes to get you back. If it is possible. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. We knew what we were doing when we rose the City of Hope. Well, if it's a City of Hope, there's hope enough for you then. And uh, with that, uh, he looks at you and goes, I assume you will be on your way. The longer you stay here, the more you will feel the effects of a, a beer. It, we will. We're, yes, Seisha? Lore Seeker. I'm just curious about what, what is the font here? There is a small library, but there is no tie to Akma but you will Actually, not find what you are looking for. No, I just, that that brings me a lot of comfort to know that at least some of it is there. Thank you. The writings of this world will not bring you any hope. No, I doubt they would. And he actually, uh, he opens the door for y'all again. And as you walk out, he walks out with you and he looks down and he goes up and you watch the cart, the rug in the center come all the way up to the top and s come level with the floor. See, we'll step I told out. you, rugs are never just rugs. I knew it! The magic is it's stuck to the floor. And I will step onto the rug. I will as well. Yep, yeah. You step on it is like a solid, you step on it is solid, there's no give, there's no, it is like walking on a hard, hard floor. Boss, what are you doing? I step on the rug. <laughs> I'm the least involved with this rug. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as you all step on, uh, he yep. says a command word and it slowly descends. As soon as they're like out of sight so that it's dark above, mm -hmm. say she's gonna turn to Venley and reach out and grab both her hands. We just put the bricks down. Yeah, the ghost guy. I have no words for what is happening on this day. <laughs> and she just kind of looks off. Yeah, Say she just gives her. Home. Say she just gives her hands a little squeeze and let's go. <sighs> I agree with Harold. And and let's you... head to the docks then. You followed the directions Kelvin sent you in towards the North Bay. Your mind still has a hard time adjusting to the differences of the world, despite many of the familiar similarities. Knowing the bay in Waterdeep is to the south in the Dock Ward, you make your way north. As you see no discerning marks separating wards with colors or banners, or even through quality of a building, 
They all seem to be the same grimy and dull that matches chilled air that cuts through the city despite you knowing it is the middle of the summer. The entirety of the city also feels like the dock ward in a sense that there is an underlatent stench that cuts through the air. You notice the streets are not as clean as they should be in any way that reminds you of the field, uh, in a way that reminds you of the field board. They're not covered in refuse as it seems someone is cleaning the streets, but it does allude to the fact that this city does not have indoor plumbing. So she is no just sort of bouncing as she walks. Okay. There are no carts or carriages to usher you to and fro, and it takes you about 30 minutes to make your way to the docks. You easily find two small boats for you to row out to one of the barrier islands that border the bay, much like Waterdeep. To the northeast is an old lighthouse. It is a square two-tiered obelisk structure that stands tall over the crashing waves just outside the bay. A deep but bright red light washes over the entrance to the bay as it slowly pans in a circle across the horizon. How does the water look? The water looks a little more choppier. Um, it's still, it's not a different color or anything like that, but uh, where the bay in Waterdeep seems to be a lot more calm, this water seems to be a lot more uh, turbulent. Here's a question for you. <laughs> when we were on the way here, we were passing through the 30 minutes of city. Yeah. Were we seeing live changes happen to the city to mirror changes happening on our plane? Or no, are no, no. they, no. Nope. No, it's, it's okay, so this city, um, there's, it all seems to be kind of the same everywhere, where like in Waterdeep, you have your different wards that obviously separate the classes and the types of buildings and things that you might find, and it's colors everywhere and stuff like this is very droll and gray and... Yeah, and it's not like if someone knocks a door down, a door knocks down here. It's not like... Yeah, that's what, that's what I was... That's specifically what I was checking for. Yep. Okay, nope. cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is a completely separate entity. Yep. Um, awesome. Uh, whoever is rowing the boat, I would say go ahead and give me an athletics check. I'm imagining... Two. <laughs> two because two? you have to... It, it, it I'll, is two different I'll do it with her. Okay, so Voss Three. on one, V on the other. Unless oh, I think Seisha. I think Seisha was yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh come on, eight. Okay. Seventeen. Okay. Oh, uh, one boat's doing well. <laughs> uh, v, you are used to rowing the boats in the calm waters of uh, Waterdeep, and the water here is definitely choppier, and you row constantly against the current. And by the time you make it to the docks at the base of the lighthouse, you find yourself heavily winded and you will be under the effects of exhaustion, but well, it is one of the short-term exhaustions where you can expend a hit die during a short rest, if you so wish. To And so instead of gaining the health from a hit die, you just negate the uh, the exhaustion. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, Sounds good. And you pull yourself up and you are on the docks right by this lighthouse. Okay, so we throw the message into the water. From the top of it? Uh, you can he just drop said it drop the, the letter into the water. Yeah. Oh. We yeah. have to wait for him in the lighthouse. That's it. Yep. Yeah, you look at the lighthouse and it's in the center of this like island outcropping and so dropping it from the top would probably shatter it across the ground. Let's make sure hey. we can get in before we put the letter in the water though. Right. Okay. Go. I'll go, go and check to the, the lighthouse. door. Yeah, looks East. as barren as the rest of the city. Looks yep. extremely barren. No lock. Doors slightly open. I press it open, but I do not go inside. Okay. Okay. You see a door swing open. Um, and yeah. but you see that it it is an empty room, basically. Yep. I give a mm -hmm. thumbs up. V, you want to throw this into the water? You probably got the best arm out of any of us. Sure. All right. Uh, does that have to roll anything to throw into the water? No, you yeah. do not. All right. She just goes, yeet! <laughs> and you throw the bottle into the choppy waters and watch as it drifts away from you into the chilled waters. Oh, she of... yells yeet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Goliath. It's Goliath. It's, it, yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but after the bottle disappears from sight in the choppy current, you go into the gray, uh, gray stone walled lighthouse, void of any color or life. You expect someone to be running it, but find an empty pillar that stretches up about 300 feet in the air up to a perpetual elemental red flame spotlighted by a large domed mirror and focusing lens. In the main foyer of the lighthouse, you find a table and a few chairs to wait for the stranger that the tide is supposed to wash in. Hey, Venley? Are you okay? I'm just focused. You're really wearing the mask a lot. Can you... Can you look at me? She'll look up at you. Are you satisfied? Not until you feel better, but this will work for now. I just... I want to get home. I understand. We'll get back soon. It's not all bad. The font is still a library. V is very much noticing how awkward the interaction was. It's just sort of like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> All right. Keep and an eye you, out. Yeah. Uh, as you're waiting, uh, the door before you flies open with a whoosh of cold ocean breeze. And standing in the doorway is a figure that looks almost like a ghost. His skin is an icy pale blue and his hair slicked back like waves of icicles. His layers of white and icy blue nomadic robes billow in the harsh wind as light reflects off of the almost clear blade made of ice strapped to his back. He greets you with a warm smile as he wrings the seawater from his vestments, looking towards you with his icy blue eyes. Seisha, Harold, and Voss you can see through your passive insight that even though he smiles at you, his eyes are sad. You must be the group that Kelvin sent. Um, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Aliquin, one of the Anarchs of Sheer. Does that title ring any bells? Uh, you, no, and uh, you can't roll because yeah, it, it is, is a, a beer It's a title. native thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And his name was Aliquin? Yep. Yep. Definitely Aliquin. A L E Q U I N. Thank you. How did you get the message so fast? Um, I stay where the tide um, brings anything to me in case I need it. Huh. I'm, hi, I'm Seisha, uh, Lord Seeker, Seisha Vallis Bard. Um, we're stuck here and we're trying to find our way home. We're from Turil. And he nods knowingly, as there's probably a message about that in, in the letter. <laughs> yeah, but what else are you going to say? <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, welcome. Um, seeing as we don't have a ship, uh, and the longer you stay here, the worse off your mag magic is going to be. Um, I think we should travel through the charred moor beyond the Vayam Neri forest. I know it doesn't sound pleasant, and I wish I could alleviate any concern you all might have, but I can't. However, with it only being slightly less than a day's journey from here to the wormhole, it's the quickest route in getting you back home. What does this journey entail, exactly? <sighs> the Charred Moor is a wasteland purged of life through its desolation from a beer being overrun by dragons and primordial elementals. The Charred Moor is a wasteland hunting ground for the Veindris, or Veindris, the shimmering ruin who rules the Black Glass Sea beyond the wastes. Her throne rests in the heart of the dormant volcano once she tore the heart from the primordial Karishmis, or Karshimis, after the blue breath of change faded from the second sundering. With Karshimis's demise, it leaves the Great Worm as the tyrant ruler of Sheer. Only if we are very unlucky, we will have to deal with her psionic wrath as she hardly ever leaves her throne, leaving her minions and slaves to do her bidding. The Vayimri, the Vayimniri forest, or the Vayimniri are what you all commonly refer to as dragonborn. The 
Bayamniri Forest once stretched as far as the eye could see, like an ocean of green. After the eons of wars between the Primordials and their once enslaved dragons, not much of Sheer or Larakond is left in the way your homeworld is. Beyond the forest lies the charred moor. We might encounter some of Vayamirni within the wood, so we must use caution. It is a refuge for some and a hunting ground for others. In the worst case, they are slaves of their dragon overlords, and we have to fight our way through. Best case, we come across some freed survivors, but even then, we could be seen as food. I, I, okay, I, I, I get why that guy is there. Like, I get why Callum's here. That makes sense to me. What are you doing here? I was born here, as many of my kin are. Unlike your world, ours is teeming with primordials and half-elementals like Jin, Dao, Afrit, and Marid. So we are plentiful here. But my kin were rare on Toro. Genasi on both worlds were bred to be conquered and suppressed. But many of us have learned to fight back just as the Vayamniri fought against their dragon overlords and the dragons against their primordial enslavers. During the area of era of upheaval, uh, we were blessed with a world less cruel when Ao destroyed the Tablets of Fate, merging your world with ours. Yet sadly, we were not welcomed with open arms and many of us were met cruel fates, but also found many friends, met lovers, had families, made homes until the second sundering when our world was ripped from from each other once again. Those of us born on a beer returned to our natural born cosmos and our loved ones and children stayed behind. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry. So do we have time to sort of get our heads together before we go, or is this a we have to go right now sort of thing? Um, it's honest, honestly up to you. The longer you stay, the more your magic is going to fade. Um, I we, mean, we are I'm... most likely going to have to rest before we get to the charred moor. I'm just, um, I, I kind of got the crap beat out of me earlier, and it'd be nice to kind of rest a little bit and tend my wounds. Can we just take an hour then? And then be off. Yeah. Oh, if you wanted to take a short rest while waiting? You could have done that while oh, you waited. Okay, okay so sorry. quick question. I'm pretty worse for wear right now. Very bloodied. Um, And since I can't heal anymore because I'm exhausted. No, 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 that's not what that means. That means, so you have seven hit die that you can spend. You can spend one of those and get rid of your exhaustion, leaving you six to spend for healing. Does that make sense? Oh, right, because I can do seven total. Okay, my bad, my bad. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Uh, okay. I also have a question for the DMs. Huh? Of Go course. Ahead. So I have not used my arcane recovery today. If I were to try to, would it work? It would indeed. Oh. Um, and if, if we if we're taking a short rest, we can use my um uh bard thing, song of rest. You can add yep. a D6. Yay! Uh, yeah, let me do that. Alright, one, two. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Sasha looks a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take V a second, but she about to look a lot better too. I just gotta get all these G12s out. <laughs> so yeah, I got, got to look fresh. <laughs> Anarch. Do I recognize that term? Uh, you you do not, but I mean, uh, Seisha can ask if she so wishes. Well, yeah, that, oh, okay, got okay. it. Um, you mentioned Anarch? What, what's that? Um, the Anarchs are one of the oldest orders of sword mages on Abir. Um... The order originated long ago amongst Genasi primordial elemental spellcasters on the continent of Shear. Uh, we served to protect the local Genasi kingdoms against the aggression of Abir's most powerful dragon lords and any other tyrant that abuses the responsibility of a crown to its people. 
Uh, during the time of the blue breath of change, my wife and I helped take down a shadow group of hellbent and subject on subjugating and eradicating all of us that came over from the convergence of Abir Toro. The Emnuri are natural born fierce fighters and the weave of Toro gave birth to many of them becoming sorcerers, making my kind easy targets as we had to adopt, adapt to a new world. Mm. This sounds, this sounds like a really hard place to live. Yeah, it's not the most pleasant. And you can't leave through those portals that we're going to try to head toward? For us born on a beer, we have 24 hours before the magic set by Ao through the tablets banishes us back to our plane. I am lucky enough to be able to harness enough magic to visit my family once a month. For Kelvin, his ties to Mistra and the deal he struck with her would cause him to be completely consumed by the weave if he stayed. I am blessed with a wonderful wife, Helion, who is Sorry. No. She's the wind beneath my sails, and my daughter, Mala, who has my entire heart. Ah. But I live a life torn away from them as they are back on Toril. Ah, but that was eight years ago. I spent three years without them searching for an answer. Uh, during that time, I met Kelvin. And we learned of the wormholes created in the Tearfall of Asgarath. Kelvin was nearly destroyed when he returned here to Toril the first time. So he could return, but with no way of returning to Abir, he would only return to bring his wife the pain of losing him once again. I would like to say he still has hope, but it's hard to find these days. With would it, do you think it would be possible for him to make an arrangement with the new Mistra to return to Toro? I don't know. Uh, it's hard because it's, we don't know what was in that deal he made the first time. Sure. Sure. And, well, gods have no power here. Yeah. Mistra is not here, so... Can't really ask her. <laughs> if you're ready, we should leave. Yeah. All right. Is everyone prepared? Yes. As much as I'm gonna be. Let's head off then. After okay. meeting. Oh, what do you do? No, I was just saying. I just let it bleed the way. So after meeting Aliquin, I can't even see you at this point. <laughs> hey, give me, give me one second. I am just, <laughs> I'll be off camera for a, just a second. He's <laughs> vanished into the shadows. Yeah, I, am. <laughs> I am a goose. <laughs> after meeting Aliquin and gathering your things, you start heading out of the city. You watch as the water genasi man creates a raft of ice by plunging his hand into the ocean. You all get across by floating on the <clears throat> line of frozen water that slowly drifts through the calm current generated around you from the man controlling the waves through, moment, uh, through movements that echo the ebb and flow of the tide. It isn't long before you reach the shoreline, just outside the city walls, and where you would expect to see miles of rolling green grass and farmland, you only see a few hundred feet that leads into a deep, dense forest. Well, at least it's not a swamp. You, um, you mentioned that the dragonborn are, it almost sounded like they're subjugated by the dragons here? They are. Oh. That's why they were created. I didn't, I didn't realize they were Wow. Dragons are not what the stories on Toril 
make them out to be. Even the metallics are bastards in their own right. At least here on a beer. So. You continue to walk and talk, continuously getting the information of how depressing a beer truly is. As you begin to cross through the threshold of trees, you feel the temperature drop even further past the slight chill of the brisk, uh, to a, it goes from a slight chill to a brisk bitter bite to the air. Large looming coniferous pines and high thick canopy trees block out a large amount of light from the blue sun above. A few rays of light cut through the leaves like ethereal tethers that stretch down from the heavens to the ground. It is almost serene in how calm it is here. A soothing reprieve from the violence you experienced earlier in the city. The dead pine and leaves crunch beneath your feet as you move further in and a little bit of nervousness sets in as you see claw gash markings across trees. How large are they? Uh, medium sized. Okay. Do they look like dragonborn hand size? Uh, possibly, or bears. Or bears? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're a bears. Dad <laughs> <laughs> uh, This is D3. You're on your own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hashtag dad joke. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I turn to our guide and say, the following sections that approach the more dangerous one, should we attempt to approach it quietly, or does it even matter? I mean, stealth is never a bad idea. Um, it will slow us down. So there is that. Um, I mean, it's up to y'all. You know, he, he looks to the more heavily armored of you. I know it's it's harder for some than it is for others. Oh, you have no idea. He can help with that for an hour. How long do you think this is going to take? Um, uh, I, he, he looks at you and he goes, Save Don't, it, Harold. I wouldn't use it. It's not worth it. Uh, we might need it when it comes. Um... Just so you know, my computer just went black. I don't know if I'm crashing. Uh, you are frozen solid. <laughs> we can hear you, though. We, yeah. You're just frozen looking very worried. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, keep going. Why not? Works for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll see if it comes back. Uh, yeah, we'll see if it comes back. Uh, if it doesn't, let us know, and we can take our break early. I've got my screen again. I can see you guys moving. You're just going to have a frozen right, me. Yeah, we'll, roll with, we'll roll with that until break. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so is everybody stealthing, or are you doing anything else? I turned to him and says, the section that's approaching, because it seemed to be like there were a few tears to this, is it the most dangerous, and will we encounter more living things attacking us or as opposed to just physical obstacles? Um, I don't know. Uh, I've never ventured this far. I don't use this wormhole when I go to visit my family. It's just a lot closer than the one I visit and not underwater. Oh yeah, that's different. Uh, yeah, and you remember him saying that the full travel uh, from where you were at the lighthouse to the wormhole is slightly less than a day. Um, so, uh, but yeah. And... Mm -hmm. Is I confirmed with the rest of the group, would it be wise perhaps for me to do a quick scout ahead, not go too far forward just to see what kind of thing we're running into? It may be wise to do that, but only if you're okay with Savard coming with you. I am. And marking position in my own keen mind, I would like to do a small move forward, I would say about 20 to 30 minutes and no more than that, so that I can get there and back again in an hour. 
to know less. There's two of you. This one works. Okay. <laughs> this um, is the working one. Uh, yeah, give us a second. I just threw up all our overlays. Sorry. So it'll be it'll be just a second to fix it. This <laughs> is weird. It's very weird. <laughs> um, Surreal. So, is everybody... Does Voss let everybody know that he's going to scout for an hour? Yeah, I just asked. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, yeah, you stay relatively ahead. Uh, you can go ahead and give us uh, a survival sur or. I, I'd say survival. survival. Yeah, it would be a survival check. Yeah. One hour, and then we look for you. And 15. Can Savard give him the help action in this? Yeah, absolutely. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Okay. Dude, that does change things. It does. That does change <laughs> things. <laughs> um, traveling deeper into the wood, you start to hear the bleeding screams of a creature nearby. And as you cautiously investigate, you find a deer hanging from a net in a tree as it thrashes about entangling itself deeper. It screams out loud, and you can easily be, uh, it, and the, the loud screams can easily be heard through the wood nearby, calling out to whatever may be lurking, or hunting. I immediately head back to the rest of the group, making note of the path that I have taken, mm -hmm. and knowing that that spot will probably populate as soon as I get back, I advise everyone to go a little bit away from that. Okay. Okay. But that is all I do. All right. And you guys venture forth? Mm-hmm. All right. So, as you're all walking, you come across a small clearing. As you each hear the snap of a rope or something similar. Um, let's see. Vinley. As you're walking, your leg snags a small th uh, thread as you hear the sound of a few small um, slings fire at you, doing a total of... And I need you to make a, a con save at disadvantage because you got struck with so many of these little needles. Yeah, we take five piercing damage. Mm -hmm. Uh, what happens when I fail to save? Because it failed. Like, <sighs> hardcore failed. You feel woozy, like your head is swimming as the poison courses through your veins. And you all watch as Vinley staggers and then collapses to the ground. Fisher sure runs over to her and kind of scoops her up and closes her eyes, and I attempt to use Lay on Hands on her. Okay, are you For spending... five points to okay. cure poison. Uh and yep. you wash the poison away, and Vinley, you are instantly brought back to consciousness as you had just fallen unconscious from the poison. Do I <laughs> see where those came from? You do, and it looks like a primitive trap. Hey, come on. Um, Aliquin will also walk over to you and, and offer you a hand to help you up. She uh, reaches over and picks up the mask that fell off, and she looks angry, and she starts looking around as she puts it on. Where did that come from? I point to the trap. Uh, and uh, Aliquin says, it's probably the Vamniri. I'm, I'm pretty sure they hunt in this these woods. Need to keep moving. Let's go. Um, keep active eye out for anything that might be stalking us. Okay. However, as we move forward. Same. Um, anybody that wants to make a perception check may do so. Cool. As you know that this wood may be littered with traps. Yep. I know you like want to, to do, do a that. perception check. 18. Okay. 23. Okay. 11. Mm-hmm. Wait, what were we rolling? I'm sorry. Perception. Also got an 11. <laughs> eight? <laughs> a solid eight, though. That's a strong eight. That's not a normal eight. That's like a, a better than average eight. That's a gentleman's eight. Yeah, that's a, that's a scholarly eight. Um, Harold. <laughs> oh, great. You find a recently disturbed area of the ground, and as you go to investigate, 
the metal jaws of an iron bear tra- trap come slamming down across your ankle. Um, your it. good ankle. <laughs> no! <laughs> I was going to say, wait, wait. oh, well, that's inappropriate. I mean, the metal ankle is pretty good. Let's yeah. be honest. You're going to take nine piercing damage, and you are restrained. Uh, as it has uh, closed over you. And then... I... Uh, okay. Continue. I was going to say, I immediately, A, go to cover his mouth to keep him from screaming. I'm going to wrench it B, open. I, w- I will hand you the crowbar that I keep with me. Okay. Go ahead and uh, and make a strength check with advantage. Oh, that was that was awesome. Strength, straight strength. Nineteen, baby. Nineteen, and you're easily pry it open using the leverage of the crowbar and pull his leg out. Thanks for advantage, because the other one was a three. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you're walking a little bit further, V, the ground beneath you gives way as the false ground of dirt-covered tarpaulin uh, succumbs to your weight. You fall 10 feet into a bed of hand-carved wooden pikes buried into the dirt below. Oh! I'm going to Uh. reach into my pouch and pull out my extending pole and drop it down to her. Okay, Okay. uh, you're going to take two points of falling damage and five piercing damage as you are Stabbed. It's okay, it could be worse. Hold on, hold on to the top of the pole and say go, 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 and it'll bring you up. Okay. Go, go, go. <laughs> <Shoot. What? laughs> You're yanked out of the hole. Um, and then lastly, Vinley, once again. Fuck y'all. <laughs> you are walking and you are instantly swept 20 feet into the air, caught in a large net suspended by a branch by a nearby tree. You are restrained. Yep. No damage. Um, and go over to where the rope that's holding her is tethered mm-hmm. and carefully untie it and slowly lower her back down. But okay. in her fear, in that sudden shank, like just sudden rip, she would probably yelp a little bit uh-huh. and then say, in Draconic, you motherfuckers. <laughs> um. Uh, ooh, I guess the, 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 the equivalent would be you, Dragon Slave. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you go ahead and, uh, make an attack against the rope, Seisho. All right. That's going to be a 23. 23, easily, and, uh, go ahead and roll damage. Damage. Yeah. That's going to be six. Six, yep. And holding one at the, the top end of the rope, you cut it, and... Uh... You easily let... Vin- Vinley's yeah. not heavy. Yeah, not. <laughs> yeah. You easily... If it was, like, some, you know, one of the other... Like, yeah. If it was V. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it, if it was V in the net or you in the net, yeah. it'd be a little bit harder. But yeah, yeah. you easily... Let her down safely. Um, I'm sorry, how- are you calling me fat? No, your armor's heavy, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, how hurt does everyone look? I look fine. I'm good now. I've got, I mean, like, a, a slightly bruised eye. I, okay. I'm i hurt-ish. I'm fine. Okay. I'll hold on to first aid, then. Um, as you continue forward, uh, you start to walk down a forest path that is narrow and overgrown. The razor vine. A blade sh- uh, shape like parasitic vine that chokes the life out of the surrounding flora cuts through most of the area, making it treacherous to avoid and walk through this difficult terrain. Meanwhile, looking down the tunnel like trail gives you vertigo and puts you off balance. Um, I need everybody to make me intelligent saving throws as shadows appear to move and you feel like you're just going in circles. Intelligence? Eight. Yep. Wait. <laughs> I'm loving question. eight today. Harold or Ethan, Harold gave us ins- inspiration. Inspiration? Did you? I, no, not, not, last, not this session, last session. Last oh, session. last session. My it's bad, my bad. It's probably gone by now. Yeah, my bad, last my bad. Minutes. I don't know. I was just checking because, you know, V's got that plus zero intelligence. I didn't see this like this. 
all scholarly eight again. I really want to make it sure. I want to make it known how strong the number eight is. Uh, um, okay, uh, Harold, you got an eight. Yeah. Woo, so these got a really good, strong ten. Okay, uh, I'll I'll call you out because you're gonna because as you are moving, you're 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 like stump fumbling as the vertigo is hitting and you're like brushing against the razor vine. You're gonna take seven slashing damage, Harold. Uh, Vinley, what did you get? Uh, I'm a little distracted from going up, then down, now sideways, so I got yeah. a 12. A 12? A 12? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're going to take 11 slashing damage as you uh -huh. get wrapped up in some of the razor vine, and it just shreds you. Uh, what'd you get, Voss? Dirty 20. Um, you... Uh, definitely move through this area. Yep. Uh, v, um, you uh, take 10 points of slashing damage. Uh, Alec, I don't wanna. Alec one got a 22 on his intelligence saving. <laughs> uh, Nothing better happened to him. Nothing. <laughs> and Seisha. Um, I got a grand total of two. Woo! All right. I rolled a one. <laughs> uh, but you're going to take five. Yes, slashing damage. Oh uh, no! Because you know a lot. You're covered in full plate, yeah, so it, yeah. it's in the in the little like nicks and, and hard to yeah. get out. Harder to get out. Harder to get out. Yeah. Harder to get out. Yep, uh, yep. Those that took damage is because you became disoriented, feeling like the vines are closing in on you, very similar to they did in uh, the City of the Dead. As you swear, you are watching them move and creep along the edges of the wood, as you stumble and fall into the razor vine. Uh, Voss and Aliquin. Uh, you make your way through the winding tunnel. Oh, no, uh, it, you you help everybody out. But Voss, uh, you're leading the group, correct? At this point, yes. All right, go ahead and make a survival check. Can I do something really fast before we keep mm -hmm. going? Of course. Sure. I'm less than half the hit points that I start at. So um, Benly just asks for a moment and she kneels down pulls out her healer's kit and takes off her various robes to where it's just those tight pants and the sleeveless skin tight top. And she's like, I'm not messing up my robes anymore. And she puts those in and then starts treating all the other wounds that she has. Got it. And use the healer's kit on yourself. Yeah. Harold, Harold. What? I'm starting to think that close spaces are not my thing. Um. Uh um, yeah, not like your best encouragement, <laughs> but can you can you talk me down a little bit? Here? Uh, <laughs> I look down at the wounds I've got from the bear trap, and then I like, cuts all over my body from the razor wire. And I look back, and I'm like, you know, all things considered, this definitely isn't the worst thing we faced. He's right. I the mean, we are closing we've... in though. Yeah, but I mean, think about how much worse it would have been if we were like in the, the big sacks full of gel. Here, look, I'll make them stop. And um, she turns and in Sylvan, she just says, can y'all fuck off to the plants? And says, look, they're gone. They're not closing on you anymore. You see Eloquence smile. Look, I don't know what you want out of me. This is a shitty situation. I want to go home. Listen. Big open spaces. Think about big open spaces. We're all standing at a food court and you can smell fried duck. And the fried duck is over there and there's a giant duck wearing a top hat telling you about the fried duck. And that giant duck with a top hat's name is Mr. Quibbles. And Mr. Quibbles has a, a vast history that I'm coming up with as I go. I uh, pat Harold on the back exactly where he just got hit by a razor vine. Ow! Like, okay. All right. probably not your best shot. Are yeah, you okay? okay. I'm fine. Uh, 17. But mm -hmm. Don't worry. Good. <laughs> um, <laughs> as, as you're walking and talking and Harold is trying to uh, guide Seisha and, you know, keep her wits about her, um, I will say, I will clarify that these vines and the vines that were in the City of the Dead, not the same. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I figured you did. I just wanted to yeah, make that sure. Um, but Voss, you yeah. make your way through the winding tunnel of foliage created by the razor vine as the terrain begins to slope down. 
the forest floor beneath your feet starts to become softer and softer as you feel it begin to shift under your weight. I immediately wave to the rest of the group to wait a moment okay. as I feel this happen. Yep. Um, each step that you have as you approach cautiously becomes further and further slopped in mud. Does it feel deep or is it just... As of right now, it is the mud reaches up to maybe your ankle. And Do you I can... see anything I could tether a rope to? You do. There are a few looming branches from old trees that lurch overhead. I tie a rope to one of them if I can loop it over and around and up. Uh, go ahead and make a rope use check. Be dexterity check, correct? Uh, dexterity plus your proficiency modifier. I am proficient with rope, and today it is helping true. So five, seven. No, yeah, so it's a little. That is 19. Uh, yeah, uh, easy enough. You throw it over and kind of anchor it and kind of everyone kind of comes down and you use it to swing across. If you so wish. If you so wish. Mm -hmm. You, you can use it as a tether to swing over what you can easily attest to quicksand. I will will let you know this. You threw the rope over, you did a slip knot and uh, tied it to the tree by pulling on the weight. Mm -hmm. But judging by what you are attempting to do, you will lose this rope. Or you will have to cut it. Yeah. And you will lose about 10 feet of it. I understand. Yep. And I accept this. Okay. Um, so if you want to swing across, make an acrobatics check. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Instead of swinging, can I like pull up on it as I move across and then let go as I move to the other side? It, it's a hanging rope, yep. not a tethered rope. To the yeah, side. but like it's it's far to the side. So as I'm walking, I'm basically pulling myself up as I'm going across the sand. And if you sand. do, then you will stop and be stuck in the center. Oh yeah, that's true. Go. That's a thing. Physics. <laughs> physics. <laughs> this is D and D. There's no physics in D and D. This is a beer. Yeah, this is a beer. Damn I got differently in a beer. I got Damn an you, a beer. Um, easy enough. You just like. It's almost a little bit reminiscent of being on a ship as you swing across and use the rope. Yep. Uh, I will stand on the other side and try to brace myself against something to help everybody coming across. Okay. So, uh, Harold, what did you get on your acrobatics trip? I'm making it now. Okay. I, was, I was too caught up in all the madness. <laughs> 23. <laughs> oh, easy enough. Easy enough. You, boom, land, and then toss the rope back to whoever's next. Uh, we'll say Henley. Nine. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, making your way across, you slip about halfway as the mud gathered on your boots um, from walking down here causes you to slip and um, you fall into the mud and you hit and you immediately sink two feet into the sand. Uh, and you are restrained. Uh, don't fight How it. far away from us is she? Uh, she's about 10 feet from both sides. Perfect. Okay. I pull out my trusty stick. <laughs> go, go, go! Shrink. Can I grab, grab the stick? You can no. grab the stick. No, no, no! <laughs> okay, uh, I need you to make a strength check, uh, but the DC is lowered. Yep. Uh, okay. Thank you, Seisha, for picking the only useful thing out of that I, you don't know what the barking box would have done, okay? Not helped in the situation. <laughs> Fair. I got an 18 total. Okay, nice. yeah. You are back on the uh, side, but you were, like, in order to do that, you had to grab on and you were dragged through the mud. <laughs> so from, like, you know, chest down, chest down, it is just grossness. I wonder what happens when I use a cantrip. They and she just kind of reaches out and gently tries to brush some of the dirt off Bentley. <laughs> she says, I wonder what happens if I use a cantrip and snaps her fingers. Nothing happens. Say she uses both hands. <laughs> it, it, okay. it, you, you snap your fingers, nothing happens. Do you try it again? Yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. You snap again and it, a section, like part, most of it comes off. 
Um, that was a two snap as, job. As you do that, Aliquin will speak up. Non elemental based cantrips have a small chance of working. Oh, great. It's good to know. Yeah. I, but okay. elemental magics, or cantrips, if you will, are pretty straightforward and work well enough here. And we'll say, now that you have a system, um, it takes a couple of minutes, but you all make your way to the- You're able to swing across and get over it. Uh, or, or use the 10 foot grabbing pole. And yep. I, I <laughs> you, would and, just like I, it acknowledge that I rolled a 17. Nice. <laughs> yeah. If you don't roll, you totally can. All right. Uh, and you see like Aliquin like, right. And uh, he'll, kind of grab the, the rope and he'll also swing across. I will cut the rope as soon as everyone is across. Oh. Now have a, oh. If you don't want to, maybe V could use her ghost lantern to untie it. That's a thought. Okay. Uh, and I guess. Huh? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I'm like, okay, ghost lantern, hi. Use mage hands. The spectral ghostly hand comes up, unties Can the you rope, untie it, yay! Moves up, unties the slip knot, the rope falls, and you're able to pull it back, and you do not lose the rope. Thanks, dude. Can I, I can I try to high five my ghost hand? It high fives you. Yeah, you yeah, ghost hand. And then and then she's just she feels like she's bonded. <laughs> and it fades back into uh, the ethereal lantern. Yep. <laughs> like Terminator style, just thumb up going into the lantern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just all the way. In. <laughs> <laughs> and after Vinley sees how excited she is about that, Vinley will just walk up to her and says, isn't it nice to have undead companions? And s slightly smiles, but you can't really see it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Continue forward. Okay. Making your way out of the mud pit, you come to a grassy knoll area covered in wicked, twisted trees. Across the bark, all of them look to be strange, ritual carvings of spirals dug into the wood with an embedded center, faceted black stone. Hanging from the trees is a few sections you see horned, elongated skulls of long dead ram-like creatures. However, what is disturbing about them is the shriveled, decayed snakes that hang and pour out of their nasal and oral cavities, giving it the tentacle-faced illusion similar to that of an illithid. In the center of the unnerving scene is an old Stonehenge obelisk that stands at the base of a stone altar. In the center of the standing stone is the same symbol carved into the trees, a crudely carved radial spiral with a smooth black stone faceted to the center. And as you look more intently at the shrine, you see the black stone is seeping and staining the stone below in a viscous dark ichor that runs down a black like a black heavy cream that pools in the shallow basin created by the altar an uneasy feeling washes over you as you cautiously walk through the area and you begin to hear faint whispers i don't want to walk through the area i would like to try to walk around the area so okay, well yeah got it yeah yeah, yeah. you're okay. running, <laughs> even as you run the perimeter yep. yeah <laughs> um uh, and noting that, and the reason why it's a grassy knoll, and below around the grassy knoll is more of that quick mud. Yes, but you can walk the perimeter if you okay. so wish. Yep. Yes. Um, but even in this perimeter, you begin to hear faint whispers in your mind that sound like they are echoing through the trees. And through the whispers, you feel like if you concentrated hard enough, you could pull something from it if you so wish. And that's where we're gonna take a break. Oh! Ah. That sounds fun. <laughs> that sounds like a big red button to really? push. Really? <laughs> really? If you so wish? Oh, I so what wish. What do you think Sasha's gonna wish? 
I'm gonna. You can have information if you want it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it depends. Like, would she want to to push her mind against these whispers? But we'll find about that when we get back from break. Yeah, we'll be back in about fifteen or twenty minutes. Uh, if you have not already, please make sure you enter hashtag Beyond and hashtag Eldritch into the Rock Bunch ATL chat for your chance to win. Rhyme of the Frost Maiden digital copy on D&D Beyond and an Eldritch Foundry miniature. And we'll be back. And we're back on a beer. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun times. Uh, the party lost freely. They met Kelvin Aronson, the original Blackstaff. And then they were directed to a water genasi born of a beer that knew about wormholes, tethers that tied both Abir and Toril from the tearfall uh, of uh, Asgaroth bringing dragons to Toril as they make their way into the Vayamniri forest and make their way towards the charred moor where this wormhole should be. They come across a grassy knoll with a strange obelisk shrine that leaks a, blacky, a black inky cream substance and they begin to hear whispers. And that is where we pick up from break. So as you make your way around this shrine, you all begin to hear this whisper. And again, you all feel as if you concentrated hard enough, you could pull something from it if you so wished. Does it sound like gibbering whispers or does it sound like chanting whisper? I. Uh, I would say it's a little bit of a mixture of both. Boss oh, does yeah. not trust magic in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening gonna as well. see if I listen or not. Um, <laughs> Vinley would, in her Facial current listens. state, uh, just like passively go after it, not even realizing that she's intently trying to listen to it. Yeah. Okay. Just, Faces all sorts of intent. Okay. Those that are listening, please make a sanity, sanity saving throw. Sasha, you have advantage. Oh, no. Uh. What, what am I? <laughs> so Sorry, it's we're all doing a sanity saving throw? No, no, no. If you're trying to listen. <laughs> so if it's... you are listening to the whispers. Okay. Yeah. You can sure... to ignore them. No. Yeah. So one more time, what is sanity? Yeah. Intelligence uh. and wisdom modifier, add them together, divide them by two. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, round down. So not your saving throw numbers, but your actual, actual modifier. number, because nobody okay. is proficient in sanity saving throws. I have a question just for future reference. Mm -hmm. Because my intelligence is zero and my wisdom is one, does that make it one or zero? It makes it a zero. Because it's round down. Cool, cool. Also, just, just chuck uh, it. Do we benefit from being near Seisha? Uh, you do. It's not a saving throw. It is, oh, really? It is a saving throw. It is. Yes, a it, is. it is a saving oh, yes! throw that none of y'all are, mm. are proficient in, but the bo benefits from Seisha's aura, 100% are here. And uh, that's a three, right? Three bonus, three. yes. Okay. All right, so Harold, what did you get? 12. Okay. Okay. Um, Vinley? 25. Jesus. And uh, how? How did, how? Plus three from... I, ha I have a three in both intelligence and wisdom, plus oh, three, which wow. makes me oh, proficient cool. in... Yep. Oh, man. Cool. Okay. Wow. And then, uh, Seisha. 23. 23. Oh. <laughs> Harold. You know what? I'm revoking my aura. <laughs> <laughs> you are no longer an ally. Harold. You are a threat, madam. <laughs> yes. You focus your mind through the thousands of whispers of a hundred different languages, and then you hear a haunting voice from the void. Oscar. I need you to make me a D100 roll. Oh, good. I think it'll be easier to do in person. Um, 36. Okay. Like it should be good. Two seconds reading something. Oh, that's not good. Okay. That's not good. Take like we got right. a few paragraphs to go through here. 
Oh no, they muted their oh, mic. Jesus. Oh no. Sweet baby. <laughs> we gotta Sweet learn boy. how to read lips, guys. Oh lord. That's, They're that's... still talking. I would like to use um, knowledge of the ages to read your lips. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I epiphany the alert feet. Okay. Yeah. Or There's observant. a lot of discussion right. there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, had to powwow for a second. Um, Harold. Yeah. As you look into this, you get intense emotional push and pull as for a second there, you're like, I must go and I must drink the liquid that is pouring from this obelisk. And as you go, you're like, no, no, that's that, why would I do that? And it's that constant push and pull and push and pull. You go from extreme emotion to complete apathy. Back and forth at your discretion. Yeah, let me just shut my door. <laughs> I have a roommate. Okay, while right. that is happening, the, um, Vinley and uh, Seisha. Again, you hear the thousands of whispers of a hundred different languages, and you start to notice a pattern of something beckoning you. A small undertone. And you hear the same words over and over again in a chant. Drink. 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 Nobody drink that stuff. Uh, you see Harold walking right over to it. Seisha and... runs up and grabs him. Harold, and... look at me, look at me. Get your hands off me, get look your me. hands off me. Harold, stop. What? It's What's the far wrong? realm. What are you talking about? Tentacles, black ichor, whispering. I know what the far realm is. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. V, V, come get Harold. <laughs> What's uh, wrong? She just walks Are over and out? picks him up. Put me down. No. Harold, trust us. I'm, you need to trust me. Everything's no, fine. No, Harold, you uh, are not yourself right now. I feel absolutely normal. I don't think oh, you do. Because that's what a normal person says. What's Harold, wrong no, you? it's okay. So you keep holding him up? <laughs> yeah, get, get him out of here. <laughs> okay. Get, get him out of here. Okay. Okay. He just starts walking away with him. Uh, you see Aloquin like looking over with sympathetic <laughs> eyes, but like that feeling of helplessness and like I want to help, but there's nothing I can do in this. So don't drink the water. Got it. Yeah. Aloquin, where is it we need to go next? And he'll kind of point past and as as you continue on uh be holding Harold as as he goes from these just extreme emotions to nothing uh it lasts for the next eight minutes and then the effects wear off but eight minutes of just and it and those eight minutes feel like hours because of the amount of emotion that is pouring out of Harold that then switches to complete cold darkness almost like the Harlequin. Wow, I hate this. He, you're gonna hear Harold start saying some weird things where he'll go from like laughter and then he just, I suddenly get it. I, I know it. I understand why Matt did what he did. How close he was to feeling. How he was almost there with just the right pushes I could feel again too. <laughs> <laughs> Get your fucking hands off me! I'll fucking slit your throat! Seisha's I want to go start, home. Seisha's going to start softly singing the song that he sang to her after she had the horrible nightmare of her uh, solar being torn apart. Okay. And it's about the end of that song. When your mind finally comes back to you. Uh, oh. Harold? What? Are you okay? Yep. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Can we put you down now? Oh, well, can I am... we put you down now? Yes. Please put me down. I don't want to be touched. Okay. Don't listen to the voices. Okay. Uh, 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 
I guess. Don't listen so. to the voices. Don't listen to the voices. Okay, okay. I put you down. I want to go home. Yeah. We're working on it. Before um, you left, and as you walked over to Harold, make me a religion check. Who? Me? Yes, you. Yep. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, 18 plus 1, 19. Okay. All right. Um, all right. When researching the Far Realm stories and information, you came across a few mentions of spirals, often connected to the dissension uh, into chaos and madness. You don't know the name of the entity, but you remember from the information that you gathered from the stories that a fictional story mentioned this exact symbol, the spiral with the black stone stone in the center. And the book title of that fictional story was The Harbinger. Um, I need to retroactively do something. Okay. Um, Seisha is going to... In my rations, do I have anything that could be like a container? Uh, well, not rations, but yes, you have something within your uh, traveling uh, kit that is a container-like. Okay, she's going to try to catch some of the ichor in it. Uh, as you go to get closer to it, you notice that it works like a ferro fluid as it stretches slightly towards you. Ever so, like just a little bit as you get near. It doesn't reach out long or tendril. It's just an inch or two. Yep. So you're She's going to pull out gloves and put on her gloves and then do it. Okay. And you scoop it up and you have a black milky substance. Okay. All right. And she'll get back with the group. Yeah, that would have happened while V is like controlling Harold and... Right. You know, Notice what everything was, scooped it up, and then um, all of the madness ensued. And you walk for another hour or two as the light begins to heavily fade. The wood begins to fade to their uh, fade in their difficulty to navigate as you begin to see a lot of areas that show signs of forest fire within the past few months. Along the floor bed, in some areas, you find hard cooled, porous volcanic stone. Yet there does not seem to be any signs of uh, a nearby mountain range. And you see Aliquin begin to slow down and look around. We're almost to the edge of the wood, and we're losing daylight. Um, there is less of the Vamniri here than the last time I ventured this far. Uh, we should start looking for a campsite. Um, it's unsafe to wander out of the charred moor in the dead of night. If Aendris, the Shimmering Ruin, were to fall upon us, we would not know it until it was too late. We have to uh, camp here? Well, at least there's a cover of a canopy, but we should rest for the night, and we will make headway at first light. Trust me. It's you okay, okay. Got, got we, we're gonna have to camp somewhere. How sturdy do the trees uh -huh. look? The trees, although charred, it's just like their bark that's burnt in this area. If you go further and further, you see that the trees are uh, worse off and more dead. But in the area that he has stopped you at, said, this is probably where we should stop. Yep. Um, Perhaps we should make camp up in the the trees. Let's, um, mm. let's... I don't feel the, like being there. above the ground in my armor is a good idea. Also, they're not like oaks. They're yeah. coniferous, so they're like pine trees. And oh, then, gotcha. Yeah, so yeah. Um, let's let's see if we can find a better area than this, uh, but something similar. Um, so if anybody who wants to look can make survival checks to see if you can find a decent place to make camp. Sure. I will use Savar to go a little I, bit higher and like mm -hmm. further. I am going to use Knowledge of the Ages to be okay. proficient in survival. I'm okay. going to roll a natural 20, which is what I did. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I rolled another scholarly eight, real smart. <laughs> just like, gone what to college, getting? just got his degree eight. Oh, you rolled a natural 20? Yeah. <laughs> Are you proficient? No. Oh, my natural 20 with proficiency, what? 
You care about this. Ray cares about this. I, I really so don't. You know, Yay, Ethan. we win harder. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so, uh, Seisha and Voss. <laughs> Seisha does it a little better. Well, we have to we have to point that out. I do. I do also slightly better. Oh, hold on, what did we get? I mean, Voss, yours is nice, but mine is dry. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. What What did you get, V? I was gonna say it's funny that you know Ethan here got his scar scholarly eight because I once again got my very strong, bold ten. Maybe <laughs> grad student ten. Up to you. <laughs> <Grad student. laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, those that do, uh, those that are not uh, Seisha and Voss, you look around and the area you find is um, the, a soft ground surrounded by a good amount of brush that could shield you from the chilling wind, but you have no view of anything around you. Um, um, Seisha and Voss, you find a small open grove on soft ground that has a good view in just about every direction for about 60 feet due to the area being surrounded by cooled lava burning away the brush. All right. I called it to the rest of the group. Seems like a spot where we at least won't get ambushed for the night. I think we should be fine here. Fine, fine. Set up watch. I'll, I'll take first watch. I will take second. I have plenty of spells. I'll take third. I, you know, I could, I could just. Take I guess I'll take fourth. I'm okay with taking all of them. No, Harold, because then you're going what? to be useless tomorrow. You are not taking all of them, Matthew. Harold, you can't. All right. Harold, I'm sorry for whatever you I heard. I just want to go home, Seisha. I know. I know. We are so very close. We are. I'll take first watch. Go ahead and... He's going to walk over... Honestly, the... wait, Harold. What? In all honesty, I think you're a little distracted to be taking a watch. Oh. I understand you can't sleep, but... Uh, uh, Alequin will put his hand on your shoulder. I'll take the first watch with him. Okay. All right. She'll give Harold a hug and then he'll, he'll hug her back. Bed down. And then he'll try to sleep. <laughs> Anybody got a sleep spell? <laughs> it wouldn't work. I'm a half elf. Uh huh? Uh, so are you taking the first watch, watch Harold? Uh, if Aliquin is offering, I'll let him do it. Oh, uh, he offered to take it with you. Oh, with me, then yes, you absolutely. Have to I will be alone. First watch. Yes. If it makes you feel better, Harold, Vinley's not going to sleep until four hours after everyone else has gone to sleep. How does half elf sleeping work? Is it like Vinley full elf is like needs four hours, so half elf needs like six hours because no, like no someone like me no, needs they don't, eight they don't hours. Get the, they don't get the happy. No. Yeah. So it sleeping. is, and it is, it is more. You need four hours of solid sleep and then four hours of downtime of not doing anything extraneous. Yeah. Otherwise, you lose your long rest. Yeah. Whereas a elf, four hours is and then can do anything extraneous after that. Yep. Um, so, but yeah, I will take the first watch. Okay, you can go ahead and make a perception check at advantage. Thank you, Aliquin. You've always been a bro. Since I'm sure the entire audience is like, why was Ethan crying the second his name was? 22 is my total. Uh, it's wired. <laughs> uh, as you as you look around, uh, it's it's not quiet. There is definitely noise coming from the wilderness. It is alien though to you. It is unlike anything you've ever heard. Um, but there are like movement. It's there's bugs, but it's like weird bug noises that you can't really explain. Weird frog noises. You hear the bleeding of animals. There's the lots of bleeding. Um, and I feel like I'm no, and someone, someone is like hitting their table or something. Oh, sorry, just... it's it's probably us. Okay. I just thought I'd point that out. Oh, I thought that was the music. <laughs> no, I, it sounds like someone's foot like hitting. No. Uh, it's that 
Oh, uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All good. But yeah, uh, you said bleeding, like a lot of bleeding? Yeah. There's... Like goats? Yep. Sounds <laughs> like I took like, that knowledge ear, away for later. Ears barking, uh, all of the weird, like, ah, yeah. noises that. I'm going to turn to Alec and be like, this is a really weird long shot in the dark for you, buddy. And you strike me as a guy who's been around and seen a lot. Uh, you ever see a little kid in a goat mask? I, I can honestly say I have never seen that. Any kids, and I'm going to describe Yosef to him. Like any kids, like that, that description, wandering around. No, uh, I. I don't spend a lot of time on land. That's fair. That's fair. That's definitely more of a goat thing. Uh, okay, yeah. Well, if you, you know, uh, if, you, if it comes to you, if you're like, oh right, the goat kid that I'm sure you probably would remember if you'd ever met a goat kid. Uh, don't sweat it. We, we, we just know a goat kid. And <laughs> we go back to... Alright. Um, but as you sit a little unnerved about what has transpired over the course of the entire day and hearing these strange noises and knowing that you're about to embark into something uh, where a great worm could exist, um... Nothing happens. All right. This is for the best. Hey, we got at least a short rest, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, Lee, you take the second watch. You're, you're kind of meditating. Yeah. You're like, you know, throughout the whole first part anyway. But Yeah, during the first part, she's just kind of sitting there watching Harold have this interaction, seeing how messed up he is after the whispers. And then when everyone else goes to sleep, she just kind of sits there and obviously keeps an eye on her surroundings, but has Savard with her and is just looking at him the entire time, occasionally looking up to check a sound. Okay. And she has not taken off the mask yet. Okay. Go ahead and make that perception check. 16. <laughs> I'm going to die. Why are they talking? They I don't, don't need know. to talk. <laughs> so, all right. As you look across this barren grove, you notice something crawling through the woods on four pallid, ghostly, silvery uh, legs. There are, sorry, you see, what you see are two pallid, ghostly, silvery, gray-skinned, goat-like creatures standing nearly eight feet tall on long, spindly, digigrade, bipedal hooven legs. It's their gaunt, hunched over forms throw its body through the woods at alarming speed, lurching forward on its thin skeletal arm, like arms, as its fingers stretch into long black claws that rake against the earth. Atop its featureless face, lacking any eyes, nose, or mouth, extend two sets of massive long thin horns that reach out and curve down with spiral hooked ends. And from them hang smaller bits of razor vine and brush. And you see this coming. Um, have I ever seen anything similar to this? You haven't. In fact, it is so unnerving. I need you to make a sanity save. Hell yeah. Wait, are they heading towards us or just oh, moving yeah. through the forest? Oh, yeah. uh, shit. And her aura of protection is only available while she's conscious, correct? Correct. Yep. So that's an 18. Okay. 18. Uh, you, <laughs> Vinley's seen some shit. Um, <laughs> there is something that you latch onto that anchors yourself, and that is the it looks like a almost like a wingless version of what you guys like to call the tickle monsters. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so she will swiftly move between people and start waking people up. With her medical knowledge, she will 
just poke them with two fingers exactly where she needs them to jar them awake. Okay, easy enough. And who are you waking everybody up? Yeah, she's going to move Who's down the a line. First person you, you wake up. V. Okay. V, you are jolted awake. <laughs> just right here. Just two strong fingers right in the base of your neck. Ow! There's other ways to wake people up. Goat monsters. Goat monsters? Uh, and so as everyone is jolted awake uh, quickly, it is just enough time to look and see this creature. And if you check our group chat on Facebook, you can see what it looks like. Oh, oh no, I don't no. know that I want to, honestly. Uh, and as as you look at it, your mind is kind of thrown for a second as I need everybody who looks upon it for the first time to make sanity checks. The aura now oh. acts, so everyone gets plus three to your roll. Okay. Sweet. Do I get a Jesus. damage on this one? Hell no. Why did I get <laughs> It's Labyrinth shit. What is this, Gamma Del Toro hour? Look that thing. No, that was just that specific one. Okay, that's fine. Yep. Uh, all right, Harold. 14. Okay. What? 21. Looks like that uh, Blackstaff trip paid off. Voss. 18. Okay. Seisha. Nine. Okay. Sure. I'm so happy I didn't fail that. I was Sorry, like, guys. I'm about to be useless uh, again. Harold and Harold and Seisha, please uh, roll a d100. Oh, oh no! It's <laughs> a high DC. Mm -hmm. okay. We're on their home turf, boss. Could be All good. Right, what'd, you, what'd you get, Harold? 42. Okay. Uh, all right. So when you go to say something, it comes out as just incapable babbling. You cannot say words. So any verbal somatic or any verbal component you have, you cannot use, all right? Uh, mm -hmm. It lasts for three rounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Seisha, what'd you get? 14. Okay. All right. Seisha, as you immediately wake up and look at these, your vision goes blurry. As Son of a... Okay. Everything goes black and you find yourself in the void. As it speaks your name once again. And you see these twinkling eyes begin to glow. And you, as at first is darkness, and you see, but there is an outline in the, the, the starry eyes that is a shape. And as it grows more and more closer, it starts to get almost darker as you can make out what the shape is and you know you realize that you are looking at a twisted form of your angel and you are paralyzed for one round and uh i need everybody to roll initiative that seems like the appropriate time to do that do i still get advantage <laughs> On, on an initiative? Yeah. Yeah, of oh, course. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, not, it's not changing anything. It just changes what you can do. Okay. Where are you? Man, this is the opposite of last weekend for me. Yeah. This, this yeah. one didn't even reach the scholarly level of eight. This one this one never made it to college. This one's... Uh, <laughs> all right. 25 to 20. Is it a high school dropout? It's... 25 to 20. Anybody? Beauty school dropout. Not I. 20 to 15. Uh, 17. Wait, 15. Voss hasn't gone yet? To 10? Uh, 13. This is the first shitty roll I've actually had this entire game. I got a uh, grad school 10. So we just like to ask, how long did I sleep before I wake up? Did I heal at all? No, you have not benefited from a long rest. <laughs> uh, we did get a short rest, though. You yeah, but I've been damaged since. I, I've taken 17 damage since our short rest, so. No, yeah. we took one, we got one because of Harold's watch. But I used up all mine. Oh, you used all of them? <laughs> oh. Yeah, because uh, I wouldn't be full health. Okay, uh, Harold, what'd you get? Five. <laughs> and Seisha. Nine. Nice. One second. Real nice. All right. Vinley, not Vinley. 
Theo Emiliana. <laughs> See, now V Dave's got me doing it. V, your turn. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so it's just the one creepy dude, right? Uh, uh, there are two of them. Oh, fuck. Okay. Uh, shit. All right. Well, V's just going to say fuck it and go for it. How far away are they from her? About, uh, about 40 feet from you right now. Yep. 40? Okay, so I could get up on him. All right. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm uh, So V, she's going to rage. Okay. okay. So as you rage and your ancestors pour out of you, you surrounding you and helping you as you charge toward this weird satyr-like weird satyr creature, uh, go ahead and make your two attacks. Okay. So first one is a uh, 22 to hit. That hits. Okay, cool. And then, um, let's see. Really? Okay, fine. 10 hit points. And then the second one is a 18 to hit. 18 hits. So weird. And then we'll do, okay, that's better. 15 uh, to hit. I have 15 hit points, I mean. Yeah, 15 damage with uh, two slashes of this giant jawbone Bahir blade. You just carve into this flesh and you start seeing it leak black, silvery-like ichor. Yeah. It doesn't look exactly like the other, but there's the silver sheen to this black ichor. Yep. Uh, uh. It does not scream out as it has no mouth, no eyes, no face. Nothing. Yep. Yeah, uh, I hate that. It is now its turn. Uh, you watch as where you cut this these two gashes, you watch as they start to gr- knit back together. Oh. And then charging from the other side, you see this creature dig its claws into the ground as these vines that look like black tendrils start wrapping around all of you in the campsite. Everyone but V must make is a nightmare. <laughs> oh, strength save. Oh, okay. So strength saving throw. Yep. Oh, good. Uh, oh, hell oh yeah. shit. <laughs> she is uh, paralyzed. Do we still get the bonus? Uh, oh. She is not unconscious. Oh, uh, mm, yeah, she is. Am I? Yes. Yeah, Waited. Incapacitated with as paralyzed. So you do not get the bonus. Damn. Sorry, gang. That's okay. Sorry, that's not your fault. I'd like to blame you. <laughs> <laughs> sure, make this whole situation uh, a lot right. easier. You uh, know what? This is my gift to you, Logan. You can blame me. <laughs> uh, Harold, what'd you get? 19. Okay, you easily break and snap free of these vines that are growing out. Vinley. 17. Again, easily break and snap free of these vines. So I would like it. Make sure you auto fail. She were to. Oh. <laughs> you would, you Rolled would, a 19, though! I know. Vinley, you would like to do what? To explain it in a more uh, less strength way, because oh, it isn't strength, yeah. I would think more of she's strategically moving at the last second and moving only the specific body part out of the way. Okay. Yep. As these tendrils just start reaching out. Um, and Voss. 16. Okay, and you are able to, you again, very similar, like you're snapping some, but dodging and moving out of the way of others. Mm-hmm. Um, but only Seisha is grabbed in in this as they overtake the mound where you're sleeping. Oh, uh, um, did you wake Aliquin up? Oh, you said they wake Okay, everyone. okay. Uh, he fails his, oh no, he gets the plus three. He passes it because- No, no he doesn't. Oh. When he makes the sanity save on the sanity, oh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but his his in. So you rolled that already. Take- I did not. I forgot to roll it. Uh, but yeah, he he also gets wrapped up in vines. Damn. He is not a strong. Go Are ahead. they vines or tentacles? They're uh, vine-like tentacles. Okay. Yeah, they're a lot thinner. Tentacle-like vines. Yes. Oh, okay. That's that. better. 
Yes. <laughs> uh, and then um, uh, attack against me. Yep, yep. And then um, that one's going to do that. And uh, this creature starts running towards you, V, and lowers its head and throws its head up as these uh, hooked horns go to attack you. And it, as it gores right into your stomach with a natural 20. I need you to make a strength saving throw. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, you're going to take yeah. You're raging, well, right? You, you yeah, I'm raging. Damage. So I have yeah. advantage. Yeah, you, you take up still... to six. So you'll take six damage. Okay, I take six damage? Yep, on top of the strength save. Okay, hold on. So that is a dirty 20. Okay, easily able to keep your footing uh, as it tries to gore you to the ground. Yeesh. Uh, but that's its turn. And how much damage did it do? Uh, six. 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 Got it. Yeah, cool. Do I take any damage? Uh, you have, you know, you are just considered restrained. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no damage is taken or anything like that. Cool. Cool. Um, cool. Cool. Uh, Voss. Okay. Um, the vines are not. Do they appear to be uh, hurting them in any way? They just wrap around them. They don't seem to be like crushing them, but yep. they are okay. completely restraining their bodies. Just restrain. Yeah, and okay. this is considered difficult terrain. Difficult terrain. Yep. So okay. moving through the vines as they like try to grab at your ankles and feet just slows you down a bit. You don't have to okay. save. It just slows you down. With sixty feet of movement, can I flank with the Omeliana? Uh, it is ten twenty. Yeah, because I know it's difficult. Thirty just to it is thirty just to get out of the vines and yeah, yeah no, the, you would still have an. You can get to her. You can't. Flank. You can't flank. Yep. Yeah. Can I get to the creature though? You can. Yes. You can get to the creature. Yes. And All they're right. both right. They're actually flanking V, so you can get okay. to one of them. Okay. I get to the one uh, behind her then. Okay, sounds good. Uh, which, which, which one did she damage? The one in front of her. The one in front of her. Can't get to that one? You can, you can get to either one. I get to the one that she's already damaged then. Okay. okay. On sounds the good. off chance that these things are maybe low HP. Okay. All right. That should hit, that's a 25. Uh, 25 definitely hits. Twenty-four points of damage. Uh, you like move up, breaking through the vines, and as you slide up, um, kind of on onto it next to V, you kind of spring up, flip your rapier, and drive it straight into the faceless face of this creature, driving it to the ground. As you pick it up, spin, and turn to face the second one, as you have decimated. Yep. Awesome. Nice. Okay. Uh, it is, you have no more movement and you can't reach the other one. Yeah, uh, that's, but that's my action bonus. bonus. Bonus action was was to dash. So yeah. perfect. Yep. And and so it is down now. There's only one left standing and it is Vinley's turn. Okay. Um, Vinley, looking at the one who shot the vines at us, the one behind V, mm -hmm. just says, if my sister could never catch me with vines, what makes you think? think you could as she holds out a wand and four missiles come out okay as i use two charges of the wand of magic missiles okay okay so that's okay that's eight three four um so 15 plus four is 19 points of force damage all right awesome and you watch as uh, the light from uh, Voss's Moonblade uh, racing through the uh, the woods just creates this eerie light. And then followed right behind him are these uh, globules of light that just slam into this creature whose uh, claws are dug into the ground as it looks towards you and cocks its head. And <laughs> as it stands, and if it could scream, it would. Uh, you watch as Aliquin, seeing you do that, you watch as he uh, um, reaches in and you watch as he draws his hand and you see the air around him chill as he pulls down and you watch as frost and crystalline move over this creature uh, as he casts frostbite. Awesome. Uh, unfortunately, the creature 
breaks free and is unaffected by it. Uh, as he, oh, hold on, he may actually still hold on. Let me check his. No, okay, yeah, yeah. He, he, nope. He still takes half damage. Uh, next up is Harold. It, it is me. It is your turn. Yeah. I uh, try to say something. Uh, what comes out is thus wrestlers things and bear take do theirs that merit outrageous and that flesh is noblest is no more thee take come weather ritual shocks that patience makes. And he realizes, well, that's not going to work. And he's going to wildly go with both hands to stab this thing. Uh, so you're running up. Uh, how much movement do you have? So you would have 10, 20, take 20 for you to get out. Um, and then there, it's a, another uh, 20, 30 feet away from you, so you don't have enough movement. That's fine. I will take my bonus action. Uh, it's within 30 feet. It is within 30 feet. And I'll Hexblade curse it. Okay. okay. Got no it. verbal component. I just have to see it. Yep. It's cursed. And I point at it and I start shouting to try to intimidate it, which I'm not even going to make a roll. I don't think it can be. Uh, <laughs> but I say, the quietest make a cast, a we himself might his quietest fortune. Thee and the, theirs turns thing asleep to grunt merit office, to suffer us wrath and scovered lovers lose ills. We know nobles us more. Awesome. And after this creature gets uh, wrecked by these globules, globules of light, it looks up to you as you watch Harold's mask in its purple ethereal form just attach itself to the front of this creature. Harold's babbling again. Yep. Uh, How's that? Uh, all right. Next up is Seisha. You are okay. so so so. But as you are standing, unable to move staring at your angelic deva that protects you and, and has, give, has always been with you even though you didn't know it and this dark tenderly arm reaches out wrapping around your throat and you feel the life force being sucked from you before everything vanishes the world comes back to you and you feel that tight grip around your neck as you notice you are complete. Your body is completely enraptured in this in, in, entanglement. In these entanglement of these vine, tentacly like vines, uh, and uh, that that happens at the end of your turn. So you lose your your, your turn, mm -hmm. but you now are now back to your senses, and you're not in that place anymore. But you are restrained. Okay. Can can I have said something? Oh, free action, totally. Yeah. All right. Uh, when when he was coming towards me. Uh, she she looks to him. You do not belong to him. We do not belong to him. And with that, that's when you wake up. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, that brings us to top of the round to V. Oof. All right. Well, she's gonna try and hack him again. Okay. Go ahead and make your attacks. Let's do it. I'm just hoping for the best. Okay, first one is um, 19 to hit. 19, 19 hits. hits. All right, and that's going to be... Okay, 8, 19, 14 damage. Sing us that swan song. Yeah! <laughs> Okay. So uh, she just hacks the dang head off. It freaks her out. She don't like it. She's just like, "Fuck this." Yep. And when she just one, goes, uh, one uh, fail swoop, you actually watch as your ancestors merge into your body, making the same swing as your blade begin, begins to glow with that red aura and just cleanly carves off this creature's head as it slops down to the ground and you watch the uh, tendrils that were choking um, Seisha and Aliquin begin to fade and go back into the ground. She says, only thing worse than multiple eyeballs is no eyeballs. <sighs> and then, you know it's bad. As you all look around, leaking from these bodies, the aberrant satyrs is this dark black ichor with a shimmer of silver like mercury. 
very similar to the winged horned creatures that move silently in the night, these creatures also move silently. And you look down and you see no hooven clo or cloven hoof prints into the, the mud, the ground, or into the uh, pumice stone. Um, however, what is strange is that you remember seeing the bodies of those aberrations begin to boil and turn to black smoke before rippling out of reality, where these bodies do not. So I view him high and neat half to what? Sent late held that why sent set for wife or? Uh-huh. About I'm at sorry, the end what? of that. <coughs> Harold. I said that they, they, they didn't turn into goo. I think this is probably where they're all from. They it seem is. native. <laughs> you do remember that the star spawned from earlier evaporating and blinking out. Yep. But these aberrations did not. I think they're just straight up from here. Well, you should all finish your rest. Uh, you see Aloquin walk over. Uh, and he's like, I think these have drink from whatever was leaking out of that stone. I think they become the drinker. Uh, I don't know, maybe ram or fish. I've, I've run into some of these, but more fish-like. More, I say fish with a very strange phrasing. Uh, their aberrations, they have like long like tentacle arms and, and sharp jaws. And what he is describing is... What Seisha, Vinley, and, and Voss, Voss encountered on the ship on the way to Waterdeep. It's back that far. Um, but I, I believe, I believe they're from the far realm. Um, Abir is home to the discarded and unwanted. My kin and their kin are a byproduct of what originally made its home here, forced into isolation by Ao. Um, and when he says uh, their kin, he he mentions uh, Vayam Neri. Yeah. He, Referring to the dragonborn, sorry. Yeah. Uh, for me, primordials for the Vimniri dragons. After the first sundering eons ago, the worlds of Abir Toril was split into two respective twin planets, Abir and Toril, with the Tablets of Fate. The Alpha and Omega, Ao, gave Abir to the few primordials who survived the Dawn War to rule. Those primordials were tired of war and were unable to overcome their dragon steeds when they rebelled against their masters, starting the conflict known as the War of Fang and Talon. After the war, a few primordials who survived retreated into hiding and fell silent. Only a handful of dragon lords survived. Those that did became great worms and they ruled dominion over the primordials now. But that's not the only thing that dwells here. Tablets of fate that separate the twin worlds are made to protect those of Toril, where a beer's veil is more susceptible to the influence and inhabitants of those that dwell beyond in the far realm. The veil between here and the far realm is very thin. Uh, we should we should get back to rest. Sish so is gonna walk over to the bodies and just kind of kneel next to one of them, and she's gonna hold her hand above the blood, that that Icarus blood. Mm-hmm. She just wants to see if it moves. It does like not that. act like the ferrofluid. fluid. Okay. Yeah. Let's get some sleep. As soon as everyone else goes back to sleep, Vinley is going to start filling the empty potion bottles she has with the blood of both of these creatures. Okay. okay. And if possible... <laughs> depending on how thick their horns are, she would like to harvest as uh, much of these creatures. Uh, they're, they are hollow horned, as most horned creatures are, and they are thin and spindly, and you can easily break one off if you so wish. I'll break them all off. 
and put them all hey, in my Hey, drinking bag. horns for everybody! <laughs> yeah, eight long, skinny <laughs> Yeah, because we're going to need to fill them and drink. I'm going to need a beer after the day I've had. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, so who's taking third watch? Yeah, the rest I of your take, watch. I'll was, take third I was watch. third. Okay. As long as I've slept enough to get a full rest, have I not? No, you no. guys are only four hours in. Yep. Okay. I, I take I, third watch. Okay. I'll assist with third watch. Okay. And just as a details note, when Vinley goes to go to rest, she sits down uh, cross-legged and maintains the mask on her face and just sits there and goes um, into a trance. You actually, and as you go over, you watch, you actually look over and you see Aliquin has actually kind of moved the earth aside enough for him to kind of build a small trench and he has filled it with water and he has completely submerged. Oh. That's nice. I'll sit not on the edge of that, but near that pond. Okay. Um, uh, Voss and Seisha, whoever wishes to make the roll can roll with advantage. I'll do it. Oh, either of us get it? Uh, no, like one person rolls with advantage. So, Boss, you want to roll? You have better luck than I do. All right. After today, we'll see if it keeps up. It does. Twenty-one. Um, twenty-one. Your mm -hmm. night goes on, and you keep an, a keen ear out as you hear the sounds that Harold heard before of the strange animals that lurk within the wood. And you look out into the darkness, waiting for something to come. Nothing does. Us? Yeah. There's something that you should know. I, that altar we saw, it reminded me of a story. Um, the title of the story was The Harbinger. Whatever is tied to that, I think is what's trying to come through to Toril. Sasha, I believe you, obviously. I'm so far beyond my depth in all of this. None of this makes sense to me. And I hate every second of being here. When we get back, we will do what we can. But that's just, all I can do. Just in case something happened, I wanted someone else Nothing to Nothing will happen. Say that for me, please. Say it, please. I'll say it when we get home. This place... Boss, we're not in any semblance of control here. Really? I don't say things that I don't mean. And I've just got a terrible feeling. Whatever it is, whatever we encounter, all I can do is move forward with focus and drive, as I have always done before, as we will do moving forward. Someday I will die. It will not be here. Not in this place. Neither will you. Not in this place.
I'm glad you're here, boss. With me. Not here, but... I understand what you mean. No one is happy to be here. But if we must be here, at least we have each other. Exactly. I kind of tussle her hair a little bit, but just to spend the rest of the watch uneventfully. And uh, that is, uh, yeah, and your watch comes to fruition uneventfully. Uh, who's taking fourth watch? Venley. Or v. V. Sorry. I am. Okay. Um, you notice Aliquin will actually come out of his, um, like, sit up and will take the last watch with you. He'll actually take two watches. Okay, cool. Um, did I get any sort of rest? Not yet. You're not at a full rest yet. Yep. All right, cool. Well, um, I guess I roll perceptual. Yep. Yep. You can roll with advantage if you so wish. Oh, sweet. Uh, I didn't really need it, but um, let's see. That is 21. Um, <laughs> okay, um, I'll keep that in mind. So as, as you're sitting there, uh, Alequin will actually... Uh, he's actually sitting on the edge of his little like trench that he made that has the water in it and his feet are in it and he's just kind of looking out and he just kind of looks over. Um, I don't know if I ever got your name. Oh yeah, my name is V. Hi V. So where do you guys come from on Toro? Uh, we're from Waterdeep. Well, I mean, at least I'm from Waterdeep. We're all currently living in Waterdeep, but me and Harold are from there and then Everyone else is from somewhere else. Everybody. But they all came together on a boat. Okay. I guess I could have put that two together as y'all were where you were when I found you. Yeah, we were, um, uh, we have a tavern that we own and sort of run. And um, we uh, went to bed last night there and then woke up in the weird alternate version of it here. And, uh... Sorry. Yeah. It's okay. We just... As long as we all get back, not quite as traumatized as when we entered, is all I want. It looks like it's a little too late for that for Harold. I know... I know what it's like to be away from the place you love the most. I will do everything I can to bring you home. Thank you. I'm really sorry we can't really do the same for you. It is my fate. So, um, the longer someone stays here, the more you're trapped here forever? No. Oh. The longer someone stays here, the more their magic goes away, as there is no weave here. But only oh. those who were originally from here are trapped here. So you're originally from here? I am. My wife was not we met on Toro. How did you... I mean, you can only stay there for like a day at a time, right? Before the Second Sundering. During the Time of Troubles. The Era of Upheaval. The Era of Upheaval. Our worlds coexisted. They were one. A beer uh... It was... We were, we were not separated worlds. And uh, I spent many years... I forgot about that. Do you think the worlds will ever collide again? I don't know. This one's pretty bleak. No offense. Yeah, it's no beachfront. I've noticed there's not many people here. So, are there like small groups scattered around or something? Like, it's throwing me off how people are from here. There are, there are people here, but those that are stay hidden so that they do not catch the eye of the dragons. Wow. Back home we have a, the only dragon I know is actually a friend of ours. Be careful. Even, yeah? Even at their nicest, I wouldn't trust them. Oh. And it's at this point, off in the distance, mixed with the chaotic noises in the woods, you hear a voice of a woman crying for help in the dead of night. Nope. 
Her cries sound terrified and panicked as she wails, sending shivers down your spine. Please! Help! Is anyone there? It's totally fake, right? It's totally fake. It's just trying to lure someone out for bait. It's just trying to lure someone out for bait, right? 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 Uh, and you actually see Aliquin look up, and there's a flinch in him that you, you can see he wants to go help, but he... And you see, and you watch as the the water that its feet are in crystallize and freeze as he tenses. Are your feet okay? He looks down, and then he doesn't even look down as he's... That is most likely the Howling Wood. Okay. I thought so. A lady being out here by herself just doesn't seem realistic. I mean, I don't know, but you said that everyone here hides, like, literally a second ago. Uh, yeah, it avoids the light and feeds at night. It's a tree covered in stretched out eyes with gaping mouths and multiple rows of teeth. It's branches like tendrils that snatch you up to devour you, and then it mimics your screams. So it, that was someone. They're just dead now. Yeah. Uh, and you watch as he finally looks down and goes, oh, sorry. And you see the, the ice melt back into the water. Uh, just because uh, V's going to roll insight check on the screams, I guess. Is that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not that it does anything. That was a critical fail. They, <laughs> they feel very real. And it pulls at your heartstrings but hearing what Alequin said, it lets you know that it was someone and those screams were real. And the rest of the night is uneventful. Voss and V, you and only you can click the long rest button on D&D Beyond. Oh, yes. yes. Hold on. Benley and Seisha, you may heal to full. Harold Benley and Seisha. Uh, Harold, you uh, can also heal a full, sorry. Yep. Uh, Harold, you may regain your bardic inspirations, but none of your used spell slots or your Hexblade's curse. Seisha, as you go to pray, you can change your spells if you wish, but you feel no connection to Agma. You do not get your used spell slots back or your channel divinity. But you have your healing hands and your, your lay, on lay, hand. lay, on, lay on hands. And your aura of protection. Like, none of those went away. But. Do I get my radiant soul back? You do get your radiant soul back. So awesome. You, all of you get your racial abilities, such as, like, you get your wings and your healing hands. Um, Vinley, you can recharge your wand and prepare your spells for the day, but you do not feel the power of Mistra's weave flow through your body anymore reminding you how powerless you felt before she helped you save yourself. Um, do I recover my arcane recovery? Uh, you do have that. Yep. Okay. And I'm going to pretend like I didn't just hear that because it's about to make me cry. <laughs> okay, so just to make sure, I don't get my spells back, but I can pick new spells. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. And it's same for Vinley if you need, if you want to trade out anything. You um, can. You just don't get any of the of the. You don't get any of your spell slots back. Yeah. Gotcha. Does my rod keep working? It does. A hundred percent. I'm taking back another spell slot. Okay. I figured you would. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank yeah, you. Just for cl clarification, you do not have any of the spell slot wise uh, and cla um, and certain class abilities, but. Um, and once it's gone, it's gone. It's once. Yeah. And uh, let us know whenever you use or cast a, a cantrip. And uh, and as you were feeling this and and like this is coming, you're like kind of like this is not right. Uh, you can see Alice Aliquin notice your confusion and panic. Your magic's wavering. The weaves and gods have no hold on the world here. Uh, we should pack quickly. We'll need whatever magic you have left to get you home. I have to use a spell slot to cast Flock of Familiars. If you want to use it right now. Also, just a heads up, I didn't have to use my rod yet because I only had one packed magic used, so I am going to hold on to that until okay. I need it. Yeah, it, okay. it is 
It is once a day. It right. Necess- I'm, I'm talking to, to Benley. It does not say that you have to cast it at the same time every day, only okay. once a day. So if you want to wait and see if you make it home today. Yeah, I'll you, wait. You can yeah. do that. But we'll definitely say that there's a pause with uh, Benley. As like you- she went to start casting and then stopped mid cast, like frozen in like full form somatic. And she's like, I can't do this yet. Quick question, is anyone else having an issue with D&D Beyond? I'm not. Are you using it for rolling or? No, for my character sheet. Oh, no, mine's fine. I just tried to change my spells and I was using it on my tablet. So I'm trying it on my uh, laptop now. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, um, you're all packing up and after you pack up everything, you head further east out of the uh, burnt edge of the wood line, traversing over the cooled lava that fades into the dusty red barren wasteland that stretches on as far as the eye can see. In the far distance of the northeast, you see a shimmer of black land that glistens in the light of the blue sun, an image that looks like a mirage that leads to a series of shiny black mountains. The land he- the land before you that is red is barren and cracked and cragged with violent fissures that tear through the earth. The ground is void of any greenery. Not even dried or dying weeds are left upon the scorched dirt. As you walk wa- walk with Al- uh, walk with Aliquin, he begins to tell you how you're going to find the wormhole and what is needed to activate the thin threads between the worlds. So... If you look closely, just below the sea of black glass, you see what looks to be a few floating rocks. That is where we are headed. There are very few wormholes, but you can always find them around gravity wells. For whatever reason, the magic left behind by the celestial dragon, Asgarath, during the Tearfall, created these weird gravity wells and stones tied to elements. We'll have to identify the stones. They resonate with a certain element. I don't know how many stones we will have to activate at this wormhole, but I know of this wormhole, but I've never used it. I travel through the one within what you call the trackless sea. Once we activate the stones, the harmony of resonance will tether its connection to Toro. However, to open the gate, we will have to use the equivalent of nine levels of magic to open the gateway, but only fourth and higher work. As long as we don't encounter too much, I should be able to just open it with my blade as he will pull the sword made entirely of ice, Frostbane. Well, if that doesn't work, do we? Do we have the means to cast the kind of magic we need? I actually just prepared an elemental spell, but I will need to take some time to collect my thoughts in order to cast it at high enough level. Um, In his explanation, uh, he lets you know that to open, like there's activating the stones, Mm -hmm. right? And then there's opening the gate and opening the gate is what needs the nine levels levels of of magic. magic. Yep. Got it. And he lets you know that it doesn't have to be anything specific. It is literally just channeling whatever weave you have to make that connection. Yep. And so, as he pulls the sword, you get the sense that it can come from an item as long as it is the weave itself. So we have to use spells of fourth level or higher. Correct. Okay. How do we activate the How do we activate the elemental stones? Once you... Once you stand near them, if you reach out with your senses and any connection to the weave you have, you just know what the stone needs to resonate. It's... It's very hard to explain. You just... Stone speak to you. <clears throat> yes, and it it's varies. Magic. It's sometimes it is fire, sometimes it is sound. 
it depend it, it all varies depending on the wormhole. Um, all right. Do I see anything that would bar our way moving forward? So we can see that space from here, correct? It's it's a ways off. Yeah. And okay. it, it looks like sp- uh, pebbles floating um, in the distance. And gotcha. you, are, you are walking across a barren wasteland and you kind of understand what he means. Like the woods was a safer bet than traversing this area at night completely unsheltered. Yeah. And it, and it yeah. looks like there are large crevices that you could possibly use as shelter to kind of move in between may take a little bit longer to get to your destination, but you're not going to be out in the open. And that's like looking over. That's probably your best calculative place to head towards. But as okay. you're looking over this, Seisha and Binley, as you both look to the south, you see something dark on the horizon approaching fast. Its wings stretch out and rake across the clouds as it guides through the sky. You can see its shadow stretched across the ground. And at first you don't believe it, but judging by the size of the shadow snaking its way across the barren waste against the trees of the forest, you could have easily say that this creature has a wingspan that stretches for nearly half a mile wide. You see a faint glow dripping from its mouth that falls and crashes to the ground below. I need everybody to make wisdom saving throws. Oh, no. You are close to us this time. I am, and I'm awake. Yeah, how about that? That's useful. Can we just add three? Yes, you can add three. That should be okay. Oh. Then. Okay, let's... Um... Hopefully. Yeah. Then again, I don't know. This. Thank you, d d Beyond, for your new purple and gold dice. I know that oh, they're, yes. entirely, I know they were entirely made for me. <laughs> I'm also super <laughs> modest. Um, so, Harold with your uh, modest dice. What, um... A modest 16. Okay. Okay. Vinley. 29. I rolled a natural 20. My modifier is plus 6, and I have the plus 3 from Seisha. Nice. Boss. Uh, 18. Okay. V. 22. 22. Seisha. 9. All right. I rolled a 1. Aliquin Aliquin got a 12 and also rolled a 1. Um, So, wow. (laughs) He's the best. Everyone but Vinley and V. V. You feel pure fear. A fear that you have never felt before that washes over you. Ooh, 16 didn't win? Oh my god. And you... Aliquin is almost frozen and you kind of hear, no, it's it can be no, and and you have to like Harold or V. You almost have to pull everyone and drag them as you hurry into one of the crevices that cut deep into the earth and squeeze up against the wall as you push everybody up who cannot even move. They're almost paralyzed in fear. And as you watch, with the, what seems to continue on forever, is the shadow that lurches over the crack before the sky above you turns completely black. And what flies above you looks like glistening polished shards of obsidian gemstones. The beat of its wings sing like a deep haunting glass wind chime in a summer storm. And it takes a good 30 seconds for this massive great worm to fly past. A testament to how big dragons can get when unchallenged in a world of chaos. Your heart's nearly breaking your ribs, trying to beat itself out of your chest. As then you didn't hear Alquin sigh and speak up in a hushed whisper. That was Vandris, the Shimmering Ruin, the ancient great worm responsible for the wastes of the Charred Moor. She's huge. We should just go. As, as you say that she's huge, he looks at you and says, Be glad it wasn't Gyrex, cleanser of worlds. A dragon easily twice her size, wretched in fire and flames with a wingspan that stretches for miles. Now, let's hurry. Uh, she's yes. headed to her throne within the glass of black, the sea of black glass, but we should hurry. Yep. Yes. Smooth. 
<clears throat> All right. And for the next hour or two, you play it safe by traveling through the large cracks that cut through the red earth. And you look up to see the walls of the sedimentary rock flow like waves or linen blowing in the wind above you. Through the crack, you see the steel-covered sky that looks like a curved Chris dagger that snakes above. And eventually, you crest out over the ridge emerging from the depths below as you see four massive tiers of rock floating and drifting around each other. The lowest of them, all about 20 to 30 feet high to the closest ridge to stand on, bobbing through the air, defying their massive size are multiple large monolithic-like boulders that dance and weave around the four massive platforms of rock. At the center of it all, upon the highest tier of Earth, are multiple smaller floating and drifting boulders that coalesce together, almost forming a ring. But what concerns you is that the entire sky around the floating rocks is heavily obscured by a chaotic dust storm. And as you look closer, Seisha and Vinley, you see it is not a dust storm suspended by the gravity well, but instead, a massive swarm of small winged goblins or imp-like creatures with every beat of their wings, clouds and clouds of dust billow off of their spindly forms. Oh, that's not good. These wormholes usually have guardians, but a swarm of methods this large is too dangerous. I can take care of most of them, but only if one of you is capable of fourth level magics or higher. It can come from an item. Seisha looks at Venley. I have a wand that can do much higher than fourth. All right. I'm about to use five levels from my sword. If you can, if you can do five or if you can do four, I, yeah, if we can do four, keep the, keep those four in that wand. We should be okay. I will. Uh, conserve what magics you have. Use it if necessary. But be mindful of the gravity once we get into the stones. You should be able to use it to get from stone to stone. You're going to be lighter than normal. Sometimes at times heavier. It's it's weird. But are you all ready? As will ever be. Yeah. All right. How are you getting to the first stone? And you are underneath it as it slowly drifts in a direction and it's about 20 or 30 feet up. How do we... He's going to move forward a little bit and he said we'll feel different so she's going to try to time it and jump. Okay. Uh, As you you jump, you you do get the sense that you, uh, you get up and you can reach the bottom of you can jump 30 feet up and reach the bottom of this okay. to get to start climbing if you want to start climbing it from underneath. Yeah. Okay. I Well, if she can jump, I guess I could probably too. So V tries to do the same thing. Okay. All right. I use the old standby. Okay. Okay. And okay. I will leave it down for others to follow. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and make a grappling hook check, which is the uh dex rope dex. use. Do I need to make any sort of athletics check to jump? Can I assist him by helping, since I'm hanging there, helping guide it to a good spot so he gets advantage? I need you to make an athletics check to see if you can get up there. Oh, okay. Okay. I rolled a uh, 24 for athletics. Yeah. 16. Okay. Oh. So you both jump up. Uh, V, you latch onto a nice, like, uh, like a jug hold and pull yourself up. Um, Seisha, you go up and you grab one, but the rock gives, but then you catch yourself and you are hanging. And uh, yeah, you can help him hook the grappling hook if you so wish, as you um, both are climbing the side of this small mountain. (laughs) I have a question. Uh Uh-huh. We don't need to all be on the first rock, correct? It is the lowest in the sense of the the yeah. Oh, uh, so we have to go from this rock to the next one. Yeah. Gotcha. 18. 18. Uh, it's, with their help, 
latches on to a nice crack up top, and the rope hangs just barely reaching the bottom of okay. the, the floor below you. Yep, you can go ahead and make an athletic check with advantage. Sweet. Uh, and I'll anybody else who's climbing the rope can easily make that with advantage. Seven, 17. And boss, you are up there in no time whatsoever. All right, Alec, I, when, go ahead. No, no, go uh, ahead. I got a total of 19 for athletics, and if you know my strength score, you know that that was a natural 20. Oh, oh my God. We're burning these dice. <laughs> it's the you. digital glacial dice on D&D Beyond. What can I say? They're just too good. We're looking at you, D&D Beyond. Damn, I said cross, man. Too nice. <laughs> Hashtag Beyond. <laughs> um, Harold. Uh, um, uh, there's a rope. Uh, you're under, I don't know if you missed the description or you heard the description, but you're standing under a floating island, basically, of, of rock. Um, and we're trying to climb the rocks to get up to it. Correct. Seisha jumped and actually jumped like 30 feet up, like super, almost like like on the moon and you're jumping and hits the bottom of them and climbs up. So does V. And then Voss throws the grappling hook up and uh, Vinley and Aliquin climb the grappling hook. Yeah, I'll take the grappling hook. <laughs> make, make an athletics check with advantage. Alrighty. Uh, Aliquin. Oh, God. Just got that DC. <laughs> oh, no. I rolled three on both of them, so that's a total of four. Ooh. Only half as scholarly as an eight. Wow. <laughs> um, as, as you go up, um, the rock school. shifts at, uh, as the gravity changes and you slip from the rope. You take, take half of this because you fall a little bit slower. So five. Take points. five points of bludgeoning damage as you hit the ground. Oh, bounce a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, whoa. whoa. <laughs> See, it's like bounces on the ground and hits the ground again. <laughs> um, and Alequin will will look and just go. Can you pull him up? All right, uh, Harold. What? Hang on. Just... I I was doing that. <laughs> Grab a hold of it. I'll attempt and this. Between everybody, everybody there, you yeah. easily pull him up and drag him onto the ledge. And as you all make Good your try, way, buddy. Oh. As you all make your way to the top of the first platform, you can feel this loss of gravity. Your steps are as soft as clouds as you feel nearly weightless. Your hair and clothes lift and dance in the air as if you're underwater. But in this moment, you see the hundred beady yellow eyes as the swarm of dust methods come charging at you. And waiting for the right moment, Alakun cuts through the air with his long sword made of ice and from the tip of the blade erupts a gale force of wind, of ice and snow as you watch the swarm of dust methods solidify into ice gargoyles and then explode into clouds of crystalline dust. And we need everyone to make con saves. Yep. That's fair. Plus three. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Almost get, a one. I do get the plus three now, so that's good. Yes. God, okay, uh, so V rolled a 15. Okay, got it. Vinley? 19. Seisha? I'm balancing out all the 20s tonight. Um, that's a seven. Okay. Uh, Voss? 17. Okay. And Harold? 15. Okay. Seisha, uh, as this, as they explode, there is this blinding flash as you shield your eyes, but not in time, as you get, are hit by this dust and you are blinded for the next minute. Oh, damn. Uh, but you can repeat the save at the end of At the turn. end of each turn. Okay. But as the dust settles, those that can see, uh, yep. th those that can see, so everybody but Seisha, notice the methods were only hiding the true guardians. And floating down from uh, the coalesced circular form of rocks is a set of very ornate floating plate armor that fills with the swirling wind of dust, uh, wielding a spiked mace that crackles with electricity. And as it holds out a hand, you watch as the storm begins, uh, a storm builds, creating a large dust devil upon the next tier platform. Is and then stepping that, up. 
Is that a spell he's casting? No, it is not. Okay, cool. And then stepping up from the ground on the other platform, um, what you originally perceived as a resting boulder is a set of simplistic dark iron plate armor filled with the grinding and crushing sound of hundreds of pounds of rock wielding a massive stone maul. We're going to take a small break while we set up the map. So we'll be right back. It'll be just a moment from us while we get this set up. So hang tight with this audience. We promise it'll be worth the wait. And oh God. All players, please make those. Uh, Go ahead and initial. start rolling initially. Yeah. Okay.
Hey, we're back. And hopefully you can see the really awesome map. Yeah. Uh, with our new layout with maps, where the map is bigger than our faces. Uh, <laughs> so there we go. Um, we have everybody's initiative. And coming up first is... Uh, here we go. And up first is... That's the wrong wrong so, tab. Do, 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 do. This thing. <clears throat> so um, a few mechanics as we get going into this. As you can see, there are floating rocks on each of these main islands. Those are the rocks that you have to activate. Okay? Uh, there it is. Okay. Never mind. So as it, there's two on the platform you are, y'all are on this platform right here. Okay. So these, there are two rocks here. There's two on this mm. one over here, three here, and two on the center one here. All right. Um, when that goes, if you want to spend your action to attempt to activate one of the stones, we will let you know what to do once you start that. All right. Uh, and then on top of that, if you want let us know if you're going to try to jump from one platform to the next okay and with that we are going to kick off our initiative uh aliquin is first up um aliquin will look to you uh Finley, and say once we activate the stones, we'll point to the larger one with the circular stone. That is where we need to be in order to activate the wormhole. Gotcha. So start and it kind of looks, I'll do what I can to hold them off, but I'm going to start making my way to the central platform. I will too. Um, he doesn't know what he's going to do. Just saying, next time I can totally see you guys like building a motor into the map and it's gonna rotate or something like oh, that. It was, we, we so tried to figure out how to do that. Oh, yeah, it was, <laughs> it, was it was supposed to happen. Um, oh my right. god, yeah. Um, all right, so uh, Aliquin is going to stand there and is gonna attempt to, to take out one of uh, we'll do the earth guy. Nah, yeah, that's too far away. Uh, so he'll hold his, and you see this ray uh, as he holds the pommel of his sword out and this glowing icy ray shoots out and uh, attempts to hit the earth. Uh, and will hit with a 27. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the wrong dice. Right. Uh, next up, uh, after Aliquin, you is... all feel that weightlessness become extremely intense. And I need everyone to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Yes. Really quick, uh, is this something you can see? Nope. All right. 18. Okay. 11. I'm rolling so well. I rolled a 19. Well, actually, with my dex, it's a dirty 20. Nice. Harold. 14. Okay. Seisha. Nine. Venley. Oh, I forgot about Seisha's plus, so 14 as well. Okay. So okay. then, Aliquin. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a thing. That's a dex save. 14 because of because of Seisha. <laughs> yep. You're uh, welcome, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> well, then Seisha. I guess 23 because of Seisha. Seisha, you begin to float up like 20 feet. Oh. oh. You feel gravity completely dissipate. And oh. I'm blind. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, as you feel yourself go up in the air 20 feet you can't move you're 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 like flailing um, you're floating uh, guys zero g 
Uh, v, it is your turn next. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Hey, uh, so how do we activate these stone things again, guys? Um, it... She's asking oh, the yeah, party, yeah, yeah. party members. Oh, Aliquin will say, you just open your mind. Okay. Okay. Does so you wanna spend, huh? You wanna spend your action to try to activate one of the stones? Uh, yes. Because as of right now, the only thing menacing seems to be on another rock far away. So there are two you're currently on. So in order yeah. to, in order to, as you spend your action, I need you to make an arcana check. Oh, cool. Okay. Oh boy. Well, if it's anything like last week, maybe I'll do really well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fifth, 16. Oh, I'm near Seisha. Do I get it? Bonus? No, that's not no, 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 no. That's 20 saving. Feet that's away save. now. That's yeah. saving. Plus, she's 20 feet away. It's still 16. So, as, as you are on this, you close your eyes and you're not sure why, but you get, you get the feeling that the stone on directly on the pillar to you. So this stone right here yeah. is metal and this stone is water. Okay. 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 Guys, she relays the information. She goes, that stone is, is water and that one's metal. So that is that is your action you have now identified, and now other people can use their actions to activate them if they so wish. Okay. They'll cool. have movement and a bonus action if you want. Um. Let's see. Uh, she's gonna, I guess, move a little bit closer to where the metal rock is, but okay. she's not gonna jump or anything. Got it. So you okay. move closer to the middle. Yeah, rock. it's it's five. Like you literally shift five feet. Yeah, it's like it's like a few feet. Yeah. <laughs> she's just trying yeah. to figure out like she's trying to figure out a game plan in her head right now. Okay. Because I don't know how to activate them. <laughs> yeah. Boss. Okay. Finley, you're on deck. Seisha, you're in the hole. Seisha is blind and flailing in the air. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm fairly close to the rock on my screen left. That's stained as the metal rock, correct? The metal is this one, the one over by where V is. Okay. I am going to attempt to take the grappling hook, and I'm going to try <laughs> normally. Here we go. Yeah, the Wait, am I there? You're right there. Sorry, I, apparently I didn't put you on the map because, you know, you were stealth. <laughs> uh, this one, you're closest to water. Okay, I'm gonna move closest to the metal one then because I've got something in mind. Okay, that's easy enough. So easy enough, you. Yep, you get right right next to it. Okay, I pull out the grappling hook. Okay. And I say, Seisha, I need you to trust me on this. Okay. And I'm going to attempt to catch her with the grappling hook on the edge of her armor. Okay. I'm gonna take a grappling hook to the face. <laughs> Go ahead Maybe. and make your attack. Please don't Maybe. roll a one. <laughs> Using your yeah. rope and proficiency. Uh, maybe. 16? Oh. <laughs> I thought you said heavy. Maybe. Uh, I don't know if you, I got a beat or AC on this or not. Yeah. You do, and as you throw and you and it, it goes, as it as it goes up, you actually watch as it goes and then immediately drops and goes down. Okay. And it, it like and it slams down into the ground, as if gravity has been reversed where Seisha is. Huh. That's good. Oh, crud. All right, there goes that plan. So. Uh, that was that would be my first attack. Yep. First attack, and I try that again. As bonus. <laughs> As the sound of the grappling hook hits the. <laughs> yes. <laughs> May uh, I try that again? Yeah, your 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 offhand attack. Yeah, you absolutely can. Okay, thank you. We'll see. Sixteen plus seven. Uh, twenty-three. Twenty-three. That'll hit. 
<laughs> with that, it wraps around uh, her leg as you okay. watch it hook onto itself. I probably don't have enough to do this, but I've got some movement left over. Can I begin pulling her gently towards the stone and just say, I'm moving you towards it. Just put out your hands. You will hit something. This is the one designated as metal. Um, you can start, but because you used your action to make that first throw, yep. that is where you begin. You begin to slowly pull her towards it. Okay, that's my turn then. All right. Seisha, you feel, feel yourself being pulled? Oh, sorry, okay. Binley. Binley, 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 oh. not Seisha. Um, oh, Binley, Binley is going to look at uh, Aliquin and ask, you have the water one, correct? And she'll start casting fly on herself. Nice, nice, and and he'll nod as as he looks looks back over it. I've got that. Try and figure out what those are. As he'll motion towards one of the other pillars, and Vinley will take off with her sixty foot fly speed towards the one with the the grounded got uh, it. elemental looking that makes thing. Sense. Yeah, <laughs> and if she can. I would like to place her above that big rock on the left island, just in case she were to fall. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you want to be near this one, but flying? Yeah. Flying? Okay. Okay. So your action was to cast fly upon yourself. You fly over and you watch this armored rock just watch you as uh, you go towards the center uh, obelisk. And that's me. Break Seisha. open a new package. Okay, so I'm floating in this direction. Um... Uh, can I use my movement to keep going forward since it's my turn now? You like pull the rope? Be, because you are considered restrained because there is, like, there's nothing for you to move or grab onto or anything. Oh, oh, you have the rope. Yeah, you can yeah. start pulling yourself on the rope. I'm sorry. 100% okay. yes. Yeah. I'm going to pull myself toward the rope so I go towards that stone. And when I feel stone on my hand, does it tell me how to activate it? Uh, it does not. All right, well. So you know, it does not. But so I know, not. well, which one was this? But it tells me it's metal. It yes. does not, it, it does not tell you, but you have been told it is metal. But I couldn't see which one was which. I did oh, tell you yeah. I was moving you towards the one that was metal. metal. One, yeah. Okay, sweet, yeah. all right. I'm going to, I'm gonna try this. I don't know if it'll work. I'm going to take my metal magical shield. Okay and strike it against the stone. All right, and you and you use your action to do this, right? Yes. And as you strike it, there is this hum that resonates off of it, and you watch as this rock begins to glow in this silvery, metallic light. I think you did something. Oh, that's great! <laughs> um, For my... I get to make a save, right? To see if I'm um, no longer blinded? Yeah, you get two saves. Make a uh, con save. Con is 23. One. Oh, yeah, that easily. Uh, you rub the, the sand out of your eyes. And, um, as, as you can see again, attached uh, at the leg to this rope, uh, you know, touching the stone. And, uh, hold on. And no, you do not get another save on the, uh, the gravity. Yeah, you are still floating. But you are tethered. But you are tethered. And you are only, at this point, you're probably only about five feet off the ground because you've come down the line. Oh, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Yay! And, and uh, yeah, um, as you try and pull I yourself down that's... further, you just keep floating up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna end it there. That's my turn. Okay. All right. And, and yeah. Well. 
Uh, nope, it can't hurt, but it can do is it. So you watch as the one, the earth one in the armor looks towards you, Vinley, sees you up in, in the air, and then turns back towards the other group. And you watch as it goes and jumps off of the platform as it is carried by the low gravity and lands right in front of you, boss. Damn. Okay, sorry. Ch change of change of plans. <laughs> My bad. A as it goes to jump towards you, you realize it's not jumping towards you. It's jumping towards Binley. Cause yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's a thing. Uh, yeah. Jumps up and you watch as he comes and he brings this maul down on you with a nineteen to hit. I cast shield. Okay. And with that, you watch it just as you hear this thunderous sound crash against your arcane shield. Um, oh. Wings again, and as it uh, comes down, it misses once more. So it is now below you, and it lands. Uh, one oh, yeah. Not gonna... yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, yeah, it does Ooh. that. Oh, yeah. So you watch as this air elemental, this vortex moves down and moves over and lands uh, lands in the midst of all of you. And then you watch as it begins to spin and twirl and go. And I need everyone to make, uh, not everyone, I need Seisha, I need oh. e, I need Aliquin, and I need Voss to all make me Strength saving throws. Harold and Vinley, you are safe. Yep. But strength saving throws. Uh, Seisha is too far from Alec. Yep, 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 yep. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is good. <laughs> this is so good. All right, a 22. Uh, all right. Natural 20. The safe streak continues. Nice. Seisha. Uh, 19. Okay. Eloquent. Um, five. Ooh. Mm. Uh -huh. I'll catch you. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. So, uh, did everybody pass but Eloquent? Yeah. <laughs> everybody rolled really high. Uh, all right. So, you feel this force of wind push against you as you feel it's trying to shove you off and so blow you off of this platform. Alequin is going to take 13 bludgeoning damage. Actually, what direction is it trying to blow me? Uh, Every direction. It, it is, it is a, it did say should fill too? No, 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 okay. no, no, I passed. I oh, was yeah. just, I was wondering if it's blowing a particular direction, I might the rock. have intentionally failed. Uh, it, it is not, in fact, it is a random direction that people are flung. Oh, okay, Let's never mind. Find out. We're Damn. Out. Eight. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ho, 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 ho. You watch him get thrown back as his body skids across the ground as he rakes across and then right at the last minute catches, catches the, the ledge of the thing as he is holding onto the ledge. Oh, oh my God. God. Don't do this to me again. Come on. Na 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 na. Harold. Right? No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is he where is he where I can help him? Okay. I think that's uh, he is straight gonna ahead. Uh, he's fifteen feet from you. I'm gonna go straight over and get him up. Uh yeah. So you definitely reach down. We'll say you you use the last of your movement to help him up. Yeah, sure. Um, he's not very heavy, uh, especially with the uh, gravity being as low yeah. as it is. And, he, and you see, like, thanks. Yeah, no worries, man. I feel like in another timeline, we'd have been best friends. And I'm going to turn to look over at... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to turn to look over at the rock. Okay. Uh, I can't... Let's see here. I can, actually. I'm going to... 
look at him and be like, let's see if I can push you off. And I'm going to wait a second. Oh, I don't think I can. I don't think it will allow them. Yeah, creatures don't move into obviously dangerous grounds such as a fire or a pit. So I can't make him run off the edge. Well, you, you could. Defense. He can fly. Wh which one are you going after? The earth one? Or yeah, the rock one. Okay. Uh, uh, instead of doing that, uh, instead of that, I will... Uh, you can do the air one, which is right next to you. Yeah, let's do... Right here, which is surrounded by two other people that could give attack of opportunities, if you so wanted to. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do uh, level one dissonant whispers. So that's a wisdom save. Wisdom save, this thing is... Oh yeah, so wise. Three. <laughs> okay, it'll take uh, seven points of psychic damage and has to run away from me. It's like over here as it 90, flies 90 feet away. Yipe, yipe, yipe! Uh, <laughs> v and Seisha can get uh, attacks of attack. opportunity. Uh, you are at disadvantage because you're still technically restrained, Seisha. Okay. You're still floating, so you're like... <laughs> your body's <laughs> slowly spinning upside down. <laughs> uh, v, what'd you get to hit? 23. Oh yeah, that hits. Roll good damage. Yeah, let's do it. And Seisha? 30, 20. That, that hits. hits. Nice. Sweet. 13 points of damage. Got it. Uh, as the Behir Blade cuts into it, even though it's air, you feel it bite into something as it cuts away and tears into this creature. Huh. Nine points of damage. Uh, as you slice your sword through over the top as you are spinning and it runs past you, your sword cuts through it a lot easier as you don't feel as much. Uh, it's like you just cut air. So you yeah. didn't do as much damage as we did. Got it. Uh, it feels to be resistant to your non-magical blade. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. Dick, <laughs> that's, uh, that's Harold's turn. That's a good one. That one. Yeah. Can still, I, yep, mm -hmm. still waiting. Uh, Aliquin will um, look at um, look at you again and go, yeah, seriously, thanks. I, I, Earth's not my thing. Air, oh, not, that's yeah, my okay. wife. Um, I need to meet her sometime. Yeah, and, uh, and you watch as he uh, goes, opens his hands, and as he does, you watch as... On. Let me to know exactly how much it is. You watch as 10 gallons of water open up over the stone and drench it uh, as he creates water. Uh, and you watch, and he'll spend his action to do that. And you watch as this stone begins to glow uh, in ethereal, like light sea blue. Yeah, we're gonna get to the last one, and it's gonna be fire, and we're gonna have to bust out a match. I got one. I got flint and tinder. Uh, we're we're not gonna make it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> next up. Steel, flint, and steel. Sorry. Uh, Seisha, uh, All of a sudden, Ooh. yeah, you fall and no, slam I don't. to the ground. It's only no, five. I don't. Feet. So you don't take any fall damage. But what, you not falling Why? Oh, wait, I, I thought you were saying it was my turn. Never mind. No. no. Oh, no, it, it's not. Say wings! It, it, it's the turn where the gravity returns and you fall. Okay. Uh, oh. But you were only five feet as you pulled yourself down yep. instead of 20 to 30 feet yep. up. And but you are prone as you slam onto your side. And you all feel the stones and uh, the islands begin to shift and move and uh, sway throughout the area. And we need everyone but Vinley to make dexterity saving throws. That's gotta be dex. That is so cool. I don't even care. That's the coolest shit. <laughs> what what kind of throw was it? A dexterity saving throw. Okay. So I have a question. Since the island is moving and I am not, when it starts to move, you do stay... I get grabbed onto by that floating rock? It does. It does not grab. No, you. It, it actually moves and it's moving like floating too, and so it'll actually move around you. 
so you do not hit it. But gotcha. you're now standing on top of another <laughs> platform with many rocks. And this one doesn't have any threats. <laughs> uh, I will say, um, V, you definitely see this one coming. So you do have advantage on this one. Uh, and you also have a plus three. And so does Voss. Uh, 29. Okay, you're good. 30, 20. You're good. Seisha? 11. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, you're <laughs> It's all good. Uh, and Harold. Harold, your deck save. Oh, my mic was muted. 26. I don't know why. Oh, you're good. Aliquin. Yeah, I gotta do that. Oh yeah, he's 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 yeah. Uh, he's on the ledge again, as he's like, whoa, whoa! <laughs> as it rolls and shifts underneath him as he catches the ledge. And he does catch the ledge. Um, <laughs> say sure nothing really happens. You're prone. Awesome. Yep. This guy has a hard time at staying yeah. alive. Everybody passed with flying like that. <laughs> hanging on to the the, the edge. Uh, uh, v. V, it is your turn. She's not got her headphones on. See? You're muted. Yeah, Kate? yeah. I got it. I got oh, it. Go. Um, I heard you. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm going to jump to the other rock where the bully rock man is. Kate, okay. Go ahead and make an athletics check. Okay, let's do it. Do me well. Yeah, I'm rolling amazing here in a beer. Um, that's gonna be a 24. Okay, you have uh, 5, 10, 15, and then you watch as like the Hulk just super jumps into the air slowly and she lands and slides across the stone. Um, you still have uh, 15, you, a lot of movement. Because yeah, you still have some movement. The jump it's so the distance was did not take any of your movement because of the gravity. And so you have twenty-five movement left. Do I still have an action? Do you still have an action? Okay. Um I'm uh I'm gonna beat up this rock guy. Okay. So I'm gonna move to him and I'ma hit him and see if it hits. <laughs> that's ooh, that's not so good. Um that is a sixteen to hit. As you bring the Bahir blade down, it cuts and actually hits into his plate mail that is around his rocky form and sparks fly off of it as it cuts down. Damn. It's not hit. Right, let me try again. Like striking. Against Yay! It. This time it is a 25 to hit. 25 definitely hits. Yeah. Sweet. I forgot to rage, but that's okay. I'll do it next turn. And you still have a bonus action. You can still rage. All right, well, I rage. <laughs> Absolutely. And then, um, let's see, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 points of damage. 13, yeah. as uh, the Bahir Blade cuts and sparks fly, like cutting against Flint, you then spin around and cut against him as your uh, ancestors pour out from you in this rage, and you watch a couple of stones uh, fly across as you cut deep into one of its arms. Nice. And I think that's all that I can do for right now. So. Uh, it is now Voss's turn. Okay. Voss detangles Seisha, uh, now having her own feet again. Uh, yes. goes, goes to a beer, pulls him up. Uh, Aliquin? Eloquent, yeah, sorry. <laughs> you pull up the world. God, you're strong. Can I? He does that. <laughs> yep, you get over there. Super Voss. Pull him up. He's like, yeah. Not my finest moments. So long as we get through this, as they say, anytime you make it back to port, it was a good ride. You actually see him smile at that. That it was, sailor, that it was as you get the sense that he's probably spent maybe not time on a boat, but has maybe helped sailors, rescue sailors who have fallen overboard, something along those he lines. He spent some time at sea. He spent some time at sea. <laughs> Highly probable. 
Um, I look back towards Seisha and I say, which of the islands are you headed towards? I'm going to the Far Stones. I'll go to the near ones then. And if I've got enough movement left, I'd like to make the jump over to the nearest isle. Uh, you will have to use your bonus action to dash. to dash to get there. That's fine then. Okay, so go ahead and make an athletics check. Gotcha. Streaking. There it is. Natural one. <gasps> it had to happen at some point in time. I've been rolling too well. As you jump, it is just a bit too short as you begin to fall. How far away is he? Is he within 60 feet of me? Uh, that looks further than 60 feet. Yeah. It does. That's why I figured I'd ask. He is like 70 feet away from you. Damn. Do I have, All right. I got him. I got him. Do I have anything left? Bonus action, movement. You have your action. I grapple hook. That 100% yes, something you can do. You <laughs> I need work. to so badly. Go ahead and make that uh, rope use check. That's another natural one. Ooh. Ooh. It's okay. Uh, as you as you go and throw it, you let the knotted rope run through your hands, and right as you're about to catch the end of it, because gravity is so different, it goes much faster than you're used to, and you miss it. You watch as your grappling hook sell, sails, and you lose it behind one of the pillars, one of the, the stones. Okay. You continue to fall, and you are going to fall and take... Is he landing on ground? Oh, yes. He, yes. Okay. Twenty-nine points of bludgeoning damage. Can't uncanny dodge that, can I? I don't know, think so. because it yeah, has to be against so. an attack made against you. Yeah. Very well. And this is not a dexterity saving throw or anything like that. Just take it. Gotcha. Vinley. Okay, so Vinley momentarily gets distracted by Voss falling but then pulls her legs up into a cross-legged position and holds her hands with her fingers spread apart, touching each other, and concentrates on these three rocks. Okay, go ahead and make an Arcana check as you use your action to identify them. Okay. Um, that's a 19 on the die. Okay. 25. Uh, okay, um, as you go, like, you open your eyes and immediately you are aware of what you have. Sound. Life. Fire. Okay, so from right to left, sound, life, fire. Yep. Perfect. I will... Relay that the best I can to probably only V. Okay. Okay. I don't have very big lungs. <laughs> v yells sound. What? You like yell at it? And she will move to the sound rock and grab onto it. Okay. okay. Like land on it essentially so that it will not go anywhere without her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got it. Noted. All right. That is Vinley. Seisha, it is your turn. You are currently prone. Seisha is going to roll to, I guess that would be her right. And yeah, as she reaches, edge. yeah, as she reaches the edge, she summons her uh, radiant form mm -hmm. and the wings fly out and she just kind of rolls up to a flight position and moves towards those back two stones. Okay. All right. Uh, so you will not have enough movement to get there. Right. But you will get about halfway there. And bonus action, I cast magic weapon on my sword. Fair. So it's good. And you see the script 
uh, start running down your blade and it starts to spark and fade a little bit, but then your whole, and right, right at the last second it goes out and then you watch your whole blade glow a golden yellow. All right, uh, V, you watch as this earth creature uh, grabs his this maw that looks to be made of earth itself and slams it against you. Uh, a 10, does that hit you? No. Nope. Huh. Yeah, and 12. Nope, 12 doesn't hit. I'm nice. Out. You can you can roll them now. On. <laughs> uh, all right, no, yeah. Dustin, you can keep rolling. <laughs> as he bring and you just you parry away, and as you do, uh, Lo parries with you. Parries that one. You go to the next one. Your other Bedrock ancestor parries the next one away. As you just continue to move away, as you stand at the ready, the three of them surrounding you. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Finley. As you are touching and holding onto the stone, you look over and you watch as the air elemental begins f- flying towards you. you yeah, can I figured. The, you can feel the wind billowing as your hair and everything is just uh, blowing past you as this thing charges forward. Under her breath, she's saying, Mistra, grant me the power to get my friends out of here. Jurgle, make sure our names don't end up on your list. It'll wait until that's mine. Uh, all right, it comes up and it spins and you feel as this whip of air. Mm-hmm. Uh, I need you to make a strength saving throw. Oh, man. oh wait, that's skills. Hold on. Sorry. Strength save. I'm not kidding, y'all. I just... I just rolled a 19 on the die. It's an 18 total. Nice. And as it moves into your space and begins to swirl and twirl as as the whirlwind goes off, you hang on as you hug this pillar, as you feel yourself about to be thrown away from this. You know what it is? I took the robes off. I'm aerodynamic. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But around you, all you hear is as the wind is rushing past you. Uh, yeah, that is, uh... Harold. Oh, well, I'm gonna help up uh, Aliquin, <laughs> who's hanging off the side. I already did that. Yep. Oh, you already helped him up? Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, um, you will take five bludgeoning damage just from the whipping of the wind. Uh, and that is halved. Like, way down here. Yeah. I missed it earlier. Um, I'm gonna be like... You know, I'm going to try to jump to that. Uh, who's on the last platform? Sasha's flying towards it. Yes, you see this creature. It's almost floating armor, but you can see oh. Oh. wind moving and whipping in that armor. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm going to... Tr- I can, do I think I could make that leap? Maybe. You saw uh, V do something crazy. Yes, you know, um, just for the record... Based off the five damage I took, I rolled a concentration check and got a 19. Okay, thank cool. you. Um, so, is it within 60 feet of me? The, the armor in there? Uh, no, you would have to, it is not. It is further than 60 feet. Could I leap it? Could I try to make the leap? You can most certainly course, try and leap absolutely. it. I, what, what do I need to roll? Athletics, Athletics. check. Natural (laughs) twenty. Thank you, Arcane Dice. Are you sure you guys don't want to stay on a beer? Because I've I've been doing nothing but scholarly eights all day. I want to get the hell out of here. (laughs) So yes, you watch Harold do exactly as V does and do this inhuman supernatural jump as he leaps high into the air and onto the next platform. Fucking yeah! <laughs> and you land about 10 feet away from this floating armor as yep. it's the helm with the glowing uh, blue eyes looks in your direction. <laughs> oh shit. Cast heat metal at max level. 
<laughs> <laughs> it is point. Yep. Uh, uh, what save is that? Uh, what's that? It's not a save. It's going okay. to take... Wow, I rolled about as terrible as you can. It'll take uh, five damage. Five flaming damage as it is uh, now quite uh, melty. Right. It's toasty. Ooh, nice. And my bonus action... I don't think anybody's near me, are they? No. Uh, Seisha is within 60 feet of you as she's flying up towards you. Uh, I will spend a bardic inspiration on Seisha and say, hey, Seisha, a little help kicking this guy's ass for me? Uh, I was going to check the rocks, but okay. <laughs> uh, and with that, uh, you get a D8 bardic inspiration. Awesome. And Harold, this helmed creature looks towards you. It's armor begins to glow as it glides over in your direction. You see electricity start to arc off of this spiked flail. All right, let's do it. Harold, what did I say to you about being squishy? I, I, I can't hear you over the side of this thing trying to kill me. A 26 to hit. Uh, let me think. Can I, I, got can I even? No, I don't think I... I well... If I roll seven or eight, I could save myself from this hit. I'd save it for a sure thing. Fat is short rests. I'm gonna oh. be. I'm gonna use cutting words. I'm yeah. going to attempt it. Wait, no, I can't. Never mind. No, no, I can't because shield is also a reaction, so I couldn't do both. It'll hit. Uh, yeah. Damn. Use As cutting it, words on the damage. Yeah, that's my thought process, too. You watch it spin the flail as lightning begins to build, and it just slams into your chest. You're going to take 21 lightning damage, and I need you to make a con save. Yeah, no, I'll use cutting words on the damage. Fair. Okay. And I'm going to say to it, like, as it kind of strikes me, Ugh, look, if we're not going to have a dialogue, this whole thing's going to get real boring real fast. <laughs> and I'll take six less damage, so I'll take 15. Okay. And then, uh... What am I? What kind of uh, save? Unsafe. Constitution saving throw. Eight. <laughs> uh, as as you say this, you then you're like, Ugh! Ugh! and you are stunned as the electricity is coursing through you. You cannot move. That sounds uh, good. This is until the end of its next turn. Yep. Uh, okay. And then, Alvin. You. Yep. Uh, seeing, seeing you. Um, oh, I also I need to make a con save. I'm sorry because uh, my concentration. Yes, please do. Uh, what do I have to beat? Uh, DC is. What, what did you reduce the damage to? Uh, so uh, fifteen. DC is ten. You got to roll oh. above. Constitute. Oh, yeah, then I'm good. Okay, he's still burning. Okay. Um, Aliquin is going to. And it was its turn, so what save would it have had to make, or is it on your turn that you continue it? Uh, it is, uh, let me see. It's a great question. I should know how That's my... As a bonus action, you can do the damage again. Okay. Harold. Yeah. yeah. I know that there's a save for, like, holding a weapon. Yeah, it's holding a weapon. It's, li yeah. like, it's a there's con nothing, save. There's nothing you can do until the spell stops. Got it. Sounds good. Yep. It. And it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so underrated. It is. It really is. <sighs> um... And you watch as Aliquin, like seeing you, like shocked, but looking down and seeing um, uh, Seisha on your way up, up to you. He's like contemplating, and he looks towards V, uh, who doesn't have anyone with her, and the boss who's on the ground. As he's gonna attempt to come and help you to, uh, towards you, V, uh, as he is going to. Go ahead and, as as he runs and jumps, you, he mutters. He's like, Leon, be with me, my love." as he jumps and will attempt with a natural 20. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. The, the beer magic lasts for everyone. <laughs> yep, yep. He, he, he <laughs> calling out to Iliad. <laughs> yeah, he feels a little burst of air beneath his feet. It'd be funny if he misunderstood him and goes, oh, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I feel like she should say that. Like, yeah. that's so that's so perfect. Yeah. Uh, um, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> and she goes, "Oh wait." Okay. He holds up a hand. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> "Mary." Uh, and um, as he lands, uh, he is going to. He sees you've got that. It's what he would do. He's gonna burn his action to see if he can figure out what these stones are. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we know what stone this is? You do nope. not. You have not learned these stones yet. Got it. I only see one. Oh, uh, there's one in blocking. And the armor, dude. Eyes, he opens them and he points to the one. The one by you is Earth, and then he points to the one over there, and he says, "That is death." Oh. <laughs> yep. Uh, and that is, uh, that's his action. He doesn't have any bonus actions. Did I hear him say that? Or is the oh, yeah. wind from yeah. the... Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, you heard it. Even though even though the wind is like a torrent in your ears, you still heard. It's like muffled. Death is one of those words that Vinley hears in a crowd, in a, <laughs> yeah. in a room full of people. <laughs> Death, that's my favorite hobby. Um, everybody then feels the entire area completely get dense with gravity as you all just feel twice your weight. Yep. Swinging your weapon seems to be difficult. Moving seems to be difficult and it feels crushing on your shoulders and heavy with every step. Yep. Uh, How does that affect flying? Uh, it. You can only move half your speed. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. That is that is what is affected. Yeah, and um, attacks are made at disadvantage because it's just like you know right. swinging. So right on. It's like underwater. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. 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 Uh, and it is V's turn. Alrighty. So I'm gonna continue attacking this big old boyo. Okay. Right. So let's uh let's see if it hits. Hey, don't forget your attacks are at disadvantage. Oh, they're at disadvantage. But, but you're raging, reckless. aren't you? I am yeah, raging. Wouldn't to... that just be normal? No, you have to reckless in order to do that. Ah. It gives it advantage on its next attack. You can if you totally want all to. Of its attacks, oh, all of its attacks. Yeah. You could reckless if you want to roll regular, but it's up to you. Yeah, I'll reckless. Okay. I have the health for it. Boss, All right. Finley, you're in the so hole. that is a. Um, can I do math? Let's find out. <laughs> Sorry, a 21, 22. 21 hits. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 So. What? Really? I'm sick of these ones. Uh, ten points of damage for that one. Oh, right, I can only I can attack twice. Okay, they're just at. They just have to be reckless. Correct. Oh, same. I <laughs> rolled the exact same thing to hit. And so let's see, what's the damage on this? Please be better. A little. Um, uh, 11 points this time. Slightly better. Yeah, it's slightly better. Yeah, again, you hack and carve into this thing as it continues. You just continue to wear away off of its armored rocky hide. Uh, okay. You, as you, oh, air knocked out of you go to stand up and it is so hard because the gravity has become so much dense as you go to stand up i shakingly pull a cork off of a healing potion and just i guess the liquid kind of hits the back of my throat hard but i do it does. <laughs> drink that and that is your bonus action yeah so let me get that done real quick That's not bad. Deal eight. Okay, did I see where my grappling hook went? Make a perception check. Okay. Please. Hmm. 13. Looking around the rocky terrain of the bottom where you are, you just can't make out where it went. 
Okay. Um, that was half my movement to stand up. I have 15 feet of movement. I don't believe with the gravity the way it is, I can jump or reach it without it. So may I make one last check for it, or I think that may be my turn then. Uh, what did you What did you use for your action? He, I, I'll give you you can you free action to look the first time, and you can spend your action to look harder for okay. your for your trusted. Rapper. I needs it. I needs it so badly. Okay, uh, twenty one. And with that, as you as you first look over, you're in a panic. You can't find it, and then as you do, you look and about twenty feet away hooked and wrapped on one of the rocks dangling over a crevice you see the glinting shine of your grappling hook i use the rest of my movement to get it you move five feet 15 feet towards it you cannot quite get there stood up. oh right and stood up moved. yeah no because of the gravity you move yeah you can you like you go to I move see it, it. You're like, oh that's hard to do <laughs> that's my turn Yep. That's my turn, but I have eyes on it now. All right. You have eyes cool. on your Vinley. most faithful friend. So Vinley, having this error thing on her back, is going to carefully reach into her bag, pull out a small diamond, and press it against the soundstone, and cast Chromatic Orb, doing thunder damage. Okay. And you do that, and it, boom, echoes out, and as you do this entire rock begins to resonate and vibrate and has this constant just it has a weird aura around it that is like a clear glow gotcha um and then we have life fire and death um start moving me towards the death one i know i'll get the only one who could do fire Oh, shit. Damn. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so as my bonus action, I'm going to send Savard towards the death. Okay. Mm. And then I will move towards... No, I don't have to move. I will stay clutching this rock. And, uh, all right. You want as Savard moves over. Savard here. Yeah. <gasps> my little um, boy. Uh, All right, and that is, uh, that's you. Uh, that brings us to Seisha. Hey. Um, can I make it in front of Harold on that platform? You can, but you will have to use your action to dash because of the intense gravity. Damn it, Harold! <laughs> Seisha will actually say that as she lands in front of him. Okay. Just flying in your wings, although ethereal, just feel heavy, and the fog that's flowing off of you feels more like uh, a, a dense wetness that is just also heavy as you land. Harold, and... figure out what those are. Yeah. You look. Yeah. <laughs> Harold. Like... <laughs> uh, so that was uh, movement action. You have a bonus action. I can't do anything as a bonus action. Okay. All right. Uh, B, this thing is going to attempt to hit you. Let's see if it does this time. Don't taunt it. I'm Reckless, okay. yeah. So advantage on you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I could get lucky. Uh, uh, dirty 20 to hit you? Yeah, it hits. OK. like a happy fun ball it's a happy fun rock and a 26 to hit you that hits me yeah okay, not first, so happy fun rock uh, on the first one as it connects you're gonna take 11 have five bludgeoning damage that's already have mm -hmm. and then as it hits you there is this thunderous boom that ignites as it hits you you're gonna take an additional 20 thunder damage 20 yep Wow, it's not halved at all. It is no. not. You cannot have thunder damage. Okay. Uh, and and then it, as it connects with its second strike. Oh, I need you to make a strength save. A uh, strength saving throw. Okay. At advantage. 
at advantage. Oh, shit. Well, there goes that die. I'll use this one. <laughs> Should've gone for the one that ran away. Uh, yeah, that's a, um, wait, 14. 14 is exactly what you needed. As, as it goes and you feel yourself being driven to the ground, but you put a hand down and as you do, Lo grabs your shoulder, stands you up, gives you a look. We are Vedorok and faces you off, off again, but you are going to take 14, half, seven points of bludgeoning damage from that blow. Okay. That's awesome. Oh my God. Oh. Oh. No, not no. Sorry. That, oh, it was, it was attacking <laughs> me. Yeah. Right. Are um, we coming downstairs? <laughs> no. Uh, the air elemental is going after you, Vinley. Uh, let's see if it gets its whirlwind back. It does get its whirlwind back. I need to talk from you. Fuck off, dude. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's a 17. Clinging onto this, you're like, no! <laughs> uh, you um, I will say, as as she's clinging on and being thrown around, she's repeatedly saying the same prayer to Jurgal and Mistra. Got it. Uh, you're gonna take nine bludgeoning damage. Hot. Is it though? No, it's actually pretty cool because he's an air elemental. And go ahead and make that uh, concentration check. That's another 19 on the die. All right, rolling fire. Uh, all right, Harold. I better be. You are still stunned. <laughs> you are still stunned. You cannot move. Your teeth are grinding and gritting and as you feel this electricity uh, course through you. And correct the... me if I'm wrong. I'm looking at this and it says if you are uh, if you are in a situation where you're stunned, you are uh, can't move, can speak only falteringly, automatically fail, strength and dex saves. Uh, you're incapacitated, and your attack rolls uh, attack rolls against you have advantage. Correct. Capacitated states that you can't take actions or reactions, but there's nothing saying I can't take bonus actions. Uh, or would that fall under actions? Once you're yeah. incapacitated, you lose I, concentration. Oh, do you? Okay, then never mind. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry, you do. You do lose concentration, so you you do lose that's concentration fine. on heat metal. Totally fine. So. All right. Yep. Then that's my turn. Okay. Um, it is going as you land, Seisha. Uh, it looks up at you, uh, and it is going to move around to the side of you, and it's going to swing at the stunned Harold. I'm no longer stunned. Uh, it is you are stunned until the end of its turn. Oh, until the end uh, of its turn. Got it. Yep, yep. Okay. Yep. Then it gets advantage. Do you want to roll? Yeah, I I I rolled it if you got its thing back. Got it. Got it. Got it. If it's, um, I, I apologize, if it's moving like that, do I get an attack of opportunity? You do not. You do not. It, it, is, it is taking a five foot shift and is still uh, within range. Okay. Uh, 18 to hit you, Harold? Uh, I will cast shield. You cannot, you are. Oh, right. I'm. Uh, yeah, no, that'll hit. Okay. Uh, you are going to take 10 points of bludgeoning damage as it hits you with its flail. Okay. And it, Attacks again. Uh, that's another hit, and then attacks a third time, Ooh. and that is uh, another hit. So you're gonna take nine points of bludgeoning damage, right? And then eleven points of bludgeoning damage, and I'm down. Okay. I got to go wash my hands. Okay. Harold goes down. You are no longer stunned. Hey. Uh, Aliquint. Um. Aliquin will kind of look at <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, what was... The, what, what, it what, was what, death and what on that island? Uh, death and earth. Oh. Yeah. Nothing for that. Jesus. Oh, earth is easy. I like that. I have something for that. I think I don't have anything for that. <laughs> you ain't got nothing. Nope. Magic don't work here. I know. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, and you actually watch as um, <clears throat> Alicorn will move around and stand right next to it. Uh, and as he does, um, he stands in between this earth creature and the floating stone that is that is the earth aligned. 
Um, and he, he's like, yeah, you call that Earth? I couldn't make pottery out of you. I'm so bad at this. And he's going to try and make an intimidation intimidation to goad it. <laughs> he's he's on my level. That's not bad. That's a 16. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, but he will use his action to do that. Um, and as he does, uh, let me roll the earth elemental. And, hey, it's all right. And you watch as the earth elemental just like, uh, and goes to backhand him. And as he does, eloquent ducks and the earth elemental backhands the stone. And you watch as it ah. rings and crumbles and begins to glow as he activates the earth. And it glows with a That's... yellow aura. I took my plan away. <laughs> it still works out. <laughs> Made my job easier. Yeah. He, he saw you focusing on attacking it, and he's like, uh, maybe I can do this. Yeah. Uh, all yeah, right, so that's my... activated. Uh, I was going to yeah. try to pick him up and slam him into the rock. Oh, man, that would have been so good. Oh, that yeah, been so that was going to be my next move. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, uh, the gravity stays dense. Damn it. Oh, my mic's not muted, sorry. <laughs> Wait, you're, oh, you're worried scrap. about saying that when you've been dropping F-bombs like Easter eggs? Listen, <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, v, it is your turn. All right, well, um, I say to uh, him, I'm like, should we just like, Try to kill him or just leave him be since we've activated this rock thing? He tr the stones have to be activated in order to get you home. Right, 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 right. But I, but Vinley and I have to concentrate when we perform the ritual, so. Got it, so he should probably die. Potato, potato. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna attack. Am I at disadvantage still? Uh, yes. You are, because gravity is still very dense. All right, well, I'll, Recklessly attack him. Okay, here we go. Salmon, salmon. <laughs> salmon, salmon. Ooh! How do I keep rolling 14s? It's 21 again. 21, 21 hits. 22. I can't do math. I can't do it's math. Fine. 22. It's okay, though. Okay. It, it is what it is. Okay, so that hits, and that means we're gonna roll how much damage? Boss, you're on deck, and you're in the hole. Gotcha. 15 points of damage. Got it. Next one, attacking recklessly again. Woo, buddy, 26. That hits. And that is gonna do, damn it. It's okay though. Nine points of damage. Okay. All right. You cut, just, you're just cutting and carving into it. Um, and it is now boss's turn. Uh, I see it. In the distance, I go to pick it up. Okay, you move 15 feet, you get to it. Uh, that I, is my 30 feet of movement. Yep, my secret best friend. Um, then, it's gonna be rough, I know, but I will attempt to whip it up underneath the rock that I am closest okay. to. And you can, but it is at disadvantage. Yep, 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 yep. Let's see. Oh, that could still work, 18. And even through the intense gravity, you throw it up and it arcs, it catches, and if you pull it taut. I pull my ass up. You move 15 feet up. Yeah, and so you're about 15 you're, feet you're away. dangling and hanging off of it. Oh no, that one's a little bit higher. Uh, yeah, that, that one. Oh yeah, so you're about a quarter of the way up. Yeah. Okay. Do I have bonus action on dash action or have I used all of what I'm using? That was, using that was all of it because- All right, it, that's it then. Yep. You can only move at half speed, so. Gotcha. My turn? Yes, it is your turn. Okay, okay. sorry. Um, <laughs> so, Vinley will take the diamond that she has in her hand and put it over her shoulder and look back and cast Chromatic Orb again, this time doing fire damage at the fire rock. Easily done. Very nice. And as her bonus action, she will command Savard to land on the death rock and see if that does something. Uh, it does not because you have to use an action to activate. Damn. Gotcha. 
Yeah, just merely touching it does not. Um, Can he use an action to activate it? Wait. No. So okay. not. Yeah, it would be like a touch-based spell cast through you. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, that is... But as you wreath this thing in fire and flames, torching it, you see it glow um, a an orange uh, aura around it. And... I will move towards that. Ooh, I don't know where it's going to go. Um, s- take me towards the death rock. Okay. I have 60 foot fly, so 30 foot fly. That's still enough to get there. Uh, does a... 30, 20 hit you? Normally it would, but I'm going to cast shield. Okay. And as you go to fly, you feel your body waver as it's cutting through this uh, torrent of whirlwind, uh, almost slamming you against a rock, but you definitely dive out of the way and are now floating next to the death rock. Did I have enough movement to do the same thing and bear hug it, kind of? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Seisha. <laughs> She's going to reach down and grab the front of Harold's clothes. And I'm going to do lay on hands. Okay. And I don't know if it's possible for my movement. Can I lift him? Of course, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Then I'm going to lift him to his feet and look him dead in the eyes when he wakes up. What did I tell you? What do you mean, what did you tell me? (laughs) She sets him down. Figure out what those are! How much did you, did you heal him for? Him. Yeah. Uh, we'll say 10. Actually, no. Uh, we're right on that thing. Let's go 20. All right, heal 20. All right. Thank you. All right. That's your, that is uh, your action and your movement. That is your turn. It is now the Earth Elemental's turn. Uh, it is going to make uh, two mall attacks. Let's see if it gets its attack back. It does not. Uh, one of them is going to be at Aliquin who goaded him, but it will be at disadvantage because uh, you attacked it, V. And one will also be at uh, V and... Advantage, because reckless. But disadvantage. Yeah, one attack on Alicorn, one attack on V. Yep. Yep. So it swings and like completely... A 19 to hit. Misses... Yeah, yeah. completely misses Alicorn because I rolled a natural 20 and a seven. <laughs> uh, yeah, 19 hits me. Oh, because of 14. Oh, yeah, it, it actually just barely misses Alequin. Whew. Wait, is it 19 to hit me? Correct. Okay, yeah, that hits me. A whopping 6, so 3. No, sorry, no, uh, 8, so 4. Okay. Nice. As this giant earth mall slams into you, it's turn. Harold. Uh, no, not yet. Oh, did you do this one? Oh, no. Yeah, no, not quite yet. Uh, the air elemental is going to continue to chase after you, Vinley. Sounds about right. <laughs> As it moves up, uh, let's see if it gets its whirlwind back. It does, it does not. So it is going to just slam up against you with two slam attacks. Um, one completely misses with a natural one, but the other one is a dirty 20, which still misses you because it is not your turn yet and your shield is still active. Yes. Um, as it approaches, she rolls her eyes under the mask and says, you're just like my father, a complete blowhard. Uh, Harold, now it is your turn. Now it is your turn. Uh, and it's right on top of me, right? So. It is. Um, wait, <sighs> is it still on top of him when I... No, you I mean, when I say on top, I mean, like, it's right in front of me. Like, oh, okay. Is it, like, like, within a five feet. Yes. Um, and there's detriments if I try to Eldritch Blast him at this range. Yes. Uh, let's do... Harold, move away. I, I Yeah, <laughs> but then I'm... Uh... Yeah, I'll, I, I will. Him. Oh, wait, then he gets an attack. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Shit. Try and get him to move away from you if you can. 
I can I could get him to move away from me too. Mm -hmm. Let's do this instead. We're we're gonna we're gonna test something. We're gonna try something here. We're gonna we're gonna do something really risky. But that's that's kind of my whole thing. Yes, <laughs> risk it, biscuit. Uh, I'm gonna cast phantasmal force on it. Okay. Ooh. That's an int saving throw. Nine. It fails. Awesome. Okay, so what do we make it see? It uh it sees a shadow forming. No, it's not gonna care about that. You know, it's not gonna see anything. You know why it's not gonna see anything? Because it thinks a giant box is covering its head and is chained to the ground on the spot that it's on at all four corners. Uh, that box is also on fire. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this thing loves fire and so, underwater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and it'll take in the middle five, of the it'll take five psychic damage as Harold's like, <laughs> and now now that it can't see me, I will run away from it, uh, and I will run to the nearest stone. He's up to the nearest stone. I'm aware of that. So, unfortunately, be, as you go to move, de gravity is so dense. Oh, it's blocking your way to just move away because the curving of the circular stone blocks your way. And as you go to move around Seisha, you can only get to <laughs> around Seisha before Amazing. you can't move anymore because of how dense gravity is. But you uh, are no longer in its melee range. Okay. Uh, Seisha, do you still have Bardic Inspiration? Still within its melee range. I do. Okay, good. And I'm not gonna have to give it to you again. Uh, is there anybody else near me? That's how close to me is Vinley? Uh, Vinley is like forty feet. Perfect. Uh, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna yell to Vinley. You're doing great. Keep it up. You're kicking their asses. And I'll give you some bardic inspiration. Does not get that back. Uh, from the distance, you can see her bright green eyes through the mask. Uh, kind of twinkle a little bit at hearing you say that. Hey. Aww. Uh, that makes me so happy. This creature uh, standing against uh, against this ring of rocks uh, takes two swings at you, Seisha, with <laughs> a 24 and a dirty 20. Does it have disadvantage because of the illusion? Oh, covering his face. Oh, right. That thing. Uh, oh, it's so good. Yeah, so the it has to make a, a save to, to break yeah, ass, correct? Yeah, so it has to go and... Uh, another see. intelligence. Yeah, I think it's another intelligence save. Let me check. To Boom. try to decipher whether or not it's an yeah, illusion. It. it fails. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah they, it can use its action to try to figure out what's going on. It has to take an action to do it. Uh, all right, so one of those misses you because it the disadvantage is a natural one, but awesome. the other two were high enough. Uh, I believe the dirty twenty misses you, but the dirty twenty will miss. Four will hit you. To know it has to take yeah. its action to do this. Oh, okay, oh. got so it. So if it's taking its action to figure out if this it is doesn't real make or any not. attacks, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah it, it, it tries to pull like nice. you see, it, like trying to pull the box off its head. Um, uh, it is eloquence. I believe it takes more psychic damage, right? Uh, no, only on my turn. Only on your turn. Got it. Got if it. it's still affected, it'll take another one. Uh, all right, Aliquin. Um, seeing there's a whole lot of ah going. Um, he is going to. Uh, you watch as he sees this earth elemental in front of him, and you watch as his uh, as he reaches up and grabs the plate armor, and his hands ignite in electricity as he shocking grasps the uh, the creature. The creature. Uh, he will have advantage on this attack because it is in heavy armor. It will hit with a 24. Ooh, that is a good roll. It'll take 17 lightning damage. This thing does not look too good. Uh, that is his turn, and... Um, He's like, uh, like looking over and seeing your, um, 
he's gonna attempt to at least move to start trying to help Finley. He'll, he'll provoke an attack of opportunity. Disadvantage. Oh, yeah. A 14? Oh, it just misses. Oh. <laughs> uh, you watch as he brings, like, he, like, goes and brings his forearms down, and you see as he has these bracers that appear to be made of ice that he parries away the blows as they just miss him. Uh, that is eloquent. And every, everybody feels their body become weightless again. And I need everyone to make a uh, dexterity saving throw. I am attached to something. Do I still need to make this? You do. All right. Wait, uh, do I need go? to make you, it as well? You do. And we okay. do not see this coming. He rolls an eight. Um, all right. So, uh, Aliquin. Probably being near Seisha. Uh, the... Uh, Harold is near Seisha. <laughs> That's right. It's like, hooray being near Seisha. Yeah. Uh, that, will pass. that will pass. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, Harold, what'd you get? Uh, 19. Okay. You are fine. Vinley. 13. You are just fine. Boss. 17. You're fine. V, you said you got an 8. Yep. All right. Seisha. 19! You are fine, all right. Oh, wait, 18! Uh, Sorry. Yeah, it's all good. Aliquin's also fine, but uh, V, you and the Earth uh, cre uh, elemental uh, creature get just rise into the air, and you're flailing, and you did not, there's no gravity, there's nothing to pit, sit on. Two of you. We, we fighting in the air now, boys. Fighting in the air. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, Earth, Earth don't like air. Uh, well, I'm a mountain person, so that makes sense. Um, that is the layer action. It is now V's turn. V's turn. It is your turn. You will have disadvantage on the attacks because you are technically restrained because you're flailing, but you have advantage to attacking it because it is also restrained. So you roll regular. <laughs> nice. Well, I'm just gonna swing for it. Hope for the best. <laughs> oh, that is a 26 to hit. 26 hits. Yeah, let's check that damage. What is it? Come on. All right. Um, 9, 10, 11 points of damage. Okay. Next one. Probably not going to hit. 11. 11 will not hit. As as you hit on the first one and the blow push you pushes you off and you spin around and you were like <laughs> trying to swing yeah. backwards <laughs> can't quite get it. Yeah. Uh, boss, pull myself up. Easy enough. You pull yourself up. Uh, you see Vinley on one of the pillars here. You see an air elemental surrounding her, you see V and the Earth One like flailing around in the air as gravity has sh shifted. Uh, and you see Aliquin kind of like looking around trying to figure out what he's gonna do next. Okay, so pull back the trusty grappling hook into my sack, pull out Mage Bane. Okay. And I will rush, jump, and attempt to attack the Earth Elemental. Absolutely, uh, go ahead and make an athletics check to jump. Certainly. That should be good enough. 15? 15, yeah, Absolutely. You run up and jump, and the uh, the new gravity that is reversed aids you in your jump, and you come up right below it. And you make slam your... into it, you have advantage because it is considered restrained because it is floating in the air. So... Oh, I love this idea of Voss running, jumping at it, Grabbing onto him, stabbing him, and then back flipping off to land. <laughs> Love it. Let's do yes. <laughs> that is a 24 to hit. 24 hits. Okay. All right. To the D4 still. Okay, that's not bad damage. 22 points of damage. Uh, you carve and you just, you 
kind of hit it, carve into it, and kick off. And as you do, bits of, of it crumble away and you put a large gash in the armor. Uh, it is like barely hanging together. Um, bonus action, can I make an attack? Of course. Uh, yeah, we'll say that as you as you go to backflip off, you make an attack with a flourish as you back off of it. So you can totally make your, your offhand. Uh, that is a 20 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. All right. Sweet, sweet D4 damage. That is four. Uh-huh, four. That's it. Offhand. Oh. All right, yeah. A couple more rocks fly into the air and list and float as, uh, like, petals in the wind. Finley, it's your turn. So, Finley, holding on to this rock, saying that Voss is back on solid ground up here, she's going to lift one of her hands, like, do that, where she opens all of her hands and it turns into a skeletal hand as she casts Chill Touch, and she'll bring it down on the death rock. And as you do that, you watch as black energy radiates off of this. As it is All right. Then give me my full 60 movement towards the last two rocks. Okay. Uh, air elemental will take an attack against you. Uh, that is a 21. That will hit even with shield. Yep, 21. Okay, so uh, you're going to take... 13. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, how close how close is this thing to me? Uh maybe. You have to count that. No, it's it's about 40 feet because yeah. it's in the same square as her. Got it, yeah. It's about 40 feet. Yep. Uh and it's the it's the gas thing. It is the air elemental, yes. I'm going to shout at it with cutting okay. words. And okay. I'm going to say Honestly, and of all the crazy things we've dealt with, your you being a giant fart really isn't that impressive. And that'll take six away from its attack. All nice. right, so that is a that's 15, a miss. A fifteen instead. Yeah, Ooh. that's a miss without shield. So nice. yeah, and nice. with that you fly. Uh, where where are you going? Are you are you going back I'm, towards the you were at, or at towards the circular pillar? The yeah, the circular pillar with the two unknown rocks, because there is nothing I can do for life. <laughs> I like that I'm just far enough away to be slightly blurry, and my blue of my robes is slightly greenish enough. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and that's me. I think my vision's getting better. Instead of a big dark blur, I see a big light blur. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That is you, Seisha. Um, well, since uh, our elemental friend here is occupied, I am going to run and leap off and head toward the life rock. Yeah, a little bit of a... Can I make it? Actually, can I make it to the life rock? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, um, yeah, go ahead and make me an athletics check because you're, you're going to need to use the low gravity to, to repel yourself. Okay. Even with my wings? If you don't do this, you don't have enough movement. Oh, okay. <laughs> Your, oh, your hell wings. Yeah. What was it? Uh, just tell me what you roll. Uh, athletics. Athletics? Uh, 17. 17. Absolutely. You run and jump off, and your wings radiate out with mist billowing behind you as you glide over towards this rock and hover over at it. And that is where you use your wings. And, oh, my wings were already out. I know. That's oh, what I'm okay. saying. And you didn't fly. Oh, over. oh, yeah. okay, got you it. You use your wings to stop yourself. In she front lays of it. her hands on the stone, and I'm going to use healing hands. And okay. as you lay your hands on it, you do, and you watch as this glow come a golden glow. I'm gonna change this to green. Earth to green, and we'll do. It's gonna make life white. Uh, and life will be a golden glow. All right. And um, that'll do me. Yeah, All right. Action movement. It is its turn. Uh, the earth. Oh, uh, got it. Uh, it is going to flail and try to hit you. Uh, 
V with two attacks. Let's see if it gets its thunder wave. It does not. Hey! Uh, first attack uh, is... Um, okay, so uh, again, it has disadvantage, but advantage to attack you, so it rolls regular, but I got a... I'm assuming this is going to miss. Uh, that is a... Uh, a 14 and a 13. They both miss. All right. Again, it can't quite, it's small. And it's, I mean, this thing is awful in the air. It's an earth elemental. It is not very good in the air. It's exact opposite as it just <laughs> flails miserably. Yeah. Uselessly. Um, it does not. Did I get it back? Nope. Uh, all right. Um, uh, I'll say that... Uh, the air air elemental is going to float down and land between you, Voss, and Aliquin. Mm -hmm. uh, as it does, uh, it is going to do uh, one slam attack on Aliquin and one slam attack on you. So against Aliquin, that is a 24. Uh, oh, yeah, that'll hit. And against you, that is a 23, Voss. Yes. That'll hit. 18 points of bludgeoning damage Oof. against Aliquin. Ouch. As he is picked up and then slammed into the the, uh, the rocky floor. Uh, and then eight. And then you take 12, boss. Uncanny dodge that. Absolutely. So you take that six. Can do. Uh, as, it, as it swirls around and, and this like whip-like air smacks you across the face. <clears throat> Harold. Uh, I'm going to try to get to rocks. Okay, uh, easy enough. Uh, it is still blinded, so it will not provoke an attack or you will not provoke an attack opportunity. Uh, you get to where the, you get in between the rocks. If you would like to use your action to try and discern what these are. Yes, that's what I'd like make to Make an do. arcana check. All right. Roll high, roll high. Oh, no promises. Natural 20. <laughs> see? Do you see? Amazing. And as you close your eyes, the will to go home is so close. It's on the horizon. You you know that the one floating highest amongst all of the rocks is air. And the one that Vinley is looking towards that is large and heavy, weighted in the so that's air. That is emotion. 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 Yep. Uh Salt it? And that is that is your action too. Right. Turn that. Uh, my <laughs> secondary action. Am I within sixty feet of Aliquin? Uh, you are. You are just sixty feet from him. Uh, I will spend my bonus action to cast Healing Word on him. Uh, all right. Awesome. Uh. He'll be like, I'm feeling really sure about this. We would have been best friends thing. And then I, he's going to heal seven. Uh, <laughs> ooh, nice. He will gladly take that healing. <laughs> Make the rock feel bad about itself. Hurt it with emotion. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 um, this is, I was just thinking, this is weird. Uh, for a reaction, could I spend my last bardic inspiration to, uh, to cast some emotion at this rock? No, you no. cannot. Okay. <clears throat> it is. It, it takes an, uh, an, an action. An action. To Do you it. tell us what they are? Uh, yeah, I, I immediately tell you. Maybe try to role play with the rock, you know? See how it's feeling. How's it going? I can get it. Says the person that can rage. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, I was just going to cutting words it. <laughs> uh... Ooh, man, you're lucky this is a disadvantage, Seisha. Um, 24? Hits. Uh, no, it doesn't, because uh, reaction. My turn will run again. Who's attacking, attacking me? Uh, the, the air one that has a flaming box on its head? Oh, no. It, she I'm it way life. over by the oh, life right. drop. Uh, then... then. Can it move? It can move. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 well, it believes it, it believes that it is uh, changed down, to the so ground. So it's going to have to try and disbelieve. It's it. going to have to take its action to figure out that it's not actually all these things. <laughs> An eight. 
No, it still believes that box. That's a real tough box. Probably made of some Harold, did you bullshit. Do more damage to it on your turn. Oh, that's a great point. He needs to try to because that doesn't cost me an action at all. <laughs> that, that doesn't cost me an action or anything. It just takes this. So it'll take six more psychic damage. Yeah, as it okay. believes that his head is on fire. So yep, <laughs> and it'll and it'll take it as though it's fire because it believes that it's fire. So great. I love this character. Uh, so, so you you watch as some of the wounds heal on Aliquin, and he looks over and seeing only the last two remain, he is going to attempt to run and jump from one to the other. He is going to use that bardic inspiration. What's up? Uh, that is a three. That makes it a six. A sixteen. Which Yay. Pushes over what he needs. Woohoo, <laughs> doggy! Uh, as he runs and will jump, and land here uh, and. Is going as he lands, um, he is going to uh, focus on the getting rid of that that creature. Uh, and as he does, uh, he is going to. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Um, he will, um, again, bring his hand up, and you watch as ice crystals begin to form over this uh, air elemental as he then brings it and pulls down as he casts Frostbite. Uh, so that creature needs to make a con save. 10. Uh, fails. We'll take 14 cold damage. Uh, that is Aliquin. Um, uh, everybody but Seisha. And, okay, so as this happens, V and the Earth Miradon will fall. fall. And you fall 20 feet. Uh, you take, he takes eight you take four points of bludgeoning damage we, we land just like that they both take four. <laughs> oh, is it oh it's okay it's resistant <laughs> so you watch this thing land and its back cracks against the ledge and you watch as most of its form just falls apart as it then slowly stands back up or tries to uh, starts yeah, or, to stand yeah, back up yeah lifts its head uh and v it's your turn uh, okay. Um, Hold on. Oh. But oh, right, right, right. Sorry, that was the ending of one layer action, the beginning of another. Everybody but uh, Seisha and Vinley, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. You can make this advantage, uh, okay. beat, because you definitely feel uh, slash see it happening. Yeah. Actually, Huckwin uh, and Harold do not have to make it as well. Oh, Huckwin yeah. That's uh, right. So it's only V and Boss. All right, I rolled a 16. 18. You're both fine as these massive forms of Earth start shifting around. And you can hear. Oh, okay, great, I'm further away. Oh, wait, now we're closer. But V, uh, with your ability to um, stay on the rock as it moves, Mm -hmm. uh, you are you are prone currently, so if you'd like to stand up, you can. Okay. Um, you stand up and you're looking over the last remains of this earth earthen creature, um, as it is prone, which would give you. Um, I was on the other side of you where were, that would be. You were flying, and you do not move with the island. No, I know, but I was closer to that other island. Push her, push yeah, it further yeah, back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I only mention it because it's going to affect my turn. Uh, no, 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 the other, the big one. Nope. That's, that's, that's where you were, I promise. You, you, there was okay. a big one there, the big one moved. You stayed yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, because, because right here is where the life one rock was. Right, but I was, I was only 15 away because I had to reach that rock from being in the middle of the other one. It, your your speed doesn't matter when you jump. Okay. Yeah. So your your distance why, of why jump. Did, why, did, why did that just? Happen? It's been doing it all night. It'll come back. Okay. Sorry. That's. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. 
I rolled a 18 okay, to usually hit. usually comes back before now. Uh, 18 Bad. just barely hits <laughs> as you carve this. Uh, okay, it should be coming back on in a second. Carve this Bahir blade into its form, and the the amount of damage it's taken, you watch as it crushes the chest piece of this uh, earth creature. You don't need to roll damage. It had one. Nice. <laughs> nice. So I, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, to move, can I, um, I want to run and jump to the main big rock. Okay. Uh, go ahead so and make an athletics check. Athletics. Fourteen? Uh, Fourteen, yes. Yep. Okay. Yep, okay. and you jump and make your way over there, and you land right there, and you are right in front of the air, who seems to be like grabbing its head, trying to lift something and and tear away at this invisible thing. Yep. Wait, wait, wait! I'm on that rock. You said the big one. You said the big main rock. Yeah, with like the two where Harold is yep. and stuff. Yes. Oh, okay. There's not. Oh, 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 oh I see, I see. The armored see. air guy. Armed, yeah, armored. sorry. I got confused for a second. Okay, so I'm right in front of him. Yep, yep. Okay, and that's. Mm -hmm. I don't have any more options for my move, right? Uh, do you have two attacks or only one attack? You have two attacks. You I can have make two an attacks. Attack. Yeah. yeah, you can make your second attack against this guy. Where's the emotion rock? Uh, you do. Is it in the air? It, it's. it's Further back. back, but you cannot use your action. You've already used your action to start an attack. Okay, in that case. That, that rock. Yeah. Okay, I was just gonna attack it. That's okay. Um, yeah, I'll attack this guy. Um, let's roll for that. Do I get? I'm still raging. Fucking cool. Uh, that is a uh, 15 to hit. Uh, a 15 will miss. As it okay. uh, kinks off of its armor. <sighs> Boss, it is your turn. Ah, uh, attack on the thing in front of me. Uh, absolutely. Mage Bane. Um, no one is on the other side of that, correct? It cannot flank? No, it is just you. Cool. Uh, 20 to hit. That hits. Cool. Uh, 26 points of damage. Uh, you carve into it and you feel it cut right through it and the magic of Mage Bane just slices and you feel it as if it cuts through flesh, but it is just air. It is very weird. Um, I then uh, move bonus action over to the main island. Uh, all right, go ahead and make me an athletics check. Uh, yeah. And just for clarification, uh, there's a reason why massive damage isn't working. They may not have vital organs. And, and <laughs> Does this wind not have a stomach or a herniated <laughs> disc that I can maybe pull out? <laughs> uh, 17 to clear. Easy enough. You land right next to V as you skid on this main island. Uh, just put myself in a position to be able to, when that thing comes over, uh, get ready to take an attack, and that'll be it. Right, that that's my turn. That's right where you are. Yep, um, that's it. Vinley. Vinley is going to look between the two rocks, then look at the air one, hold out that diamond, and cast Chromatic Orb using lightning damage. Okay. As it slams into it, it crackles and radiates off, and the rock does not ignite. And she will turn and look at everyone and say, that's all I got for these rocks. And she's going to move like in a spiral towards the camera up to the top of the highest pointing gate rock. Okay. Okay. Got it. And just kind of stand there for a second. So what you did, did it look like lightning? Mm -hmm. It did. Okay. So you are there, but... 
Uh, and if you are not doing anything else, Seisha, it is your turn. Can I either reach the emotion rock or reach the part of the other one that's sticking up and bounce off that to reach it? Since movement, since jumping doesn't cost movement. You are currently flying, so you can fly. You can get just shy of it. Okay, well, instead of flying to that, what I want to do is fly to the rock and push off the rock. Yeah, so, so I started your movement from the actual rock itself, not from where you were flying. Okay. And it, and it is 40 feet from the edge of that rock. So you can get just short of it with your 30 feet fly. How Two far feet. away am I? You are 10 feet from it. And so you want to land on the ground and jump up and try to hit it? I can for sure get a yes. motion if you can get yes. air. Did you hear Harold? Huh? I can for sure get a motion if you can get air. I just don't know any way to get air. I've got air. Well, can, I I, got can I move towards air then? Absolutely. I mean, it's about the same distance. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm about 10 feet away from it? Uh, no, you're actually closer because you, you come up on... Yeah. Oh, okay, sweet. Now let me pan up a little bit. Hey, look at that. That's so cool. I want to attempt this. I don't know if I'm going to be close enough to do it or not. Oh, Seisha yeah. takes a deep breath. And you blow wind? Yes. Um, and you use your action? Yes. Um, you, as you blow, it is not the air coming from your breath, but as you blow and you're hovering as your wings. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. I'm going to sweep the wings towards it as yep. well. Yep. And you, why is my wife? And you bat your wings as uh, this mist and uh, fog washes over this with the blow of your breath and the beat of your wings as you start to see uh, this rock begin to glow. A white aura. And you hear a soft hum. That was movement, action. It's dead. Good. The um, air elemental is going to fly over on top of Voss. And let's see if it gets that thing. Oh. Does it? It does not. <laughs> I know. All right, so it kind of lands and it can hit Voss, Aliquin, and V. So it'll hit say Voss and Voss Aliquin. a 12 to hit you miss and a 19 for Aliquin uh, it'll hit Aliquin no it won't because I'm going to cut cutting words <laughs> ah. <laughs> how this... many more of those you got left that's the last one is this the gas is this the gas still it is as it starts to swing, I'm like, what's that farty smell? Oh my god, are you still here? Oh, take seven away from that attack. Nice. That will a 12, it'll miss! <laughs> <laughs> I have no more inspiration to give out. Harold, it is your turn. I am going to grit my teeth. I'm going to march over to the emotion one, and I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery. As I'm like, I fucking hate this place. I fucking want to go home. I just want to go home. And I just get super angry. You stupid fucking rock. You piece of shit rock. Let me home. <laughs> the rock can't make a save. Good. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and it begins to glow in a red. Like very similar to that, the ethereal of V's rage. Got it. And Thank you me. all feel this magical resonation as everything is now humming in harmony. Uh, and Alakun will look to, to you, Vinley, as you're up top and will just be like, we need to start the ritual, but, and then kind of looks to everyone else, you have to keep them off of us. Consider it done. And uh, that is your turn, Harold. That brings us to top of the round. Oh, do I still have bonus actions? Uh, you do have a bonus action. Uh, let's 
the bonus action uh <laughs> i mean fuck it right why, why not uh cast hex on oh wait no no that's concentration never mind uh i don't want to don't want to i don't want to unbox my friend <laughs> Never mind. I don't have anything I can do. We're good. Okay. All right. That is that. It is uh, is V in range? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, and also my firebox damage. I almost forgot. Yes. Give me that. Four more psychic damage. I don't want to be in range. A nineteen to hit you with the spiked flail as it's like just spinning around uh, wildly. It can feel you all around it, but can't see you. Um, and it was ooh, very much. Uh, hold on. He gets it back. Uh, okay, so... V, I need a con save from you. As it hits you, elect a lightning sparks off of the end of the flail as it courses through you. That uh, is a 24. You're fine. <laughs> on that. Yeah. Uh, four points of bludgeoning damage and 24 points of lightning damage. I'm sorry, say that one more time. Four points of bludgeoning, 24 points of lightning. So 28 total. I'm going to use my stone's endurance to uh, lower some of that damage. All right, while you do that, it is Aliquin's turn. Aliquin is going to... I'm not saying that I that I'm terrified Aliquin will die in this game too, but um, I'm uh, I'm burning every fucking resource I have for that guy. <laughs> I so, just have uh, this terrible feeling that they're gonna kill him just to mess with you. No, I don't think uh, they do. Al Aliquin moves and he actually is sharing <laughs> a space with the air elemental but he is putting himself in between it and the other side, so you are safe, Finley. Uh, as he pulls out uh, Frostbane, slams it into the ground in the very center of this circle, and you watch as he closes his eyes and magic begins to pour out of this clear blade as you just see frost radiating uh, off of it as it begins to grow and pulse as you watch weave start to grow in this area, pulling the, you see the magical essence snaking across the ground and shimmering from each of the other stones pouring into this, uh, this section. Yep. And you watch as the, the sword glowed, had a, a slight pulse to it, and you watch as that pulse dims almost to a subtle emptiness as he has expended all of the charges from and he said he could cover Ooh. how many levels? Five. Five. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Uh, that is Aliquin's turn. It is now layer action. Let's see what happens. Oh, shit. All right. I need uh, nobody because the. Here. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to do this. <laughs> Though nobody, nothing moves, we're gonna move it closer so it's front and center. And put that behind it. Behind it. This is the coolest map of all time. It, it really is amazing. Is. So cool. Yeah, we're trying to make these maps a lot more fun and interactive and memorable. Yeah, um, I'm always gonna you're, remember. This. You're nailing it. Uh, that is the layer's turn. V, it is your turn. Hell yeah! All right, I'm gonna hit this big boy, this big fart. It's a big old farty fart. And I'm a rage and I'm angry. Cause you know what? That's impolite. You should have gone to a bathroom, sir. And uh, that is 17 to hit. Uh, 17 on I'm the- fart man. I'm big okay, fart uh, man. Yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, 2d6. Yeah, kill him. Uh, 16 points damage. Got it. So the ear blade cuts into it as you carve down, uh, and then you flip it and go ahead and take your second attack as you come up with an upswing. Come for the upswing. 
Oh, I gotta stop doing that. All right. Oh, natural 20! Oh, shit. Amazing. All right, go ahead and roll that damage. Oh, yeah. All right. So, um, just to be clear, I start off with. You start 12, and then plus start with whatever. 12. Yeah, plus then plus four, whatever a normal so attack would 16. be. Yep. So, roll 2d6, add 16. Okay, that's my question. <laughs> that's true. Oh, okay. <gasps> Okay, um, 16 plus seven is? 23. 23. I figured it out, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. 23 points of damage. Uh, you watch as the spinning slows and starts to sputter and it's barely holding its form together. Nice. Uh, that awesome. is the turn. It is now Voss's turn. Uh, can I move around to flank with somebody? Absolutely you can. I will do that, and I will attack that at advantage. Taking the rapier into the offhand, but attacking primarily with Mage Bane, because Mage okay. Bane's magical. Absolutely. Go ahead and, and cut in with... That's a natural 20. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Goodbye, this guy. Uh, do not even... Uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll it, because I don't, but I don't think it'll... Oh, There's man. no way. Don't even worry about it. Don't even... It has... Yeah, the math okay. is impossible. going to do less than that. And you stab into this elemental this thing birth of the primordial plane and you don't watch it like get cut or anything like that mage bane begins to glow as the magic that created this thing absorbs into mage bane Ooh, that thing's gone <laughs> just like absorb it neutralize it get rid of that you have movement left and you can take your offhand bonus attack against the uh Fox man. Absolutely, I will do that. It was 47 points of damage in case you were wondering. Oh my god. Oh my god. Does he have advantage on this one too? Uh, uh, no. He doesn't because even though he's bought, he doesn't technically have the blind. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's another natural 20. What? Oh my god. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm going to be looking at you, Lauren. <laughs> um, That is another 14 points of damage. We are so getting you off of here. <laughs> <laughs> We're never coming back to this place. I'm just kidding, Lauren. I love you. <laughs> um, yes, you cut into this thing as it. You feel like the air around you begin to rumble as this thing uh, cuts through the rock, and you hear it actually whistle like a scream. Uh, but that is my turn. Uh, v Vin Vinley, it's your turn. So Vinley is going to crest the edge, aiming for where uh, that guy that I can't remember the name of right Aliquin. now, Aliquin, Aliquin. Um, where he is, and she's going to pull out the Wand of Magic Missiles and hold it like a dagger as she's flying down. And when she gets to the ground, since Voss and Vinley's turns are at the same time, the updraft of the air elemental is going to stop her just at the ground, and she's going to slam the wand down and look at Aliquin and say let's make sh make sure this ritual is legendary and she'll expend five charges to make it a level nine ritual or a level ten ritual. Got it. Okay, cool. Burn five. Is that the last charge of the wand? It is not. I got them it all back. Got it. Nice. 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 Um, and again, with that, you watch as just this pulsing radiation of uh, energy uh shoots out of the wand uh, one after another after another after another and um the energy begins to from the other stone sucks in tight and you watch as everything begins to glow as in the uh and radiates up the rounded stones of the portal and you watch as uh you feel mistra and her weave reach from Tyrell and a gate begins to open. Question. Mm -hmm. um, who had the lightning mace? Which which thing had it? So only one stand left standing. Awesome. Yep. Uh, and uh, that is Vinley. It is slowly opening. It, uh, I will let you know when it fully opens. Uh, it is now Satia's turn. Seisha is going to come crashing down on that last elemental and take her two attacks. Absolutely, and do not forget to add that extra damage on that on those attacks. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> from your your wings at being out. Okay, so that is wait math. All right, attacks. That is a twenty-three and a nineteen. Uh, both hit. Yay! Um, I'm gonna go ahead. I, my sword's magic, but I'm gonna go ahead and smite with both of them. Awesome. So that's gonna be one, two. They showed the destroyer. <laughs> First one will be team twenty-two. Right. 15 plus 7. Yeah, 22, 22 plus 2, 24 for the first one. Does that include your extra damage from your your Radiant Soul? Yes, it does. That's the two. Yep. Oh, but it doesn't include my actual weapon damage, so add 4 to it. <laughs> 28. <laughs> I love you, Dustin. <laughs> and 17. Uh, 24... 25, 26, 28 points of damage for the second. Two 28s, and you carve again into this thing as you watch, like, the form inside of the armor begins to dwindle a little bit as you see all of the dust being picked up inside of it starts to lessen and lessen. Add two more for the magic weapon, sorry. make you a chart. I would do it through D&D Beyond, but they don't have all the stuff worked out yet. Uh, all right. That's gone. That's gone. It is now Harold's turn. Well, uh, I, I want to Eldritch Blast this thing uh, and, and get rid of it. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go and do that. Please. Natural 20. Uh, and then my second attack will be a... Oh, it was almost another natural 20. My second attack's a 10, but the first one's a natural 20. I'm about to break your heart. Oh, yeah? Yes. Uh, With cantrips, there is a 50-50 chance. Oh, that's right. Yeah. They won't work, so that first, so it doesn't go off. On no. the first one, it does not. On the second uh, one, it does. Yeah. Well, it's actually uh, one cantrip, I think, so yeah. it's, it so just doesn't okay. happen. Go to Eldritch Blast, and it... <sighs> doesn't totally legit totally Damn. legit not Damn. a heartbreaker at all i knew i knew it i was like this is risky yep my heart's uh, broken <laughs> uh no i'm good uh, uh no need to kill anybody i'll just wait okay and uh as uh as it goes still thinking its thing feeling what's happening you watch as it blindly moves and goes to bring the flail down oh one last thing before it does that i almost forgot it's gonna take six more points of psychic damage (laughs) um you said how much six Sing us that swan song. Oh, <laughs> thank God! So here's what's going to happen. It it's, go- it's going to reel back the swing, and the box, you see the chains pull at every corner and break the box, and it's so surprised that the box is broken, it smashes itself in the face with the mace and crushes okay. in its own helmet before it falls over. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it goes, it raises, and with this flail going up in the upswing, the, the box explodes, and then it comes, it can see everything, and then without finishing the swing, you watch the giant ball mace of spikes just crush its form as the helmet gets crushed and dug into the rest of the armor as it slumps to the ground. Carol just stares at it and just gives it a finger. It's like, okay, we're ready to go. (laughs) And with that, you all start feeling the weave and the connection to Agma. And is that is that mace still there or does it vanish? No, it vanishes with him. Damn! Damn. Yep. It 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 is it is. We'll say it stays. It is a flail. It's mundane. It is a mundane flail. It is not a magic flail. The electric was a, 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 a racial ability from the creature. Yeah. That bastard. 
<laughs> um, it, but, that's a good point. Somebody in the chat said it. it, it to everybody else, it just looks like it hits itself in the head for no reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it lands in front of it and punches itself in the face. <laughs> and and as you watch as the magics begin to swirl around, you watch as there's a ripple in reality as a doorway opens. And you and almost like Stargate, you watch a weave of magic pull out the backside of it and then ripple back and you see a gateway <laughs> opened. Um, and outside you see the grassy area of Tyrell. Uh, Harold's gonna point and wave everybody inside, but he's gonna turn back to see Aliquin and he's gonna hold out his hand and he's like, hey, good meeting you, man. Um, and he pulls his hand out and he shakes it, uh, and he takes your hand and he says, I'm glad you're getting home safely. I hey. am. I'm happy to give up my month so that you can get home safely. And it, it's much appreciated. Uh, we won't waste it. Uh, Harold's like, I hope we get to see you again. Maybe in Ken's home. And with that, you're flushed through the portal as everybody get tumbles out. And as the portal closes behind you, that's where we're going to end tonight's session. All righty. Wow. That was amazing. Oh, my God. Thank you for everyone that stuck around. We know it is really late. It's way but, yep. past it. But we definitely did not want to bring, take a beer into another session. We wanted to get through it tonight. Um, Thank you to my cast, to my production team for sticking with us for an extra. Uh, if you're still two around, hours. yeah, another. If you're still around and you have not entered hashtag Eldritch or hashtag Beyond, this is your last chance to do so. As we will make a poll in the next like 30 seconds. Yep. Um, but yes, you all survived a beer, and you learned so much. So we met much. the motherfucking Blackstaff. Yes, the, the original Blackstaff. Yeah. Also, I came up with names for everyone. So we got uh -oh. Safe the Destroyer, Boss the Unseen, V the Bloodthirsty, and Harold the Mindbreaker. Uh, I love it. Who are you? I don't know. So you didn't really think of one for everyone, huh? <laughs> Finley the Undying, huh? Yeah, oh, there yeah. it is. Finley the Deathless. Yeah. No, I like Undying because like undying. you literally came back to life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Um, the winner good. of the Eldritch Foundry miniature is Thunderstone. Congratulations, <laughs> Thunderstone. Or we will get uh, reach out to you and get you the information to get or your the baseball bat. <laughs> Did you say with a baseball bat? I said go with the baseball bat. Oh. Yeah. Uh, all right, and our winner of the Rhyme of the Frost Maiden is Moose2271. Moose. Moose! Congratulations, Moose. Uh, Moose! Thank you all so much for, for sticking with us throughout this crazy, epic adventure. Uh, and as always, be excellent to each other. May you always roll with advantage. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.